Hey, how's it going? Uh, no, I'm good. How you doing? Pretty good, man. Right. Oh, wait. Are we going too quick for you? No, it's all right. You getting my good side? Yeah, I'm getting your good all right. side. All right. Sure. That's, look at his camera, Todd, and look at ours. I know. Yeah. And Howard's the one that don't like to be filmed. And he's got mega cameras. Where am I going? Right this way. Right this way? It's been a while, huh? Oh, this is the green room. All right. Today's kind of a big show. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay returns to our show after an eight or nine year absence. Yeah. I can't wait. And uh, there should be some fireworks because uh, I, I went over and read what he said about me last night. All right, night. so we got the whole transcript and everything? Yeah, I mean, I can't play it for you. And I was reminded that he was calling me up and calling me Rat Boy and uh, oh. had real problems with See, me. See, I don't even remember. I just know we haven't spoken to him in all yeah. this time. Here's my question. Will Dice be fat? That's number one. Yeah. Number two, will it turn into an ugly scream fest where Dice will leave and I'll just be more pissed off? Here's Why the don't we just shoot for that? <laughs> <laughs> here's the only inside information. Will he be uh, bald? <laughs> here's the only inside information I have. Two comedians, one you know very well, two real funny guys who I know, uh, Jim Florentine and Jim Norton, open for Dice on a regular basis. Oh, right. yeah? Florentine still opens for him sometimes, and Florentine... I, I feels that Dice feels bad about it. I think that's what he gets from it, and uh. and would like to make up. So I don't know if he's going to come out guns a blazing type of thing. Artie's absolutely correct. I mean, when Dice and I were talking, he really wants to put this behind him. I he, would like to too, but really I wonder if we make, really can. But he's not, he's not coming in to fight, right? But that doesn't mean he can't be engaged in a fight. I think anything ticks him off. <laughs> I'm saying he's not looking right, I, and anything ticks me off. So it's very volatile. Right. He's not looking for confrontation, but he does. You know, both of you guys have short fuses if you get pushed in the right direction yeah, i mean i mean i did get pushed in the, you know I, I went back and read the transcripts but it let, made let's wait you till, mad all over again well yeah it did it was kind of like you know it was kind of crappy that's what happened just, i came in there i was really good and he and howard is soft <laughs> and he uh, didn't do a good interview he was weak and uh, i'm not weak i'm always doing a good appearance and i was like you know it wasn't such a great appearance dude it wasn't my fault it, it almost don't blame sounds... me don't start attacking that i'm weak and that i'm wimpy take and a that, little responsibility yeah i mean come on it almost sounds like he wanted publicity for that statement is so blatant and, and like crazy and then he was mad because i went right to the phones and i'm like well excuse me you know it was it was it was kind of bombing it i wasn't thought working, and yeah. i thought maybe the listeners could charge you up i don't know what are you going to the fucking phones for <laughs> how you doing andrew dice clay here at the howard stern show i haven't seen howard i don't know nine or ten years you know we had a little tiff that turned into a whole thing in a I don't know what's going to happen today. You know, I'll go whatever way he wants to go. That's who I am. Are you coming into this interview with bad feelings towards Howard? or are you? No, I'm actually looking forward to really seeing him. You know, it's, uh, even though I didn't talk to him for many years, I always considered him a friend. And that's what happens sometimes. Friends fight, and uh, we're both <laughs> really stubborn, you know, and we both have a, a lot of the same... Um, you know, kind of fighting us, you know, when we when we do argue. We both got that heart that nobody likes to give. So, no, I'm looking forward to seeing him. All right, guys, we'll see what happens. Okay, we will see what happens. Now get away. Oh! All right, here he is. This is uh, Dice Clay. Hasn't been on our show in eight years. There he is, Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> well, that's the same guy I remember. It's the same guy I remember. <laughs> Put on some headphones, guys, so we can talk. He, he's looking around. He doesn't know what it means. He's confused because this Wait, is a new where's studio. where's the mic? It's on your headphones. There it is. It's, it's on your headphones. Just talk. Headphones. This is unreal. Isn't this nice? Let me look around a minute here. Take a look at our new studio. Holy mackerel. I don't know you guys. You should really leave. <laughs> That's Artie. What's up? This Artie's is amazing. A... Forget about Artie. I'm not here for him. <laughs> right. He seems very nice. And I'm sure he's a good friend of yours. Nice yes. Guy. But I don't know him yet. <laughs> Robin, it's great to it's see you. It's good to see you. And I can't believe, because I haven't seen you. Yes. Now, how many years has it been, Nice? It's about 10 years. 10? About 10 years. Is that right? But I've been listening. Oh, good. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, see, I never stop you. listening. Well, thank Somebody you. Somebody told us it was 97, so that's why we were saying 97. Yeah. I thought it was like 95. It's a long time. Take That's a seat what I'm and getting. Relax. Dice, uh, before we get into our particular situation, because I'm sure the Look audience is curious after Is this uncomfortable years, enough? The couch? <laughs> yeah. I think it's way more comfortable than the last one. The last one, one right. yeah. But um, uh, it's been a while, and uh, a lot of things have changed in your life. Forget about us for a second. Okay. I want to talk to you about your life. 
Um, no longer married. No longer oh. married. Oh. That was the love of your life. Yeah, it was. What, what happened? What you do have a lot of feuds. You want to get into that right away? Sure, why not? Because because <laughs> yeah, what if we? Well, that, you you want to know something? When we get uh, into I mean, just, our thing. No, but uh, let it me could just, end the whole interview. No, so no, it won't. It won't. Things. Don't worry about All that. Right. That's not what I came here for. Right. Um, when I call, I, I will say I'm the one that called Gary. I'm gonna just say it out. Okay. That you didn't call me. You know, come to the show. It got to the point. You know. You know. We we age. We get all the you know different things go on in our lives. And I would listen to you. That's why I brought that up. Right. That even though we fought, and we had terrible fights. Yeah. You know, that there I am, you know, when I go to the gym in the morning, running my errands, whatever, I'm listening to Howard anyway and enjoying it. Right. You know, and I'm going, this is, this is screwed up that I don't talk to this guy. And years went by. Yes. And, you know, when I did, you know, end the, end the marriage, which is an awful thing, which is... Also something I spoke to Gary about how, in a way, our lives have really paralleled between controversy and what you do and what I do as performers yes. and what happened with our marriages. It just got to the point where I said, I'm going to call. I've actually tried to call before. I actually tried calling when uh, you were still at the other place. By the way, they might have asked me and I might have said, I'm not interested. I yeah, Howard, uh, yeah. I, yeah, uh, I, do, I do remember getting a call from management and I do remember bringing it up to you. and. We discussed it, and, we, and you were just sort of still so bummed out. You're like, no, I just don't want to Yeah, it, it wasn't yeah. time, and that's okay. Okay. But I thought when you came here, I thought it was um, another breakthrough move. I thought it was a great move. Thank you. And I'm also the type of person that likes to, to break down walls. And, and, you know, there are things I'll get into. You. I know what you're going through now a little. Right. But it got to the point. I said, you know what? Our fight, you know, what ended our relationship, what ended... Our marriages, maybe. I don't know about you, but I know me. Is other people getting in between that relationship? And I have a certain rule, like with, with marriage, let's say, that anybody that would ever come between you and your family or you and your wife, you know, should not be part of, of your life anymore. Now, I, didn't, I, I, but, didn't but I'm just saying, I didn't experience that with my wife, but I, I'm just wondering, in your life, who was it that came between you? Well, a lot of people. Uh, hot tub? Uh, no, not hot tub. Uh, club funny. soda? Hot tub. Like, you know, that's funny. When you just, hot tub? Uh, club soda? Um, no, it wasn't club soda either. It was... It was Family like parents? No, uh, different friends that would come into our life that really weren't friends. And Poisoned your wife against you? Poison the relationship, and I used said to things about you that weren't true. Yes, said, and said stuff like, "Hey, Dice is out well, there." Well, I'm not, not going to make quotes because I right. still go through a lot of bullshit with the uh, with the attorneys and right. with the ex. Are you still into that? But I used to talk to her a lot and say, "You know, why is let's say this person still in our home after the problem they caused? Mm -hmm. Like, don't you know? Get that person out of your life." I mean, sometimes it's got to be like that. So when it came... So you were still in love with your wife, is what you're saying. I, I was in love with her all the way to the end. All the way to the end, yeah. but she had had enough of your bringing up these other people. She disagreed with you. And I feel she had a lot of animosity towards me. Is she remarried now? No. And she's single still? As far as I know. You're single still, or you got no, a girlfriend? No, I... I I'm going through a whole thing with her. Uh, we were engaged, now we're going out again. You're back Things to happen. Going out. Right, yeah. Just to get back to what I was saying before about relationships. Yeah. That's what I was getting to with you. That when, you know, I said that thing about my wife, never let anybody get between you. Right. Okay? It's still cryptic, uh, by the way. I don't understand exactly what happened there. That well, someone well could get it could, it could you. be a friend, it could even be a family member. Right. You know, I mean, you know, if my mother would say the wrong thing to my wife. You'd stick you know, up for your wife. I, I, I wasn't the mama's boy and, and say, well, my mother's right. I would destroy my mother for it. Right. You know, I mean, that was actually one time uh, my parents came to L.A. and they wound up leaving the next day because I couldn't believe the things that she would say to my wife. And I had a huge fight and they left. Wow. And I didn't care because, you know, once you're married, that's... That's who you're in bed with. Right. You're in bed with that person. You have children with that the person. Person you see every day. That you know, and I'm a family guy that way. Right. Now, who's between you, you and me, Howard? Let, though? No, but let me just say okay. this. Hot tub so Johnny. when it came to you without fight, and I thought about it, and it took a long time. You know, you get maybe a little smarter, a little more mature. Right. Nobody really changes. Right. I haven't changed. Right. You know, uh, I said. It wasn't even us. It's it's what came between us. Right. Now, I know you talked about 
you know, our, you know, our fight, you know, yes. like what happened, and you're not even really that sure. But I remember what happened. Tell me from the, your side what happened, and I'll I went back and researched okay. and read why I got angry. But okay. tell me from your side what happened. All right. The very last time I came into studio, right. I was excited about coming into studio because I used to call him from L.A. a lot. Right. All right. So coming into studio was always exciting because whether we fought, whether, you know, we had that, you know, even now we got that, we just know when to talk when not, we have the chemistry. Okay. All right. But I was in the studio just a couple minutes, and you went right to the phones. Yes. And I even said to you, I said, what are you going to the phones for? I haven't seen you in a long time. Everyone's excited. The Dice Man is here. There's tons of phone calls coming in. Let's go over and see. Uh, people are anxious to speak to you. Dice uh, is we're here. We're going right to the phones. You don't want to do that? I don't care. It don't right. make no difference to we'll me. We'll come back to the interview. We'll, do, we'll go back and forth okay. on all of this, Look, all right? If that's what you want to do, it's your show. Tim, you're on the air. Oh, don't. How'd you know it was Tim before you even said Because on the computer, it says line uh, two, Tim. Oh, you for got Dice. a computer. I forgot. Yeah, I got a computer. We're, we're high tech now. Yeah, we're high tech, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but already, this Tim sounds like me. I don't even know if I want to talk to him. For me, I think this might be an impression of me. All right, go ahead. This talk to Dice. This might be a setup. I don't know. No, it's no setup. But hey, you, guys, I heard you just went on vacation. Is that true? Wrong. Wrong? Where did I go on vacation? Uh, somewhere in another country. I heard you're a homo. <laughs> What? You faggot. What? <laughs> hey, stupid ass, hang up the phone. You had your six seconds of fame. Goodbye. Well, I apologize about that. You see what you do to me right off the bat? <laughs> I thought it'd be nice to take a phone call. Wow. <laughs> what the heck was that? <laughs> and there were like some shit calls, some jerk off that sued for like ten thousand dollars. You know, asshole callers. Right. You know, and I'm and I'm like there, and I want to hang with you and talk to you and yes. have fun with you right. on the air. You know. Okay. So now what happens is I get a call. From uh, Chauncey. Okay, you know what, all right, so yeah. you know what oh, I'm talking about. Oh, really? Yes. So he asked me on the phone, he goes, so what was it like to be in the studio with Howard? And I said, to be honest, I felt he was a little weak. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, well, I went into the studio, and he went right to the phones, and I didn't know why. Right. And then he did the interview, and that's what I said, because I remember the things I say. And then what happened is I was shooting the show um, for UPN called Hits at the time, and I got the radio on, and you're just going nuts about me. So the Chauncey from Stepping Out interviewed Dice Clay? Yes. Now, you know how I felt about Dice's last appearance privately. I talked to you about it. Right. And uh, I thought it was rather weak. And I thought, Di you know, and probably the reasons I thought. When Dice came on the show, he hadn't been on the show in a long time. We kept him off a couple of times because I kind of felt he's gotten real pussy whipped. And doesn't talk about stuff. So it's kind of funny. Chauncey interviewed him, and he's and Dice is slamming me, saying I've lost it. Ah! That I'm, I'm not daring. God, Dice has lost it. Mm -hmm. His TV show sucks. His, his his last movie sucked. His previous TV show sucked. His HBO special sucked. And I'm there trying to resuscitate the guy, and he's bad mouthing me, blaming it on me that I've lost it. And I, and I'm going now. I know this guy Chauncey called you because you spoke about it, but I don't know what he said to you. Right. So I call into Gary, and I go, okay, when's this war going to happen? Right. And, um, and I think it was that, that Friday that I even, what was funny is I showered for it. I got up <laughs> because, you know, it's three hours earlier. I go to my guest house because I know we're going to be yelling. Yeah. You know, I know when we, when we fight, this isn't going to be, you know, my kids will be, you know, going, yeah. what's going on here? Right, you know? right. It's going to sound like yeah. World War III. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I go to the guest house, and I call in, and, you know, and, and you went off on me, and right. you know what? You got the louder mic, of course, and, and you beat the shit out of me. Right. I got mad. I went on a TV show. I said things. You went off a little, and then we never spoke again. Right. right. So right. my point is, we fought about what somebody said to him. You know what I just said to you wasn't even that bad. You know. Right. And 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 if what we would have hung out after that show, you know, and I said, "How? Oh, what'd you go to the phone for?" It would have been done at that moment. What happened you know? for me was, and I'll, and I'll be upfront. I had felt like maybe one or two appearances where you'd come in previously, they hadn't gone that well. And I said to Gary, listen, for whatever reason, I said in the meeting, I said, listen, Dice is a friend of this show. He's done a million great appearances. I said, let's hold off on some appearances for a while. Maybe we have to build up a wealth of things that happen in Dice's uh -huh. life. And he comes okay. in because they do deal with reality. Well, now I got a wealth. Believe oh, me. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Believe so, me, but, you but, can't but, but, begin so, to fucking understand what's going on. So, so wait. So, so I, said, I said to Gary, he said, well, Dice wants to come in and stuff. I said, I'm never going to tell Dice no, so bring him in. And you came in, 
And um, I don't know, for whatever reason, I sensed we weren't gelling. And I said, you know, sometimes it's great when the audience gets in on these phone calls. See, but I never knew yeah. that. Right. Well, that's what that was. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to keep a show going and keep it interesting and maybe offer you something that I don't have that day. Maybe maybe there's an angle or something. We'll go to the phones. I do that sometimes. First thing I do when I sign on sometimes, I go right to the phones because... Because you've got energy. nothing to say at that moment. All right, or, I get it. Or, or I have something planned, but I want to do it at 8 o'clock or whatever. It just seemed like the right thing to do for me. So for whatever reason, I felt the appearance didn't go that great. Maybe it was me going to the phones. Maybe it was you were off or I was off. You know what? I could have been right. off because I'm going to tell you, I know, um, I mean, me and my wife broke up, uh, it was, you know, three and a half years ago. Some, but for many years, I was going through a lot of turmoil at home. Right. And I tried to straighten it out. And for, you know, that's a big part of, um, you know, what went on in my career because I'm the type of guy, if I'm not happy at home, I, you know, and I was looking to take on the world. We're very similar in that way. Right. You know that. You're very competitive. Yeah, and you I'm want competitive, to be and, and I love doing what I do, and right. I feel there is nobody that could come close to what I do. Right. Well, but, you know, for my part, I remember, see, you were going through a transition even in your career. No, but time. my career was going up, but when, when you're fighting but at you home. But you were changing, you know, you were, you know, trying to, to do that whole TV mainstream I was doing, thing. No, I was doing what had to be done to pay the bills. That's oh, how I, I looked at it. I understand that, but I'm saying we kind of were lost in the who is Dice. Yeah, and yeah. you know, when I saw guys come along like Eminem, for instance, I right. love Eminem. Right. And and I saw his controversy. I said, you know what? They're writing the same articles about this guy. They're just taking my name out. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, well, I, and, and and I to got... Robin, when you were doing hits, the television show, I was confused by the image. And, and, I, and I have to say, Robin, did it reminds me of something. I used to even talk to Robin about it. And the guys would say, you know, I'm not sure where Dice is at right now because you would come in sometimes and you were, you, you were kind of caught well, between two Well, to me, it was worlds. a way of staying home, being with my kids. That's important to me. Whatever you do in your career okay, is fine. But what you I was thinking. lost. So the fact of the matter is, uh, after the interview, I said to Gary, gee, that appearance didn't go so well. You know, okay. I, I just chalked it up. Hey, it didn't go great. But yeah, not every show is. But not every everybody. show is your greatest. Right. And I wasn't going to go on the air and say the show didn't go great. Hey, look, for whatever reason, it didn't go great. Then I read the article, and the article blames me for your. You said, hey, the appearance was bad, right. I, and you were, you know, you're doing some bravado, and you said, hey, I'm great meaning you, and Stern is weak. I, I've got the quotes here. Stern is weak. He's not on his game. He's, yeah, I was angry. he's toned down. You were angry with the, about the appearance, and you were angry with me. And I, and I said, you know, gee, that's such a sucky thing for Dice to do to me. Dice is blaming me because he had a bad appearance. I, I'll take some responsibility, but to publicly go and do that after all the years, all the years of yeah. great, right, I, I, you know me, I, I got a short fuse, and uh, <laughs> I got enough guys attacking me. And I, I said, got a short fuse, and I get attacked that's all the right. time. That's and, what I'm talking about. So I saw this public attack on me, and I said, you know what, screw this. Yeah, you want to say yeah, no? We, you went off. I went off. I went yeah, nuts. Yeah, but you know, and you know how to push the buttons. Right. Like I know how to push buttons. Go. He's not funny anymore. Well, he's you not pushed the so, wrong one when you said he's done. He's washed up or something. You sort of said he's over. And Did I, I said he's over? Yeah. yeah. All right. You know what? I'm not going to say I didn't say that because I was probably really mad and trying mm -hmm, to piss him mm -hmm. off. No, I read it. And then and he, I read it recently because I had already forgotten about it. All right. And, well, and, it's and, a stupid article in a shit magazine. Right. But, okay, so, uh, but you know me, yeah. I react to From a little fat guy that's got no fucking life. But he has a tape recorder and he yeah. does, that's you know. Right. Hit, I don't, I don't give a shit. And but he's they, accurate. But, yeah. but, but these, these guys, they know how to push buttons and they know... They could feel when you got a short fuse, and when somebody's getting you right after something that went right. lousy, you're not going to come off and go, hey, you know, Howard was wonderful. So I guess you I know, felt... You get pissed yeah, off. I felt my back was against the wall because now someone's challenging yeah, a friend. My, my... a friend. My friend dies who, you know, yeah, who's we a guy going, I speak me, to off the air, which is rare for me. I, know, I, I mean, there's maybe four people I ever speak to off the air. And with the yeah. house hunting... He was out of his mind because we'd pull up to a house. And I wanted was, to kill him. This was his real estate agent. Yeah. And me and Johnny are in the back of the car like the children. Right. You know, and I'm filming. I'm constantly filming. He's going, shut the camera. Why are you filming? No, because I just like it. You know, and yeah. now we'd get to a Evidently, house. Evidently, I was being pranked. But, but this, no, it wasn't about being pranked. It was just really having a good Getting time a doing this. a real reaction. Yeah. I love it. I had a great time, this let me is, tell you. This is my, no. But, I know you were suffering. I was having so much fun in those people's homes as Dice and Hot Tub ran through but them. But the beauty of it was, 
I wouldn't go in the house. If she pulled up to a house I didn't like, he'd look at me, very, you know, business-like, and go, <laughs> she'd go out to talk to the people, and he goes, why don't you go in the house? And I go, because I don't like the outside. He goes, but you didn't see the, in you know how he could right, go, right. but you didn't see the inside. I go, but if I don't like the outside, I don't care what the inside. <laughs> yeah, but this is my real estate person. <laughs> well, then tell your real estate person to find the house I like. <laughs> and he goes, but it would be nice of you just that the other real estate person's here. Just walk through. And I go, I can't do it. I'm pretty sure the relationship deteriorated after that. No, it, did, that's, it actually that kind of did for No, me. that was the fun I'll be one. honest with you. I was kind of like, you know what? This guy's a pain in my ass. Right. You were no, but really then, pissed with no, him. But he oh, did and then, and then really he finally pissed. was buying a house on Long Island. Dumb. The voodoo dolls. And then he saw voodoo dolls in the house. They were, the guy no. came back. Wait, no, I it wasn't tell in the no, house. I'm going to tell this. It wasn't it, in the it, house. It was in the, it was in the lawyer's office. All right, go ahead. All oh, right. my goodness. And then I'll tell you what you said it you. was. But, but, here, listen to this. <laughs> so finally, after bringing him around from house to house, the, the Ike bailed out. And the broker stuck <laughs> with him. with him, huh? He's a wealthy guy. The broker figures, okay, come on. He's going to buy a house. Sure enough, they take him to a brand new, beautiful built home. 75, wait, let me just, 7,500 square feet. Oh. Right? Gorgeous. A white brick house uh, on four acres in Laddington, Long Island. Yes. Uh -huh. And the builders are being foreclosed. So they don't even really want their money. Wow. Right. They actually want the, what was it, nine fifty. Right, $950,000. $950,000. And the cheapest house on the block back then, this is 15 years ago, right. was $2.5 yeah. right. So I was getting it for nothing. Yeah, I mean, okay? it was a great, great deal for right, So deal. now tell what happened. All right, so he goes to, to the contract <laughs> where they draw up the contract for the house. Yeah. He walks in, and the, the real estate broker starts calling me first. She goes, uh... No, it didn't happen right there. No, All wait right, a second. Ahead. First she calls me beforehand. He's right. And she says to me, he, he, he's, he's going to get out of the deal. I go, what do you want from me? Whatever he wants to do. <laughs> she goes, he doesn't like the number of the house. I think there was a, a, a 69 or a no, 13 no, what happened or a was something. We went it. to the lawyer's office in Manhattan yeah. to do, like, the contract. Oh, right? You didn't like his phone number. In his office, it was all dark brown, and I hate dark brown. <laughs> listen to this. It, no, listen to it, and it was small, and there were, like, what I would call these little voodoo dolls just lining, you know, the uh, the shelves. Right. So I'm home at night that night, and it was funny, because back then I was living in an apartment on Nostrand Avenue in Brooklyn with, with my wife, uh -huh. you know, where people would actually see me there and go, what are you doing here? Right. right. You know, didn't you just do Nassau Coliseum? But I loved <laughs> living in Brooklyn. Uh -huh. I didn't care. See, he really you didn't know. want to move to London. Right. No. Right. So, so I'm sitting in the kitchen. It's like De Niro, you know, you know, and I'm eating like this takeout Chinese, and she's going, what's the matter? I go, I can't take the house. And she goes, why? And I keep saying, I can't take the house. And she actually, what are you doing, Robert? De Niro? I go, I can't take the house. And she goes, why? I go, because I went to the attorney, and now with these voodoo dolls on the wall, you know. So she goes, if you don't like it, if you don't have a good feeling, Andrew, you got to have a good. And plus so it had wait, a staircase. So the real estate, wait a second. The, real estate, broker, the real estate broker calls me up. She goes, you got to help me. I said, I don't want to be involved in this anymore. <laughs> the guy's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> I was out of my mind. I said, he's crazy. He, 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 it's a beautiful house. I said, he was running up and down these houses with Hot Tub Johnny with, 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 you know, and laying on people's floors. Right. Yeah, hiding in the bathroom. Hide, I mean, it's like the most juvenile stuff. I said, jumping on the bed yeah, and whatever. I said, I yeah, said, we I'm love to do that. She goes, but you don't understand. She says, you got to talk to him. She goes, he went to the lawyer's office, and he's claiming there's voodoo dolls all over the place. I said, what is it? She goes, this gentleman, this lawyer is a lovely man. He's traveled to Africa. He uh, went and yeah. bought. He went and bought original yeah. African artifacts. Wood, they're wood carvings. Right. Yeah, I say you're kidding. <laughs> I call him up. Yeah, he and calls I me said, up. No, he goes like the. It's African art. What are you, a fucking idiot? <laughs> he goes, it's thousands of dollars of African art. And I'm going, I don't care what it is. It's voodoo dolls to me. Out of, out but, of my mind. But do you know why he was really mad? See, he's a businessman. Yes. He goes like this. They, the next day. They got another 50000 and sold the house, so they sold it for a million right. Right. because it was dirt cheap right. for that area. You know, there were $8 he million dollar houses like on that. Oh, yeah. It was, so he goes, why didn't you call art. me? I would have bought the fucking house. It was, and I go, it was who was steal. thinking? You know, I, you know, I didn't want it. It's the steal of a century. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was a great house. That I house, mean, house today is worth $10 million. Yeah, maybe, maybe more. Maybe more. Maybe more. Yeah, so. But I just, if I get a bit, and plus, uh, my, my son was only like, you know, he was a baby. He was right. two years old. It had a staircase 
that when you went to the top, it was one of those fancy things where you could see all of it into the media room. They, see, this is what I hate about the rich. They don't even call it a den. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's a media, media room. What are, you, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and so you could see over that way or you could see over to the front door. And I looked at, you know, I got afraid that, you know, maybe he could fall. Uh -huh. You know, I'm, I'm safety conscious that way. So I'm like, fuck the house. <laughs> that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll he, find he, another he, house. I realize now, listening to him, he just didn't want to buy a house. Right. He he wanted no, to I did. I wound up buying one in Jersey. And then but you that hated was that. haunted. <laughs> oh, that was the other thing. Your house was haunted. Oh, you know man. what? Ask Happy Face. Ask anybody. Ask anybody that was with me at the time. <laughs> then, he, then he tells me the house was haunted. I said, you're, you're insane. Yeah. Well, this he is did. Nobody he believes me. He came to me off the air. And he said, I got to get, you know, I love Dice as a guest, but I got to get him out of my life because he is I, I, really crazy. Yeah, I said, I can't, I can't take this. I'm changing my phone number. He's calling me. I can't get off the Constant phone. Constant phone calls. Constantly. Is there you a know. feud with Paulie Shore now between you and Paulie no, I got, I got, uh, you know, that's an old feud. What's uh, going on there? All right. This is, uh, you know, I How started, you fight this Pauly is what Shore? happened. All How right. do you fight with Paulie Shore? I mean, really? I mean, well, what? you know what? When... Me and my wife split up. What I started doing, because I am out of my mind, I started, as you know, I love to videotape. Yes. So I started filming myself. Yes. You know, which it was almost like therapy, because I think therapists suck. Uh -huh. So I figured, you know, when I'd get mad, I'd just talk to the camera. If I was in a good mood, I'd talk to the camera. Then Can I started making it tapes? funny. Yeah, I'd like to see those. Will you you will be doing, seeing it. You soon. will. What are you going to do with those tapes? I don't want to, I can't get into it. It's very top secret. It's sort of top secret right. this week. Okay, Maybe ahead. next week I could tell you All if right. we're still talking. Right. All right. So <laughs> what happened is, so then I started filming over at the comedy store, mm -hmm. you know, and using the other comics and, and creating scenarios. And, and the comics just loved it. It uh -huh. was like I started creating what I called the show, Andrew Dice Clay, the show. Okay. And anything could happen in the show. It's in a sense, a reality show. It, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was what I'd call a, a reality com. Okay. You know? Okay. So... Now what happened is my kids would come there with me. How you many know, kids you got? Two? I got two boys. Two Max boys. and Dylan. How old are they now? 11 and 15. Right. And, and they're are both... You, are, in, you, are you going through terrible custody battles? Is that what's going on? Uh, no, I'm not. I mean, no. I'm very, very close with my sons. I mean... Are you living close by? Yeah, well, one of them, one of them is with me, oh, okay. and uh, the other one's with me most of the time. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. yeah. How'd Good you work that and, uh, Well, it's just the way it is. The, the kids you know love I mean? being with you more? Yeah. And you know, boys, I, like you I know, said, I'm not going to get a, you know, right, you don't want to. I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, anything about the ex. I'm not here to bash her. Right. I mean, you know, I'm not saying she's not a good mother. I'm just saying can you guys that I think I'm a fantastic father. And that's it. Can you and the mother and, communicate at all, but just for the good of the boys? Can you sit down and talk about what's good for the kids? Well, that's rough. That is. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, and you I get try. Into fights? You know, well, I try. Right. You know, that's all I could say. It's a, right. it's a it's a bad situation. It was way. interesting that he said, "I'm not going to say she's a bad mother, but I've got the kids." <laughs> no, no, I didn't say that. I said I'm a great father with them. That's and right. For the last three and a half years, I mean, all I did was, uh, you know, really look to stay in town and be with them. And if I went out, uh, you know, I didn't look to be in the public eye at all. Right. I didn't look t to even be on your show other than that one time. You know, right. when I thought I should. You like being a father. I, yeah, I would go out, make my living, and come home quickly. Just Financially, are you well off enough that you really don't need to work? I'm pretty well off. You're pretty well yeah. off. Even after the divorce, that yeah. had to wipe you out a little bit. Well, you know, that's what divorce is. Right. You don't see me wearing a leather, do you? No. <laughs> yeah. I, He's you back know. to cotton. I'm not even yeah, sure I'm that's gold. Yeah, right. No, it's not gold. Right. Yeah. So you, you, uh, you, you uh, have the kids, and you go down to the comedy store. Yeah, and so what we would do, they started being on film right. and, you know, and filming this stuff with me. What happened... One night, Paulie comes in. Now, I'm looking at Paulie at the comedy store since he's 12 years old. Right. So he gives me a hard time about it, and he says, Dice, get your fucking kid out of the comedy store. Oh. Because and, of... And this is, you know, and, and my kid was right there, and it's my younger one. Yeah. And at the time, he was 10, you know, and I know Paulie's there his whole life. I go, you know, so now I get in his face because now he cursed in front of my kid. Right. And I know that sounds funny coming from me, but I don't make it a habit. Right. They know what I do as a performer, but they know at home that's not what I'm about. And I get in his face, and, you know, I'm saying, Paulie, this could be very bad for you right now. And you're thinking, <laughs> you this, is, and you're thinking this is hypocritical because Paulie grew up yeah, at the Yeah, he grew up there. He's telling me. How come this ain't on tape? <laughs> yeah, he's telling me, he's telling me, uh, you, you the know, the cops room? are going to come and lock, uh, you know, close the comedy store. I'm going, 
If the cops see my kids with dice, they're not closing anything down. Right. There were no cops. The SWAT team's not showing up at the comedy <laughs> store to right. close you down because Dice is filming his kid beating up another comic. Right. You know, which is funny. You right. know. So we had a little thing, and I, you know, I went around saying, you know, Paulie hates children. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and now are you at odds? Yeah, we him? made up. Oh, you, you know? made up? Yeah, oh, everything's yeah. fine. All right. Yeah, everything's fucking you know, but beautiful. There are no cameras. Paul Only you can wind me up. I said I'm not going to get wound up. No, because now I'm getting mad again over that. <laughs> well, because well, you know that is uh, insulting to you. Yeah, it's yeah. How would you feel? If somebody well, said something about there, your kids yeah. right in front of you. Uh, okay. It's like you it left no tough. choice but right. disassemble that person. Yes, uh, Gary. While you're on it, I guess uh, while we're talking feuds, you should probably ask about the Jay Moore feud. Yeah, now what's going on oh. with that? You're, you're, you feud with the comic Jay Moore as well. Don't Why you? would you want to make him more famous by feuding with him? By well, you know, he, he, Why would you pay him any attention? I, you know what? There's too much going on here to talk. We, we also we took care of that. You know, and, You're uh, over. Well, that's over? Yeah, that, I haven't even you know, well, heard I of know. him since that day. Well, but I I'll know. tell you something that did happen with that little jerk off, right? Right. Because he, he was on he was on Asshole and Opie show. Right. Right? See, now that this was is show, what I, no, but but this that is was, what I was mad about yes. with you because... I had to do that show <laughs> because I wasn't doing this show, so right. I had no choice, right. you know, and I actually, uh, what happened was... What was I, your uh, impression of those two characters? Well, you know what? I, don't make me mad now. So, Not yet. Yeah. Don't make me mad now with them. You know what I mean? Number one, uh, actually, I think uh, Anthony is, um, you know, he's a talented guy. He should have just been a comic. Right. In my opinion, uh -huh. Opie is a zero in the game of life. Right. You know, in my opinion, he can't get on the air unless he's got a bottle of bourbon in his fucking hand. Mm -hmm. And if he ever stands toe to toe with me, he's going to know what I'm talking about. So there was he's going to have a there. fucking problem he can't handle. Right. Huh? That's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. And I never liked him from the beginning because he was a cocksucker and he's more insecure than any male I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. That's who he is. And they've been trying to. Let me tell you something. They had a, a show. See, you were on in the morning, which I wish I could have been on your show. Right. See, that was something I wanted to do. I'll just lay it out. For but my the point kids. is, but the point but is, you had to do a... shows. You're a comic. You no, would do their this show is... and other shows. I had it, no problem it, with it that. It wasn't about that. But what I was, was getting bashed. You, I assume you don't know what was going on. No, right. I didn't bash you. You didn't. I would say to them, you know, don't make me go on the other guy's show. Right. You know, that's how I would do it. But what was going on at home? Um, as my, when Max hit 10 years old, right. my oldest son now, you know, he said to me, he goes, Dad, why don't you do The Garden again? Because at that time, they were airing a lot of HBO specials from The Garden. Right. So I said, Max, we're doing great. I'm headlining The Venetian in Vegas. We're doing great. I just don't do that kind of thing anymore. Right. So that night, I go to the comedy store, and, um, you know, this... Um, this producer that used to do the comedy awards, which I don't even think is, is happening anymore, right. never even invited me on the show. Hmm. And when that show started, I was doing 20,000 seats a night. But because he didn't like me, you know, he just never, he didn't even have me as a presenter, anything. Right. And um, so I go to the comedy store. This is the night Max goes, why don't you do the garden again? I go to the comedy store and I'm hanging out with this comic, Jay London. Mm -hmm. uh, and he, and that night, they were actually having the party for the Comedy Awards in the main room of the comedy store. Hmm. So now this guy gets out of his car. Jay Moore. No, no, this tub of shit, George Slaughter, okay. the producer of that show. Yes. This fat fuck who told my publicist, I told Dice it would never work with him. I never even met the guy, right. but I knew where he lived. He lived around the corner from me. I said, tell him to walk to the corner and see the house that could wrap around his three times. <laughs> I go, tell him how it didn't work then, this cocksucker. Right. Right? So anyway, I see this guy, and then I start talking to Jay again. And he goes, right. I could write a page on the look you just gave that guy. You know? Right. So now I go home, and I don't make my house a shrine to me. You know, I hang certain things up, and one of the things that were hung up was the uh, the one sheet from when I did the garden in 90. Something you're proud yeah, of. Yeah, a metal sheet that the, the uh, New York Times ran. Mm -hmm. right. So I'm, I'm angry about, you know, what's going on. I'm angry about what's going on in my re relationship at the time with my wife. And I go in the bed, and I'm pacing around like an animal. You know, and she wakes up, and she goes, everything all right? You know, I go, count my words here. I go, in less than a year, I'm on stage at the garden. I go, that's what I'm going to do. I owe it to the kids. 
because it gets to the point you don't want to just talk about what you did. You want you to know? show you them. Want you wanted to share your success with the kids. Yeah, and show I wanted them. them to see it because mm -hmm. I believe right. that you, you're the role model for your children, and if you show them how hard you work, that they're going to take that in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, and and hopefully that that they'll see what it takes to to accomplish anything they want to get to. So I start. I put a plan together, which is a. Uh, well, I got to record a new album, which I did. This See, trip. when I if I had a father that worked as hard and made all that kind of money that you did, I would just sit back and go, you know what? Let this guy work, and I'll yeah, just. Yeah, well, that's it. why he's telling him to go do the garden, pick up that's some right, yeah. for me, Dad. I keep going, Dad. <laughs> but I think you smart. understand what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I got to work on the whole thing, right. and now um, these guys. I hear this guy uh, Anthony is just going on and on about me, and I did the show like one time, mm -hmm. and, and it was amazing when I walked in. You want to talk about intimidation? This this uh, this Opie, oh, no, that this, see this is what I mean about anybody doing anything for money, a guy that would actually call himself Opie, <laughs> other than his real name to be on the air, like to to say I'm I'm an Opie. <laughs> I mean when you when when you see an Opie, you're going asshole face. <laughs> That's who you are, asshole face. So things were That's not good who, between the two. No, right? no, no. Right. This is so. So I start doing their show. Yes. And what happens with their show? That because nobody would go. No comics worth anything would really do that show. Because they wanted to be on your show. Right. It's like let him in and Leno type of thing. Okay. okay. Now I didn't care because me and you were fighting. We weren't. To, what am I going to do? I got to go on their show. Understood. But their ratings start going up, mm -hmm. and they even used to thank me for building their show mm -hmm. because they had nobody doing their show. Right. They had Jay Moore. Who's Jay Moore? He's not even like a real person, Jay Moore. You know, <laughs> right. Who's, who the fuck? Even now, he's had like ten shows on. Team. Nobody knows him still. Right. <laughs> there are just certain people that don't have that X factor. That that they just don't, don't they stand don't go out. Over and, 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 and let me tell you something. Yeah. They used to go nuts about you. Right. They go out and fuck. This guy would call me at home. Fucking stern this. Fucking. I go. You know what? No matter what you say, he's the biggest guy. You know, take it as a cop. You should. Hands down, he's the biggest guy in radio ever. That's it. That's I go, the way it I, goes. if I hate his guts, makes no difference. He's the biggest guy. So why would you fuck with that? Right. Especially when you have the same boss. Especially okay. when you, especially when you do on my whole act. All right. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. which and, and a bad version of it. Right. Okay. So now what happens is, I start doing the show. The audience, get, New York, gets hot on me again. And to make a long story short, I do the Beacon Theater. Right. And the Garden uh, in the same week. I did uh, 13,000 people at the Garden the last night of the World Series. My wife brought the kids in. And uh, what was funny is my, my youngest, you know, couldn't watch the show. Right. But just to feel the whole thing of coming to New York, Daddy's doing the Garden. And she allowed him to see the, you know, when I walked on and the whole crowd got up. And, uh, and my 10-year-old, yeah. Max, watched the entire show. That's great. You know, and, you know, we let him do, like, what he felt. Right. He should do, and uh, and he's a pretty bright kid, so he knew when to walk out. <laughs> and uh, but I mean, it was just an absolute, you know, incredible moment in our lives. But what right. happened? What really made me angry with this guy, and because when anybody fucks with my kid, that's it for me forever. What happened? That's just the way it is. Uh, and day, that's rightly so. A day before the garden, Max came on the radio with us. I okay, see. yeah, and um. And they made a problem right off the bat. And I didn't know what the problem was. He's going, Anthony. And Anthony, the asshole, all he does is dice. Mm -hmm. You know, so right. it's like when I'm on the show, I'm talking to dice. Hey, yeah, I'm over here now. You know, the whole thing. <laughs> right. You know, so you can't even talk to him. He's in Diceville. <laughs> right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, Then I'm going, is there something? And, and I know there's something wrong with me. Right. Believe me, I know that things wrong. But there's really something wrong with a guy that's not me and doesn't stop doing me. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he's a yeah. I'm over here. Now, what happened was, <laughs> now, what happened was, um, I know you know Man Cow from Chicago. He, yes. he I, I would say, other than you, he's the only one, and it was about eight years after I started doing your show, yeah. that I became friends with. Okay. Now, I know you and him got a thing, and, you know, I have just no like things. comics have things, but right. you know what I'm saying. I'm just going to fuck his father's uh, skull. Uh, uh, stop it. I'm Don't do up, that. I'm going to dig Don't up his father's grave and, and, and stick what? my dick in you his see, skull. You see, that's where I get mad at you, because that's, that's where the way I am. But you hey, shouldn't do that. Hey, you know what I mean? You have your beef. I know, I know. Do I stop you? But But that's... 
You know, that's Howard somebody's loves right Opie. He let you All rail right. on him. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck Opie. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, that's where I draw the line. That, all right, forget it. All right, I'm just ahead, saying, you know. Ahead. I don't draw that line. Okay, I know you don't. I don't know why, how you can draw a line. He has a legitimate beef. Yeah, when but, somebody, but to go when to somebody that. Somebody sends, to go to when that. somebody sends a box of excrement to an 18-year-old girl who works for me, why we go, don't excrement. go into the man cat thing yet. Okay, all right. Okay. I'm just telling you. That's how to right. fuck your father's skull. Right, stop it. That's Do this when I'm not here. All right, go ahead. Because he's my friend, just like you are. I don't care friends. whose friend you are. All right, all right. That's one day I got to do my thing, man. I you know you got to do your that. thing. You call me I, and you uh, keep me on the phone for three hours, I got to fuck his father's skull. <laughs> <laughs> there was something really wrong with And there's something wrong with me. You want to. Yeah, go ahead. So let me tell you. Go ahead with your feud. So what happens is, Opie goes, uh, uh, that that man cow said he's coming in and introducing you with the garden. Okay. So we might not fucking do it. You know, now my kid is getting uncomfortable. Yeah, who cares? Okay? Yeah. You know, and and I'm going, all right, let this go. Forget it. He, we know you're introducing me. Let it go. Don't fucking start with that. Only I can curse. It right. was regular Boring radio. radio whatever. Yeah. Okay. So, but they don't let it go. Yeah, okay. Right. So yeah, now, yeah. from that moment on, the minute he did that with my kid, he he's dead to me. That was I'll it. fuck his skull. Right. Well, he's alive. Well, there you go. Okay. Right. This little fucking pansy. Would you fuck his father's he, skull? If I had to. Well, then what okay? are you talking about? But I'd rather do it to him. Well, he's awake. This right. little cocksucker. All right. Because right. they've been trying to goad me. See, this, I told Gary they've been trying to get me to come on their little shit show. Right. Which I think the only people listening is their fucking family, if even them. They right? weren't that successful. And I won't go on their show. Yes. So they and then they heard him. They went fucking ballistic when they heard him coming on here. Right. And they should That's because right. they know what we can do to them. Right. They know what I could do to them. But I ain't building them another fucking show. Let them no. do it themselves. You don't need to. But do anyway, that. the night before, the night of the garden. Now yes. it was really bugging me what they did in front of my kid, and I just couldn't. What did they go. do? Well, well, they made the whole thing about man cow. They made oh, it I really see. uncomfortable for the right. kid. And I'm trying to let them know in a nice way on the air, like, let this go. Right. Like, my kid's here. Right. You know what I mean? And they didn't let it go. So I came back after the rehearsal at the garden. I came back to the show. And, you know, Club Soda was with me and Happy Face. And I said, all right, you know what? And they're getting out of the car. I go, I can handle this. Believe me. Mm -hmm. Right? And I go up to a show. This little asshole sitting there, and it was a day they had no guests. Right. You know, you, you know sometimes when you have guests, you could, you know, team up. Nobody's sitting there, and they're going off about me. Right. We might not go. And I walk in there, right, and he's looking like a deer in headlights, you know, was shaking with the glass of wine in his hand, this <laughs> asshole, right? And, 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 and I lay into the guy, right, you know. Right, right, and I, and I tell him what I, and I said, do you want to go right now? You know, we might not come to the garden. I go, let me ask you something. Do you really fucking think that, that, that the garden is going to be packed tonight because of you, you little asshole? Do you really think they're coming out for you? Yeah, get up on stage. Because and if, if that was the truth, why aren't you doing those places all over the country? That's right. You know what I mean? Yes. Do you want to go toe to toe? Do you want to really see what you got? And Anthony tries to get in because he's the funny one. Yeah. And I just shut him down. Right. You know that he's like, all right. You know, he backed off in a was second. Was he doing the dice impression? No, no, no he Ooh. shut his fucking <laughs> mouth yeah, in a right, second. Right. And now this guy, Opie, he's got nothing to say, of course. Right. Is he a physically because, impressive man? No, he, not at all. No. He's not physically impressive. He's an Opie. But, he's but even if he was, it, it, like I say, I have been hit, so right. it wouldn't bother. You're ready to go. But it wasn't about fighting physically. I wanted to see what he had verbally. Right. Like if you want to go toe to toe, do it. Yeah. Let Let's the other see what guy you got. shut up. You because, go, go go head to head yeah, with me. Because yeah. I claim I'm the best at that. Okay. There is uh, nobody in stand up that can do what I do. Right. You know when I'm on stage entertaining and complimenting women and saying things like, hey, you, I think you're adorable. Me, I shoot so much cum in your fucking mouth, it would look like your fucking teeth are melting. You understand? <laughs> if the FBI frisked me, they would find your asshole print on my cockhead because I know how to entertain. Right. You know, other comics want to come on, fuck you, fuck you. You ever fucked it? They don't know how to do it. They don't make it colorful. Right. You know you what I mean? A, you have a you way know, of communicating. When I look at a girl and go, let me tell you something, sweetheart. If my cock and your 
cunt were to collide on impact, your pussy would need airbags, and I would need a seatbelt wrapped around my big oval-shaped balls. Do you understand what that means? Those are the you know, kind. And I said that right to my girlfriend last night before I left town to come here, oh. and she smiled. When you she have... appreciated the fucking compliment. When you have energy like that and a delivery like that, it's intimidating. And you were saying to the guy, "Come on, let's go, yeah, but, let's but, go." But but even on regular radio, even you, you don't have to beat me. Well, maybe once in a while, but but I can do that yes. without the cursing. Right. This is great. The the freedom to be able to do it. Fabulous, this. right? I can't even believe what I just said. Right. On the open air, yeah. You know. Yeah. And you know what? It, compared to what we're playing every day, it wasn't even that shocking, which is great. <laughs> which is great. So you could even go further if you wanted to. Yeah. Well, if you, you know, wanted to I didn't come here. I, even I, further, you could do it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like when I buy a Valentine's Day card, now you got to write something special to them. Right. You know, like it's a like you're gonna beat out a team of writers from Hallmark. What am I gonna write? <laughs> Number one, I can't find the card to my girlfriend that says what I feel unless it start with "Hey, fuck face." You know what I mean? I don't think Hallmark's gonna write that. What am I gonna write? I love the way you run your tongue around my asshole lips. The way you do, and then people are looking at me on stage like like an asshole doesn't have lips. Right. Believe me, it does, Artie. Believe me. So when you went to it don't have a tongue, but it's got little lips. I hear you. When you go toe to toe with this guy, so he really he had didn't nothing. go toe to toe. He, he sat there he like sat an there. idiot. Right. Yeah. The other guy, and then the they other, came the to the garden. Wasn't helping him, and he was alone. They came and... to the garden right. to introduce me. They brought up a chick, and she took her tits out. Wait, well, there's something new. Yeah, right. But they had nothing to say. Before. Right. And I came on, and the the bottom line was you that killed. my kids saw me destroy. Right. And, um, and that's what you. They that's, should that, really look forward to my book. I think that'll help them. That was the dream that you had, <laughs> that you presented to your wife. You said, "In a year, I will be at the garden." And it was less. I did it in eight months. In eight months. When, and when I called my agent about this, was beautiful. Uh, Dennis Offa, I, you might have met him like at Westbury. You wouldn't remember. Yeah. Anyway, when I called him, the the album came out that day. Right. And he calls me up, and he's going. Dice, baby, what's the move, man? You know, because that's how we talk. You know, right. it's the impression of it. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not exactly. He always gets Sounds mad. Sounds like a it. normal agent. Yeah, he's going, I mean, what's the move? You know, right. and I go, I think you should book the garden. Yeah. And he goes, the garden? Last time you did Westbury, you did half a house, man. Because, as you know, you came to Westbury. It's right. 3,500 seats. That's right. Half a house, like 1,500, whatever. It's not a bad crowd. So why do I believe I could do the garden? Right. So I said, look, I've been doing this radio show, and he's going to radio show. The album's out for four hours, man. Right. Let's book the beacon and see what happens. So I said, Dennis, the beacon's going to sell out in 20 minutes. I'm telling you something. So he goes, well, then we'll move it, or we'll add a second one. To make a long story, the beacon sold out in 35 minutes. He didn't even understand it. So your own agent doesn't really understand no, your No, but he deal. also didn't understand. Years ago, when I did the arenas, what happened was the career moved so quickly. See, he was Rodney's agent. Right. And from all those specials, see, I, he's the only one I stuck with all these years, Dennis Offa. Right. Because no matter what I've gone through in my career, he he's always, been there for you. Yeah, he's always believed that, right. that you know, I'm, I'm going to come back strong and even when I call now I'm like what I call coming out of retirement right you know and so were you so, in retirement did you take well, a few I years call, off? I call it retirement because these last three and a half years I really had to be there for my boys that's the bottom line. And it you, wasn't planned, you know, but put the career. Yeah, I don't give a shit about any stage That's if my admirable. kids aren't functioning right. Right. You know, and I just am and there for through, them. You went through a divorce. You knew that was traumatic for the kids. And yeah, you said, I mean, hey, I'm going to take care of my kids. Yeah, I, and that yeah. and that's all I cared and about. It. And I stayed with them. And, you know, I'd go to, are like, boys, Vegas for a few nights, and that was it. And are the boys popular? Are they having a good life? They, Do you feel, they, they are happy. They they're, they're great musicians. Uh my 11-year-old, I mean, he idolizes Slash. Right. He's great on the guitar. And my 15-year-old plays a, drums like uh, John Bonham. You're a, I mean, you're he's, a singer. He's, do you ever jam with them? Do you ever, yeah, you, we, you we, do. we do a lot. They, I was just in Vegas recently, and they would do the weekends with me. They come up and, on stage with you. Yeah. My kid, my 15 years old, he's only playing drums a few all alone, you know, behind the curtain. I'd introduce him, one, uh, one of America's up-and-coming drummers, my son, you know. Right. And he went into a drum solo that if you saw it, you'd go, when did this kid stop playing? Really? The only thing is, you'd be amazed, he's six one and a half already. Yeah, wow. And he's only wow. 15. No yeah. kidding. But is he, he getting he, laid or is it too young? He wants to. He <laughs> wants to get laid. Yeah, he's a handsome kid. Have you given him sexual yeah, he advice? He looks like me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 
buddy, what are you doing over there? Eh? I heard your little impression. <laughs> it's, not, it's not an impression. Get the fuck over here now. Oh. <laughs> so I got my chick balls deep. Oh, good week, What? Uh... That's Dice 88. You got to get Dice 2006, Dude, my friend. Dude, I, I heard your new shit. I love it. Do you don't do Florentine anymore? plays oh, for him. You don't do that anymore? Oh. Florentine will be with me this weekend. Oh, he will? Yeah, yeah he's, he's guy, the greatest. Yeah. yeah, he's a great guy. Do you? But, do, so, so the boys, do the you, boys did you are, give them sex advice? Are you the kind of father would yeah, say, look? No, you had see, to talk with yeah, the 15-year-old? No. Oh, please. Did you say to your son, <laughs> please, look? I said, look. I'm, I said, first, the you hold your son. cock against the clit a little, oh, just to get a hold. <laughs> Why? That's, no, that's would I say advice. that? Come on. Kids 15. <laughs> would I say that? Please. No, I don't say it. No, but the thing is, um, when you tell your that, boy to rub your cock against the clit, does he understand uh, that you're just trying to help? Where's the clit? Yeah, and I said, then you just put the head in. Yeah. Because any further might cause discomfort. It's true. You know that, right, Artie? It's good advice. <laughs> no, I give him advice. I don't tell him, tell me that. No, because I tell him, I said, I tell him, you know, when was it, a week ago? I said, I said, Max, let's say you're going to bang a chick a week from today. Right. It could happen, right? Right. I go, now, I don't know about you, but I start jerking off this morning. <laughs> <laughs> because it's all about the prep work. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. You don't want to shoot want to So by the time fast. you get in bed with the chick, you're prepared. You're a soldier. Right. You don't shut the lights. You say, you look at me when I bang you. Look at my form. I'm on my toes. I shaved my balls for this. Now, this conversation is with the 11-year-old or the 15-year-old? <laughs> no, I'm kidding around. I'm this, just giving I, a little comment. We've been talking. I'm I'm Let's say hello. Can we but, say hello to a few people? Are you uh, going to feel okay? that I'm you a weak in some way? Today is us. Today's Let's keep today's us. Because, because, how right. long have we been going without a break? Do you need to break? We've gone two and a half hours. Jeez. Oh, wait, really? so, no, so in other words, about an so hour in other words Chauncey really said something to you and so, it so, got, yeah, it got, so, got out of line. So by me call, wait a minute, by me calling to Gary, see, that's my way. I don't know how you did, but that was my, see, that's why I didn't even want to really go through the whole fight. Right. You know, I mean, I, I hope you don't have hard feelings, but I don't, you know, and that's well, why I, I called him, and I was very... You know, I was sincere with the guy. I said, look, when, when am I going to call how? When we're in an old age home? Right. How long am I going to wait I'm going to tell you something. I don't think it is an easy thing for anyone, especially a guy who's had tremendous success and stuff, to pick up the phone and call and say, hey, look, this is silly. We were friends. We want to, you know, get together. Bad things were said on both parts. I said lots of bad stuff about you. You said lots of bad stuff about me. I understand that. And that's the way it goes when you're in a feud. And I, it certainly happened with other people. But uh, you came in here today. You explained yourself to me. I explained myself to you. I, I don't have any bad feeling. I mean, look, do I trust? Is it the same situation as it was 10 years ago you, that we you had? Know something? I don't know if it'll ever be the same. You want to know something? You know damn you. well it picked up right where it was. Yeah, it was, you know great, I mean? it was great I mean, seeing not, you. It was a great appearance. The only difference is, you know, I've been listening to you. You haven't right. seen me. I've been out right. of it. You know right. what I mean? Right, yeah. So I know that. But, uh, yeah, I to me... I will always have a great deal of affection for No, but you. I, I heard and a lot of here. what you were going through, yeah. and, you know... Even will you, we go house hunting again? That's yeah. the oh question. My God. <laughs> you know what? I, I, that I, ain't I, happening. Don't give him your number. No. You, both, you both have homes at this point you're happy with, right? Yeah, I like my house, and you like your house. Go ahead, Sal. You wanted to say something to Andrew Dice Clay. Big fan, Dice. Honored to have you here. Quick question. You crying on the Arsenio Hall show, uh -huh. do you think that hurt your career? Because that seemed to be a reoccurring well, joke for a long time. You, you know what that was? That was an actual moment. I mean, you know, to say you crying, you know, the people that didn't see it go, what was he crying over? What happened was I personally, I'm not, I'm somebody that doesn't hide my emotions. And I was actually so thrilled at that moment in my life that the next day I had my first starring role in a film opening, which, which I got screwed because I knew there was no premiere anymore. They put, they, I knew they were pulling this movie. But I took it to the level where I'm going, you know, I really took myself somewhere. And what I wanted to do, because every time I would be on Arsenio or any talk show, I was always like on trial for what I do as a comic. So it was always like, who's Andrew? Who's Andrew Dice Clay? So I just wanted to get up and tell all the people watching, because I had millions of fans watching. I wanted to tell them how I actually felt about, you know, the accomplishment I made and that tomorrow when this movie opens... I really get to make, I love to make people laugh. Some people, I guess, but, guys thought it was a miscalculation. It was, in the sense if you that, listen to the words, if you right. play it, I mean, I, I got choked up. Yeah. Right. And the only way, I couldn't even believe it, because I just shed my skin. I was like, fuck this. Do I want to tell people. Do you regret people, it? No, I, I don't regret it. You know, I got, I got lots of letters about, 
you know, how people heard the words. They right. heard what I was saying to them. Right. But the only way to get out of it, because I did get emotional, is to, you know, do the cigarette around the head. Right. You know, because I was really, I, go, I can't believe I'm choking up on this. Right, right. But I was just trying to, like, if I was just talking to you in a room, I'd say, Howard, I broke my fucking ass, and now tomorrow I got my first movie coming out from 20th Century Fox, you know, which a week after it came out, they pulled. What when was the, the movie? Uh, Ford Failing. Yeah. Oh, I love and the movie, movie. I wrote the, in my book the whole thing, what went on then, how I was called into a room with Barry Diller, and they said, look, we're going to pay you off on your movie contract. They basically told me, you're too controversial for us to handle. And they paid me off. And they said, look, you got a great career. You're doing concerts. What you is it, Richard? 20... Go ahead. I got a quick question. My favorite comedy al album of all time is Day the Laughter Died Part 2. I was always wondering the story behind that. Did you go in unannounced into this club? Because yeah. the crowd seems really hostile, and at the end, you get in a fight with a guy. <laughs> well, that's, what he like. that's why he explained that's, that's what he likes doing. That's what I said. Right, I, I have, all you right, know. Look, listen, we've gone for an hour and a half. Okay. We are, we are, this, this, to me, was a very, very healthy reunion, I think. Yes, it uh, was. On my part. Uh, uh, I, Robin, do you agree? I agree. Uh, I think it's great to see you again. It felt good when you walked in the room. I certainly missed you, and I missed our uh, relationship and our friendship. You came in here. You explained yourself. I don't know. It just seemed very natural to me, and I think I think uh, this was really good. Uh, let's go yeah, around the room. I don't know who that guy was who came in the last time we saw you, but this is the Andrew Dice Clay that we always knew. No, well, you know what? Everybody goes through shit. That's, That's what right. it's about. All you right, know what listen. I mean? I'm glad you made the phone I mean, call you, to Gary, and you yeah. were more of a man than I was. I was not going to pick up the phone and call. You did, and I think that's you great. Know, it's okay. It's, that's what I, it is. I'm glad you did it, and I thank you for doing that, Fred. How do you feel right now? I Andrew? think it's great. I think it's great that Dice is back in the limelight too there's a guy whose career kind of got cut short with all that bullshit like with snl and all that stuff everybody's saying he was like you know misogynistic and whatever he's just trying to be funny yeah i, I always yeah, I mean, yeah, i always he, stuck if up i heard you. the lines i just said they were but, adorable that's right you were very nice to women <laughs> in that i thought <laughs> i mean not many guys even care about rubbing yeah. a girl's clip with their penis Absolutely. they just and, go and, in you know to tell you that their asshole has yeah. lips that's right <laughs> even though you're you're a little uh you, you've you've set the rules that it was just the three of us and all that but take a couple of calls ken go ahead in florida <laughs> just uh, let it happen go ahead ken let's go yeah. Tell you the truth, I was never a big fan of Dice before. I always thought he was kind of one-dimensional. But this is probably one of you know that we saw a lot of him today. I'm I'd welcome listening to him again because I thought this was a spot-on interview. I really appreciated hearing it. Yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed having Dice in here today. I'm glad you see came people in. concentrate on the curses, but like with with you, I always thought there was always a great it's joke in there. Yeah, me. Artie. Uh, That's Artie. Over it's Artie. Oh, Artie Lang. <laughs> Artie Lang. No, no, the, the the, but I never met you. Artie. How you doing, Dice? No, I'm good. <laughs> nice to be. But I what I was saying is people always concentrate on the curses. With Dice, there's always like a great joke in there, like the joke of, I'm going to beat a team of writers at Hallmark. That's <laughs> you, good you know stuff. Dice and I never had a problem about his comedy. Yeah. We had a personal... But it was uh, personal uh, My only yeah. thing about what happened here is I thought it went great, but it, it wasn't fully resolved. So in other words, you Go said, you said something quickly yeah. to Chauncey. And you felt Chauncey then talked to Howard, and you didn't know what happened in that conversation. Well, you know, I and always feel that the fire more, and you didn't. Well, that's what that's what I felt. So we wind right. up having a big fight, but I really never knew what because I knew he would call you. Right. See, it's one thing what he writes; it's another thing what he said on the you know, phone. Right? Who, yeah. You know you what I mean? What he he even ahead. though they record I'm, the I'm interview, wait a minute. Yes. Even though they record the interview. Then they talk to you. Fred, well, what is your question? I got one question because Chauncey's been uh, notorious for this. Did he actually write the truth in his article or did he embellish it? If, if I was to tell you the truth, on. I never read any article he ever wrote on That's a shame because there's a lot I of stopped, times I stuff stopped stuff reading it. Let, let me bullshit. defend Chauncey for one minute. For one, for one minute. No, it's not does, even Chauncey. I yeah. stopped reading my press a long time no, no, ago. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm answering Fred's question. Yeah. Chauncey okay. does take a tape recorder, yeah. so he writes verbatim what people say. Yeah, but a lot of times he's had stuff like he's quoted. Things in the paper about you Listen, that are totally untrue. Di that's true, but Dice blasted me. Mm. Uh, I came back and blasted him, right. and we've we've not spoken now for nine or ten no, years. I know. And the fact of the matter is, I'm sitting here. I heard what Dice had to say. I feel good toward Dice. I feel Dice feels good toward me. And Artie, you know I wouldn't leave anything unresolved. No, I, I would know. call people on it if I thought there was stuff still on the I'm table. I'm just saying that we didn't clear up exactly the fact that Chauncey spoke to you after his interview, and that no, might Cha have fed I the read, fire a little bit. I read bit. Chauncey's article. And, yeah, um, I think Chauncey called, and then he had him fax over the cop. Yeah, yeah. and I went, and listen, you know, I reacted to it because <laughs> I think it was it was designed to get a reaction. Who knows what was going yeah, but, on? But if you I remember, had my theories about if, why Dice did it. If you remember, yep. 
you know, why did he call you that quickly? If he didn't want to cause a problem, he no, loved the he, no, he loved oh, the controversy. Yeah, he loved it. So, he he but that's what I was saying at the beginning of this whole thing. So basically, somebody else came between us instead of me. You know, I would you know have what? Anyway. That day, I should have just told you personally, hey Howard, what was that? You know, right. why did you just go to the phones? I haven't that even seen. Yes, that was what I would have appreciated. Yeah, I mean, we we've had debates saying. about different have, things before. You know, and arguments we had, but face to face, and then at the end we hug and say, "Hey, what a great show!" That's what I, I think should have been what done. What Dice is saying, he's saying a true friend, if he spouted off like that because he was angry, would not then call you and say, "Guess what Dice said?" Yes. that's revving it up and not caring and, and about what, two and guys. The who thing is, all right, but in his defense, what, that was his role. He, if he got, he right. would go I out and interview that. people. I, but see, I don't blame Chauncey. But he's, that's what he meant when he said it's yeah. people who get in between, because that was not a message that Dice intended to send to you. Well, if you say it in, a, in, a, in an interview, it's going to eventually I get agree, to me. I right. agree, but he's, right. he's just stepping off the air, and Chauncey's right there, and he blew. Right. I understood that. Yeah. I understood that. Yeah. And uh, I disagreed with it, and I went on the air but with that, it. Well, and it well, caused yeah. a That's what I mean. People do reaction, that all the time. Yeah. They come between. Dice, give right. me a handshake. All right. And I'm glad you came in today. All I'm going right. to take a commercial break, okay? And uh, I'll give you a hug, and uh, we're right. going to see if we can't uh, get back on track. This again. is Let's a Bud's, Budzini and Corleone. That's all. Right. Yeah, that's all. Right. Yeah, the family has sat down. The family sat down. Oh no, down. I feel odd. He's not happy. <laughs> He wanted fireworks. Yeah, for some reason, well, we, we didn't thrill Artie enough. It, 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 That's it. See what I mean? It's not resolved for Artie. No, there's I no bloodletting. The I didn't know Artie. Do you want us to fight? No, I mean, that would be entertaining, but no, I think it's resolved. I said, I just asked one thing about Chauncey. No, no, but why is, you, why, is the pitch, why is the pitch in your voice getting higher? Right. Yeah, Don't you know what that means? Because I have lung cancer. Don't you know what that means? What? Uh, you're lying. <laughs> That's what happens I when you lie. I asked a question about Chauncey. It's gotten higher again. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. I like you, Artie. You're right. You too. Oh, I like you. Like what, what, uh, and, and the next time you come in, you got to tell me what happened with Hot Tub Johnny, no longer friends, oh. and Club Soda Kenny, no longer friends. Yeah. Well, we won't get it. We'll do that. We'll, Another we'll time. get into that. Robin, uh, Andrew Dice Clay yes. is here. Are we All plugging right. anything? No, I got some shows in Long Island at Governor's. I think that they're, they're sold out already. Okay, but you'll be at yeah, Governor's. And, and I'll be with uh, Jim Florentine and... Uh, uh, Norton? No, the little boy, Jameson. Oh, Don Jameson. Don, yeah, yeah. the little boy, Jameson. He's been here for roast. Uh, Do you call him the little boy? Don Jameson did both roasts. He killed. All yeah, right. Yeah, 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 Don. Yeah, yeah, we know him. Yeah, right. Don, guy, the little yeah. boy, Jameson. That's right. Where, and, where are you going to be with at, at Governor's? Governor's. Oh, okay. At Governor's. At Governor's. Dice. Yeah. Uh, I wish you the best, and thank you for thank coming you. in. I'm glad you came in. It's I'm good. Glad it feels good. It, it feels, feels good. good. Get over here. Great to see you. Give it. Don't yeah. hug me too hard. I'll I won't. I won't. I won't. <laughs> it's really good great to see you, too. That was great, a great. fantastic was, appearance. Was, you know, thank you for coming in. Really. It's good to see you. Really good to see you. I, mean, I, I was, I was Everybody's asking, what are you going to do in there? What, I, go, I really want to make up with the guy. I haven't seen him. Uh -huh. You know, he's going through all this shit. I mean, I, I understand it. Right. Maybe that's what made me call. Yeah. I, you know, it just gets to that point. Yeah. yeah. You know? It seems like the feud is over, man. Between you and Howard. Not as far as I can say. <laughs> no, it's great. It, it, it really good to see him. It was just like a hang. It was like not even uh, being on the radio. That's how it felt to me, you know. And uh, it's just great. It's a, it's like being with an old friend, just picking up where you left off. That's how I really feel. If I say it any different, I'd be lying to you. And Howard brought up a lot of the feuds you've been in with other comedians in the past, and you mentioned that he's the only one that can really get you riled up and, and get you angry about stuff that happened in the past to him. Why is that? Who? Who, who Howard, like, what happens if he's able to rile you up so easily? Because he knows how to push my buttons, and uh, and I know how to push his, and, I, you know, that's what happens sometimes. Hey, Denise, I just, I gotta go back in there, but can you say it was so great to have you on? Thank you. And to meet you and everything. Thank you. And I'm Thank glad it all. Finally, got resolved. My name is Benji. Uh, what's your name? Benji. Benji, nice to meet you. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right, Benji. I know the goof. I know the goof. Please, sir. How about I bite your eyes out? Please. Get out of the room. Kiss me. Get out of the room. Just one kiss. Get out of the room. Just one? Just one kiss. You know what? Just one. Yeah, you got it. Please. You got it, Just one kiss. 
Okay. How long has the goof got to go? Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Don't kiss me again. Okay. Right. Your ass? <laughs> right. Thanks, man. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. You take care. Now. You take care, right? Okay. You'll be good. Okay? Right. You take care. All right. All right. All right. All right. You're going to have to leave, man. You're going to have to leave. Oh, oh. All right. He's going to be all right. That was a kiss. That was a good kiss. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. You okay? All right, Benji. No, come on. Benji. All right. No. All right. Give him his hat. Benji, what happened? You tried to kiss Dice on the lips? Why, why would you do that? I was overwhelmed. You were happy to see yeah. him? Yeah. You're a fan? I, I think he's funny. He never was one of my favorite comedians, but I think he's very funny. So why did you try to kiss him? Because he just... What would you do to your favorite comedian? Are you a star effer? I blew him. I blew him. I'm not a star effer, a star kisser. I'd say. Who's your favorite comedian? Me. Kinnison, Eddie Griffin, Dave yeah. Chappelle. I've never seen you try to kiss any one of them. So what happened when you kissed Dice? Did he freak Chris? out? We didn't get tongue or anything like that. You we kissed just... him on his lips? Uh, no, I didn't get that far. How far did you get? Third base? Close. We were close. And then did he... you move in and then he just pulled back? We had a nice hug. Yeah. And then uh, then he... Uh, then he... <laughs> Hi, I'm Wilmer Valderrama, and I'm here at the Howard Stern Show. We're about to talk about some scandalous shit, and that's cool, because we can say shit now. It's not great. We don't have to get beep. You know, like, we're not real people, or part, part of a speech is a beep as well. No. It's time we get to say shit. So I'm excited to be here. I'm a big fan of this, and, um, you know, it's been eight years, you know, for me trying to get up here, and, and finally it's happening, so it's really exciting to, uh, to be here. But, um... Hope you guys check it out and have fun because we're going to talk about some stuff, including my MTV show, Your Mama, on April 3rd. Um, there's going to be some shit talking on that one, too. Hey, I got to meet this kid. This kid's my hero, Vilder Val Vilmer Valderrama. He's a slick motherfucker, this kid. This kid <laughs> is getting more pussy than Artie, Shuley, Benji, and Fred combined. You there know he is. That's the guy. About it, and I said, I you know what? Hey, oh. He's up to his ass and pussy. This, this kid's kid. up to his ass and pussy. Wilmer is not <laughs> exactly. having sex, but Vilmer will have sex. <laughs> exactly. Are you Vilmer? Hey, how are you? How you doing, bro? It's a pleasure. How nice are you? you? How, how you doing? Vilmer's how you doing? elbow What's deep. What's up, guys? Oh, you really even has an accent. I thought the accent was a put on. Well. It depends. The one on the the one on the seventy show is the one that uh, that made me the money. You know what I mean? <laughs> this even though, one, even though, uh, welcome to the show. Are you, you Vilmer or Wilmer? It's Wilmer. It's Wilmer. Wilmer. Um, okay. Yeah, it's Wilmer. But a lot of people call me Wilmer. Actually, yeah, this I've is, only heard Wilmer. I'm from Venezuela, Wilmer. but but over there, there's a lot of Germany. Why influence. are people calling you Wilmer? It sounds pretentious, and you're not even advocating it. You're <laughs> Wilmer. You know what it is? Is is uh, a lot of people assume it comes from from Germany. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because Venezuela is kind of formed from, by a lot of Italians and and. and uh, well, they in took German. in a lot of Germans after the war. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So then a lot of names came from that, and which is weird because, you know, we have a lot of Indian looking people over there, and then all of a sudden... You even you say know. that, um, that uh, when you were in high school, before you got to be an actor, to be on that 70s show with Ashton Kutcher, that you were like the character Pedro in Napoleon Dynamite, that you really didn't get a lot of pussy, yeah. you were never a <laughs> ladies' man. You were kind of geeky? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's funny, uh, you know, when you, when you can't ask for a coffee, fist, like, you know, when you don't have the, you know, the vocabulary or, or just the language, you know, you really become isolated by, oh. by a lot, you know. And you were born in the United States. Yeah, I was born in Miami. And yeah. you were taken to Venezuela when yeah. you were three? Yeah, when I was three years old, I moved back to Venezuela. Yeah. And then they brought you back here, and you barely knew English, and you were like Pedro. Yeah, I, I didn't even, I mean, to be honest, I didn't even know how to count. I mean, I didn't know how to... So how did you end up uh, getting a job in Hollywood on a big hit show? If uh, here you were, this <clears throat> geeky guy, no, yeah. but no confidence, I assume, very Pedro-like. Right. Uh, and, and I assume in high school you never got laid. Is that right. true? Yeah, well, high school was, <laughs> was a long journey. I mean, you, 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 you're talking about, you know, when I, when I first got to the United States, it's at 14. The one thing that was did you get laid in Venezuela? Um, that's what's funny. It's like just before 
I came back, you know, age 14. I don't know if they were doing charity. I don't know what they were doing, but like, <laughs> here, you know what? You're leaving anyways. You know what I mean? Girl gave you exactly, sex. Yeah, in but Venezuela. Yeah, exactly. Here, <laughs> t- le- away, leave your virginity you. in Venezuela. A Venezuelan <laughs> girl gave yeah. you, was she another 14 year old? The two of you got around, yeah. you, you, and you had it was full... a, It was a famous hide and seek. Okay? Right. <laughs> nice. So explain to me, you come to this country, yeah. and now you're in high school. Kids can be tough. You don't yeah. know the language. They yeah. don't know in Venezuela you're a stud. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they're mean to you, so you didn't get any girls the entire high school years. No, you know, and and that's that's what's interesting. You know, when I when I when I first got to the United States, I figured, okay, how am I going to learn? You know, to ask for a coffee. Like, how am I going to be able to order at a restaurant? You know, mm-hmm. and uh, when I was in Venezuela, I was always dancing and singing and acting since I was like six years old. Ah. So I figured that the one thing that was going to help me improve my speaking skills what would be to, um, you know, go back into school activities, which was going to force me to read, force me to speak up, and force me to raise my hand and That's, get on You stage knew to and, do that for yourself. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, let, you the, the th- did you join the theater? Yeah, I joined the theater department, and at the yeah. time there was, you know, <laughs> I mean, go, t- talk about being a geek and then jumping into another gig. Fest, you know what I mean? Was your first gig of uh, that 70s show with Ashton Kutcher? No, I actually did a bunch of commercials. My first commercial was a, a Yellow Pages, you know, a Smart Yellow Pages commercial in Spanish. Uh. Right. Yeah, right. So, with so that, that's your advantage. You can do, now that uh, America has a lot of Spanish-speaking uh, uh, media, you right. can do both. Yeah, no, and that was, that was what really helped me a lot, because then with that money, I paid my dues, so I became a Screen Actors Guild. And look... You know, my family and I were struggling a lot. We really never had any of these kind of opportunities, you know. And and my dad wanted me to just get my education. He didn't want me to work. And but you know, when you is your family now mooching off you? Do you <laughs> find that you have to support your That's father the and your mother? That's the thing. My mom and my dad are so proud that they won't like they won't ask me for anything. So I just have to do it for them. Uh-huh. What you do? You buy them a house yeah. or something? Uh, yeah. At age at age eighteen, when the seventy show got picked up, the first thing I did is mom, dad. We're not paying rent anymore. Wow. You know what I mean? That's nice. You know, You're a good and, son. Well, Are I mean, there like, other brothers and sisters? Yes, oh, I have. Poor oh. you. Poor you. <laughs> what a burden. What a burden. Oh, and then they probably, don't, they probably don't do anything, right? Oh, no. They wear, they, wear, uh, they wear more name brands than I do. You know? In Venezuela, you probably had no toilet, no telephones. I mean, and now, here you are. You're the guy with the money. So do you have your own place, and then you bought your parents a place, and then you well, have the yeah. brothers and sisters looking for a paycheck, too? Are they too? looking for places, too? Well, no. You know, it's funny. I, I have a... I have, I have a 24-year-old sister in uh, Maryland, beautiful girl, and then I have a... Uh, um, what does she do? Is she married, hopefully? Well, she did. Uh, well, she's not married yet, but uh, no. she's, she, uh, she did a little modeling, you know. She went right. to South America, did a bunch of the modeling for Catalogs over there. So you so don't she, have to pay for her. Yeah, I don't have to pay for she's her, She's taking you know? care of herself. But then I have a 17-year-old and a 6-year-old that, you know, I, I want to pay for college for them. Now, when you were doing the commercials and things, you probably weren't getting laid. When you got on that 70s show, all of a sudden, you're getting the caliber of woman all of us would love. I would love to bang Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> You probably, I would. He probably took her virginity. Did he fuck her? Oh, yeah, he oh, fuck Lindsay yeah, Lohan. He fucked her. What are you? Why insulting the while. man? He was how many years you were going what out with Lindsay you Lohan? Fuck Lindsay Lohan. Uh, we, were, we were together for like a like a year and something. But you don't meet her. <laughs> but, you, but you don't meet her till you're on that '70s show, right? Yeah, yeah. This is like this is like last year. He goes, son of a bitch. Last right. year. Uh, this was last year. You've been you were, in yeah. a, you were in a serious relationship with her, right? And the rumor was you dumped her for Ashley Simpson. I know, which is the most hysterical awesome. thing. Ever, you but, fucked Ashley Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? You you had sex with her too, huh? Um, well, if you put it that way, I mean, oh, yeah, might well, as well, oh you God. know. Look, like, it's so funny. Like, oh you are a stud. It was a little louder than that. No kidding. Oh, it was a little really? louder wow. than that. Wow. 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 Was, was Who Lindsay? Is that? Was is that Lindsay? Lindsay? Which sounds like they're singing. <laughs> Whatever happened to racism? Those chicks aren't supposed to be with Venezuelan guys. Yeah. What uh, happened to us white guys? Yeah. So, so, so. See, he's Wilma. doing it for revenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, was the first big celebrity date? Lindsay Lohan? No, you know, uh, uh, you know, this is really historical. I'm gonna tell you right now. This is like the most hidden fact ever. My first celebrity date ever was Ariana Richards, who was the little girl in the Jurassic Park movie. Of course, she was a lot more girl. Yeah, you know I mean, you <laughs> fucked the little girl in the <laughs> Jurassic <laughs> Park <laughs> movie. Call awesome. the authority. <laughs> so uh, that poor little girl. <laughs> I mean, I was 17 years old. Right. Yeah, she probably wanted it. So, yeah. so I mean, uh, absolutely. You're, you're you're like the Venezuelan John Stamos. Do you ever say you look like him a little bit? Yeah, well, a little bit. In the smile. No. Yeah. The word is so charming. You know? I, got, I got a bunch of Lindsay Lohan questions I got to ask you. Number one, sure. are those boobs real? Yes. They are. Yes. They are. Yeah. 
Maybe yeah. she got them done after after film. You know how people always <laughs> think that she has breast implants, but you're saying those are real. No, no. When when we were together, look, she was she she was a bombshell. Oh. I mean, What's it like watching your beautiful... dick disappear into those? <laughs> 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 That's nice. That's nice. What's it like watching your fucking dick disappear into those titties? (laughs) (laughs) It's remarkable. It's remarkable. It's it's just remarkable. Now, she has... The reason I I find her... Good for you, man. A, I find her very attractive. Thank you. I do. I mean, she's a young girl, and maybe probably too... You know, some would say too young for me. I don't think so. I think I'm a young-looking kind of... Well, she's, you know, more mature than her years. Yeah. And, (laughs) and, and, And by the way, you dated... Who I think is a real hot piece of ass. You dated Mandy Moore. Yeah. For you two fucked years. Mandy Moore. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> Jesus. I love this you know, you have I to stay here. Kid. You have to stay here all week. This is the guy you need to talk to for uh, a week. This is our I'm greatest down. guest ever. <laughs> Do you just have like a great rap? Because a lot of these, a lot How of these girls, these girls. First of all, you think a lot of these girls would be prejudiced, you know, because you're kind of like Spanish looking and all yeah, that stuff. So I'll tell you what helped me. Can I tell you what helped me? No. I'll tell you exactly what helped Roofies. me. And I'm gonna <laughs> Roofies. one, one, <laughs> one that's, that's the, Yeah, that's all the right. silent. That's Thank the silent. You, man. Yeah, that's the silent fact. But <laughs> but the one thing that really helped me, and I tell you, I, and I, I seriously, and I told him this when I first met him for the first time, when I was in high school. The movie Desperado came out, right? Desperado. Desperado. And yes. then it was cool to have an accent and wear tight jeans. Oh. Right? Nice. So then all of a sudden I went from like geeky kid who probably is not going to grow up to be anything to exotic, you know. But did you like, get Mandy Moore while you were on that 70s show? Yeah, actually, no. we met. Everything has happened during that '70s show. Right. Yeah, no, that yeah. helped. I that's mean, the moral of the story. Moral of the story. Everyone get a sitcom. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's what we're working on. Hey, first of all, I was so on a sitcom for two years. I never fucking got laid by man. Yeah, you, you don't look like him. <laughs> so exactly. Wait a second. You, you know, your so, jeans weren't tight. Yeah, <laughs> you wear tight, tight jeans. Yeah, seriously, try some. They tight were. Jeans. They were actually. Right. You're, like <laughs> a, you're like a sausage in those tight jeans. <laughs> but let me talk to you for a second here, because this is a pretty amazing story. You get on that '70s show. All of a sudden, you're getting high class girls. Mandy Moore Man. is very attractive. She's one of the most beautiful mm. girls I've what's ever met. The, and you know, and what's to be the honest, approach? What's the approach? How do you get them? Yeah. yeah. Look, to, I'll, tell, I'll be completely honest with you. And I mean, I think you, you hopefully, you know, maybe you can tell a little bit, but, but the, the fact of the matter is, you know, half of this industry is not real. Okay, and I am the guy. We don't know exactly, that. right? Well, sure. know that? I'm sure you guys know that. But but we don't know anything. The reality of the, uh, the reality of the, and the fact is, it's like, look, I'm the guy who, like, and I, and I can't tell you. I mean, like, oh, I'm the guy because of my accent or this or da da da. But I will tell you. I'll tell you what I am. I am the guy who will stand up in the booth <laughs> a little, little louder. <laughs> yeah. I will stand up in the. Oh, ready? Okay, here we go. You're the guy. the guy. Wait, go ahead. Finish the. Thought. I am yeah. the guy who will stand up. So I'm the I'm the guy who's standing up in a booth, and I have a shot with anybody. I have oh, a shot with anybody. Party guy. I well, we're not. This, that's not really a party guy. It's more like, but like, look, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't. I'm not the guy who's roped off in the VIP, you know, you know, pretending I'm wearing this and that. You know, I don't really give a shit about having your that, point. You know, when so. you say you're not the guy roped off in the VIP, you're not with an attitude. You come up to these girls, you're nice to them. They see you're a good guy. Look, I never had any any of these opportunities in my life, professionally and personally. You know, and Right. And in my life, one thing that I've grown to to know is that is that this industry, you know, look, half of this can go like today. I can get fired, anything else, not. Mm-hmm. And if I don't make the most out of my entire life and make friends and 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 you know f- find those real people that are gonna make me not only proud now, of what I am, but these girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, see, but, I'm no. sitting there, so you're party. You know, like you'll ask them to dance, you approach them. Well, yeah, I mean, it's you how'd you meet Mandy real, Moore? Where you do you know? meet her? Do you meet her on the set of that '70s show? Well, that's what's hysterical. This is a yeah. really funny story. You know, I got I got called, and at the time, a Teen Magazine. She was doing the cover of Teen Magazine. Would you go to a shit music festival? Or <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. With a radio show or something. Lots of yeah. shitty music. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you, you um, fucked every shitty singer in the business. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you go to a talentless <laughs> convention? <laughs> So wait a second, Mandy Moore. Get back to her. I mean, imagine Mandy's, those three in a fucking duet. First time you see Mandy Moore naked, how much time do you have to put in with a chick like that before you get to start banging her? Do you have to put in months of time? No. Well, see, we were each other's first loves. You know what I mean? Oh. Like that's that's. that's it took an hour. She was you a virgin. Got her <laughs> she was a virgin. You took her virgininity. Dude. I, dude. I, 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 
High five Artie. Come here. Okay. Look at that. He goes, high five him for me. Wait, wait a second. Did she anyways. tell you? Did she say to you, look, did she say to you, look, I'm a virgin. I'm in love with you. I'm ready now to give myself to you? Well, see, I mean, you know things don't really work out that way. It's not like, you know, in like the movies, you're like, I never had I'm a virgin. ready. You know what I, mean? no, right. I never had a virgin. No girl would ever. One girl said to me, she didn't even want... My first girl that I had sex with said, I don't want to give you sex because you'll always remember the girl you had sex with first, and I don't want to be rattling around in your brain the rest of life. <laughs> she didn't want so, to be his yeah, first. Right. <laughs> so when you get, when you, uh, she really trusted you to give you her virginity, right? Well, look, in, in any relationship period, you know what I mean? Like, if, if it lasted some, 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 you know, time, you know. The closest you, I got one time, I was a girl's 14th, I think. <laughs> Did it hurt? Does it, Did it I hurt? Never, I, no, I never took All a girl's virginity. Night. Yeah. <laughs> like to burst through that hymen is hard, right? Look, I, I'll t- <laughs> that, Honestly, that shitty singing Thomas hymen. You know, so I am such a fan of the show. You have no idea. And like sitting here, I'm like starstruck all over again. Like, like, explain to me, so I, forget her. I just, I mean, you've obviously had some girls' virginity. Is it is it hard to pierce that that that? Hymen thing, you know it's. Um, Do one. you want to know that you're going to have all that work, or would you rather be surprised? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I, honestly, like I think I think everyone somehow is going to relate to this, but but oh, no, yeah. no way, yeah. no way. Especially no way. Right here, and he wore tight tell, jeans too. I'm just going to tell a story ahead, about a fat track. hooker. Let's stay on track. This is a really this is a good this story. Is I need to interview you for real. You got some good stuff there are going on. There young men out there yeah. wanting to know this. Yeah. yeah. Do you have to use? Some sort of tool to pierce that thing. I, 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 I will say this: it is not like warm apple pie. Okay, right. it is not, not like. That. Is your penis black and blue after you take someone's virginity? <laughs> exactly. Um, um, let's see. How do we, how do I put this in the most political way possible? It's just really good. Yeah, good. there you go. You enjoy this it. Is really good. Did she like it, it or was she like, wow, that's painful? Um, I think I think I'm sorry for any girl. It's gonna be painful the first time. So when you're going out with her before she decides to give you virginity, can you do everything else to her? I mean, can you get oral? Can you get all that anal and all that stuff? Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. You have to be you have to be a normal relationship. Right. After you know, there's there's some sort of you know sense of attraction that someone else you know mm-hmm. that someone has for each other. And look, when we first met. Um, you know, she was like this huge pop princess. You know what right. I mean? At the time, She's hot. She was, and 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 the thing is, they, then I was told, and everybody's so afraid of like saying or paying her a compliment or something like that. Mm-hmm. And the first time I met her, I remember the, the jukebox scratch. Like she, I, we, I, she comes up and I have you met Mandy Moore because she was doing a, she was doing a cover of this magazine and then she was interviewing like three or like four you know actors in the issue. You know, right. and I was one of them. And uh, and we were doing a photo shoot together, and she comes up, and she goes, have you met Manny Meyer? And I'm like, yeah, no, no, absolutely not. Hi, good to meet you. And she goes, hi, how are you? I'm like, I'm good. <clears throat> how are you? And she goes, I'm good. And I said, well, you look good. And the room stops. God forbid someone just talk to the princess like that. So you know? in 10 minutes, you're fucking her, right? <laughs> and anyways, five minutes later, we're talking about what's virginity anyway. Yeah, exactly. no, but so no. you're saying because you walked up to her and said, hey, you look good. She it took just, interest in you. You took a shot. Right. It, it was basically what it was. And, you know, it literally, like, her first day was, was hysterical because... Um, Where'd you take you know, her? I'm, we went to... Um, I picked her up over the W. <clears throat> I remember I went up to her room and her mother was there. And her mother says, she's changed shirts three times. And I go, oh, wow. And she goes, mom, what are you doing? So we went upstairs. When do you fuck the mother? <laughs> yeah. Like threesome. Do you, did, did she wear a bra on the first date? Or is she all tired? Because I go, oh, she's changing her shirt. You know you're in. Because it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's, she really yeah. cares how she yeah. looks. Yeah. yeah, yeah when, she, when mom said that, it totally gave me confidence to be, like, funny. <laughs> yeah. right, well, let me be a funny guy now. Because I'm already in like that. You know? So where'd you take her? To dinner? We went to, um, yeah, we went over to this uh, restaurant, Ivy, at the shore. In, uh, in, uh, Ivy, sure. yeah. Uh, That's the I, place to be nice seen beautiful. and to see. Yeah, but it's really, it was the one in the Santa Monica. The one oh, in Beverly Hills yeah. is the one where it's like a red carpet outside. That's you know where I mean? Robin like, and I go. <laughs> nice. We want to be seen. Well, we got to plug the new show. You know what I mean? I mean, you, I mean the, you know what? You're the kind of guy I need about seven hours to interview. I'm going to give you this guy's resume. You're, gonna, you're about to get your well, mind blown. I said he needs to be here all week. Listen, listen to this guy's resume now. Get ready. To just Artie, sit back for a second. If this, isn't a, a, if this isn't a young man's dream, this is an old man's dream. Listen to this. It's a man's <laughs> dream. Time. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Oh, oh my God. Scale of one to ten, how is she? Uh, she she's she's an eight. Okay. Jesus. Jamie Presley. Right. Oh, oh. She's just a friend. She's just, just a friend. Just a friend. Okay. Was a, okay. Oof. Rosaria Dawson. Oh, she's so hot. Oh. Scale of one to ten, what's she? <laughs> she's, she's a great girl. All right. 
You fuck Rosarian Dawson. Get yeah. out of here. Listen to this. Did you fuck Rosarian Dawson or not? Um, you yes know what? No, she's well, yes in a very no. great relationship. Uh, I feel you know, like De Niro and really Raging Bull. Like, you know, <laughs> we're really good friends. Into a sweat. This kid is. You are some man. <laughs> and listen to this one. Now you want to <laughs> moan? Get, get ready to moan. <gasps> Jessica Alba. Oh, oh, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. I mean, do you have a huge dude, penis? Dude, I have honey on DVD. Do you have a huge, penis? Dude, the, the have a huge ta- penis? The tabloids have been very flattered. Do you have um, a huge penis? Honestly, God. Yeah, were you honestly, with Jessica Alba? Honestly, I, I, you know, honestly, I've been, I've been very blessed. Wow, uh, good for you. But do I've you, been blessed. Are you bronzing that thing? I've been blessed. <laughs> I've been blessed. I mean, I'm not. I'm, you know, to be honest, here's the, the. This is the place where I will tell you. Yes, I mean, I am. I am. You, I am you, cursed with this gift. Are you at eight inches or more? Um, a little more. Have you measured it actually? You know, every well, guy you, does. Every guy does. Do you, you know? Are you measuring from your balls, or oh, no, are you no, measuring no, no, from no. the base of your from penis? The base. Mm-hmm. And you're saying you're over eight inches. No man. Son of a. Bitch. I know. Uh, Did Jessica I mean, Alba I'm such an ass. Ass. If I were you, no. if I were you, I believe in God. Is that a Jewish star around your neck? Yeah. Why, now, why do you wear a Jewish star? You couldn't possibly he be Jewish. He wants to make it in Hollywood. No, I actually have. Uh, I have a lot of respect for for my Jewish friends. You know, yeah, I have right. a lot of Jewish friends. Good move in, in L.A., bro. Yeah. 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 Such a good move. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, I found out after. I was like, oh, why am I getting jobs? And then I. <laughs> you got the Jewish star. You got the cross. You got everything. You got a medallion. All right, let's get back to Jessica Alba for a second. Dude, how old were you when you were dating Jessica Alba? I, I, we never dated. Right. You we just just Jessica Alba never dated. You just, you know? banged, you just her? banged No, her? no, no. He, her and I, you know, we had a mutual friend, Billy Woodruff, the director of Honey, you know. Right, right. And uh, at the time, you Great know. Great film. <laughs> I mean, Stella. just, I mean, let's that talk about That guy doesn't work anymore. That director doesn't, that director doesn't work anymore, does he? I <laughs> hope he does. not. He works the drive <laughs> Because I hope not. <laughs> but we but, had, but okay, so how did you meet Jessica well, Alba? Well, we actually, this is the thing, like half of these girls, just so you know, were, we were friends, 1998, 99, we were in the same auditioning room. Did you, you know, become her lover? No, we did not. We did you make not, out with her? We didn't date. We, <laughs> did you make out with her? No. Tell we, the truth. We danced a lot. You danced a lot? Did you finger her? No, I didn't. <laughs> hand job. She's telling did you the truth. Hand job? Though, so. I didn't. Okay. I'll, be, I'll be honest with you. Jennifer I, I, Love you, it, didn't. you were a lover of hers. Uh, yes. Oh, <laughs> man, I'd love to do <laughs> that. Yeah. What are we doing now? Let me ask you something. Version. When you're in bed with these chicks, they're naked, you're doing them from behind, you're putting your penis between their boobs. Are you sitting there going, oh, my God. Are you sitting there going, oh, my God, Jennifer Love Hewitt is doing me, or is this, like, no big deal to you? I could have been um, picking oranges when, in Venezuela. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what, I mean, what do you say to yourself when this is going on? <laughs> okay. Honestly. Why do you think he's wearing a cross honestly, and a Jewish star? Honestly, t- uh, this, two things go through your head, right? Two things go through your head. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Two things going through. You go. <clears throat> one is I hope she doesn't wake up. Right. So one. <laughs> no, 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 honestly. No, one, honestly, is. Holy shit! Is this really happening? Right, right, right. And number two, now concentrate so you you know so you really perform. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you, you don't want to disappoint. I, I, do you end up like the first time you would, let's say, Jennifer Love You at Lindsay Lohan? The first time. There's no way you can control that. I mean, you probably shoot off your load in like three seconds, right? No, no. Like, really? You're good. No, you're yeah. that good. Well, so I mean, these look, chicks <clears throat> love you right off the bat because you're able to hold out. Do you have to wear like the, a big thick rubber so you don't? No, you know the truth. The truth is, you know, you just a, a lot of these a lot of these girls, you know, are very similar when it comes to something. You know what I mean? They're they're all really looking for that real thing. You know what I right. mean? And you know, once after that, and you start talking to them and everything, they're really just as normal as anybody else. Do most else. of them swallow? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Which I think one these chicks. I think these chicks are like you know, like so uptight. But man, you're doing it. You're do like, I let me t- uh, thank you. <laughs> I, when I when I've been with like some sort of famous chicks, you know, to, you know, some of them. Sure, sure. You know, <clears throat> I'm a fan. I know. And I'm in bed and I'm going, man, I can't believe who I'm doing right here. I'm looking down. I go, man, oh man, oh Shevitz. it's unbelievable. Now you don't make the mistake of falling in love with these chicks. You move on. Well, because so, the party is just keeps going and gets gets better and better. Well, you also have to keep in mind. I mean, I've been I've been doing the seventy show for about eight and a half years. You yeah, know you're I mean? a millionaire now, right? <clears throat> yeah. And, Yes, thanks. Yes. Eight and, and a half uh, years that show's been on? Yeah, yeah, it's been on a long time. Almost as long as MASH, for Christ's sake. I just sake. finished my 200th episode a couple when you're, of When you're also. living in Hollywood, you're a millionaire and stuff, but because you're Venezuelan and everything, do people ever mistake you for, like, some Mexican gardener and stuff and give you crap? <laughs> you know, a, a lot of people think that, you know, if, if you're Latin and you live in L.A., then you're Mexican. You know right. I mean? And if right. you're walking mm-hmm. around with these girls, do they think you're working for them? They, they, think, they, think, they think he's kidding. I've got to be an assistant or something. <laughs> i got to be an assistant. Mandy Moore's mother was like, yeah, the kid 
keys are over there. The car. <laughs> no, it's yeah, a Lexus. When you're, dating, when you're dating Lindsay Lohan, her dad is in jail now, right? Right. Like, does she, they, do you get involved in all that family stuff? No, well, you know, when we were dating, you know, she was going through some tough times, and I was there for it. You know, nice. I, um, Did you ever I, do um, blow with the father? Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I never saw any of that. Now, let me ask you something. When Lindsay <laughs> starts getting real skinny, is that when you bailed out of the relationship? No, no, she, no, no. To was be she, honest, was that she happened, anorexic or what? Did you that, catch her vomiting? She, she lost weight, <clears throat> yeah. you know, after we broke up, like way after, you know. Oh. <clears throat> so but you I, got um, her when she was really hot with the big <laughs> boobs. Well, I guess if you're going to put it that way, I guess, yeah. yes. But, but no, that, that she was, you know... You know, when I when I you know when we met, she was this you know this bombshell. You know, she was Jessica right. Rabbit. You know what I mean? Yeah. She did was you, Jessica did, did Rabbit. you have to deal with the, the the father, the crazy father? You know, I I dealt with some of their family stuff. You know, but yeah. I was I was actually very happy to be there for them. You know, and uh, you know both of both of them had interesting points. You know, each one of them had an argument. And does she and have I red hair down there? Um, no fire in, fire no? in the hole. No, no. no fire in the hole. Hey, no. <laughs> really? So the red is fake hair? No, no, no. Red, red is red, but there's no red no, down there. Nothing. No, there's no. She beautiful. never kept any of it around. Oh, there's no said. hair. Oh, right. You bastard. <laughs> Come here. I, Come here. I want to smell your fingers right now. <laughs> I've been with red hair um, chicks where it was no, like a, th a three you know, alarm down there. Lindsay was a. Uh, uh, no, Lindsay was. Uh, she was actually really. Um, you know, she was really great. She really loved herself. She really pumped herself. I bet she she loved herself. I love she pumped herself. She really pumped herself. She takes. She grooms. She smells good. Yeah, she's a beautiful girl. She's a beautiful girl. I love to bang her. On a scale of one to ten, is that the best sex you ever had? Ten. And being the best, um, it's you know it's pretty out there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I bet. Oh man, so why do you get rid of her for? I guess it's a little the party doesn't. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot of factors, you know. I mean, I think that there comes a point where you have to make a choice for for both of us, you know. And there's all the things that you know we need. Now, to do you do think right she's now. a shittier actor or singer? <laughs> I think question. she's a good actor. Yeah, I do. I think she's talented. Actress. I think yeah. she's good. I'm not kidding you, Artie. I haven't seen any of her stuff. Uh, uh, she, when she was a little kid, she was mm. in that movie where she plays a Parent twin. Trap. Parent Trap. Yeah. I love that movie. I don't know. No, Lindsay is Friday. a very talented she's actress. No, I, I, so. I think she's I'm okay. I'm just assuming. No, no. Hey, no, so you're a very talented girl. And you're real good. Your best buddies like Ashton Kutcher, and you hang out with Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher. Is she pregnant with his baby? Um, if 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 she is, I don't know. And it's is actually really really fucked up. If I don't know it, you know what I mean. It's like right. if, if, he, if they hid that from me, then it's really bad. You know? Because you're really but, close to them. Yeah. Is it weird though? You ever say to yourself, why is he banging an old broad like that? Like, why doesn't he go you know, with the young girls? You know why really? I don't? You know, I don't. This is in all seriousness. You know, yeah. she is a wonderful, wonderful, you like her. great. Is there woman, any truth right? to she's, the rumor and that she's beautiful? Like, I mean, you stand in front of her, and you go. Wow, like she's yeah. really, it's her body's gorgeous and her face is beautiful well, and she's a great girl. You know, it would be funny if the kid came out Venezuelan. <laughs> That'd be great. I like there that. There would be a lot to answer that. Right. Is there any <laughs> truth to the rumor that the, their relationship is just an elaborate three-year punk on Bruce Willis? <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. So there's no problems in their relationship. That's the rule. No, now. you know they're great. They're great, and right. you know I've uh, trust me, I've hung out with them plenty, and right. uh, they're good people. And look, Ashton's my brother, and she's uh, and she's a wonderful woman. I, I Weren't you her. in a movie with Macaulay Culkin? Yes. Yeah, so Did I, you make out with him in a movie? We we got out of it. Like, we, what movie we were was able that? to convince uh, the director uh, that we didn't need it. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Good Thank for you. you. Man. That's that's bad. No, the movie the movie was really twisted, and it was about Michael oh, Alley. Guys, for you guys you know. You were the little lover, right? I was Kyoki, yeah. Then, yeah. Okay, yeah. Lindsay Lohan, just take me back there for a second. She'd get, she was so in love with you that she'd get jealous and erase your phone numbers from your, uh, from your cell phone of girls. Well, a lot of stuff happened that really, you know, shouldn't have happened. You know, good but, for you, man. <laughs> good for you. Goes, what do you mean? You. So like you start waiting, so you start looking through your cell phone, and then you say, hey, "Where is so and so's <clears> number?" You get confused. Well, you know, look, like I said, a lot of stuff happened. Did she all or just the girls? No, there was, <laughs> there was times where there were certain things that made her uncomfortable. And, I, you know, sometimes you as a man, you have to kind of you know, cater to such Smack you know, her around things, a you know. You know, there's certain insecurities that come with being in love, I guess. You know? Did she cry when you dumped her ass? I mean, yeah. Who'd you dump nice. her for? I mean, look, it was very, it was did very dramatic. Did you, dump, did you dump her for Ashley Simpson? Never. No, no, no. You never and that's the thing. Ashley we Simpson? didn't. Ashley Simpson and I never dated. I want to do her too. You know, I think we, she's hotter than Jessica Simpson. What do you think of that? I think she's a beautiful woman. Yeah. I like uh, her. I think Ashley's a great girl. And you know, it's so funny. 
I, I did it actually like years ago, and she and I just became best friends. You did her years ago? No, <laughs> you dated her. Right. Oh, you right. Dated, I dated her. her. Oh, yeah. You dated her. You dated Ashley Simpson years yeah, ago. Yeah, years ago. And then, you know, when Lindsay I and I broke up. I put my finger up her ass. Oh, yeah. 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 Would. You wouldn't even, she wouldn't even know what hit her. He carried her She wouldn't know what to like do that. with it. She wouldn't even know what to do. <laughs> Three knuckles but, deep. Three knuckles deep. That's right. <laughs> no, but see, we did, we actually, we did it years ago. And then when Lindsay and I broke up, you know, she's one of my best friends. And, and uh, we started talking. What? Ever. No, no, and, and blah, seriously, blah, blah. You know, seriously, you know, and and so then all of a sudden shame. the tablet started taking it out of content, like we were dating, but we never did, you know. Man, look at all the trim you're you getting. You ever fuck a fat chick as a goof, like <laughs> just you know? In life, you have to experience everything. So yeah. you have, oh. yeah. man. When you're so, you're like, man, I can't imagine like when you're standing there and you're standing, you go, man, Lindsay Lohan's naked in front of me, Ashley Simpson's naked. Uh, oh man, Jennifer Love you, it's you know, got on her knees know. in front of me. You know, I, I honestly, have you ever had you've, you've had two women at the same time? Right, um, I, Howard. I wouldn't ever lie to my fans. Yes, you did. <laughs> wow. really. I now, was he famous women? Um, like, did you have like one of your hot famous women, no, like with a stripper? No, or? no, no. You no, can't no, do no, that no, with no, the no, famous no. ones. The no, Simpsons. No, no. Sisters? I, no, I never tried. I mean, that's tough. <laughs> oh man, uh, you're something else. When you were dating Ashley Simpson, did not her father like whacked out crazy? Not, not, not he was super out, cool to me. He was cool. Just super cool to me. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. I've never seen. I never seen him do anything weird. You know. But then again, I don't live there. But he's great. He's been great to me. Damn it. Jesus, who are you with now? I'm single right now. Nice, man. I'm just working Who are you looking for? <laughs> you know. Dude, do you, you want to have lunch at Hooters today? <laughs> yeah. Hey, I <laughs> love the buffalo wings. I'm down. What does, I'm down. Fuck the buffalo wings. <laughs> Jessica he Alba, has, no. perfectly, perfect naked. No, look, Alba is a great, great friend. She's, oh, she's a good girl. You, you know. are out of control, you know. He's man. never had her, Howard. No, no. You got to see her uh, stomach. He's had her. He won't admit to her. No, he's not. He wouldn't, he wouldn't yeah. lie to us, would he? Why no, lie no. about that? I'm going to put you on a lie detector, man. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's unbelievable. Bring it. Got a twenty-two thousand. You got a twenty-two thousand square foot home in the San Fernando Valley. Look at you. Bro. Yeah, you know nice. I just bought. Man. Hey, you guys, you guys enjoy this, which I'm sure you guys have talked about the website. But I just bought Chuck Norris's house. Really? No kidding. I, yeah, I just bought Chuck Norris' house in Tarzana. I was super excited about it. You know, we we. I love Chuck. I yeah, he's 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 rad, dude. Can he's you rad. give me a story of any time you've been rejected? By a woman, by an actress? Oh, yeah. By famous? a famous actress? By a famous actress? Yeah. Has anyone ever <laughs> said see. to you, listen, get the fuck away from me? You know, I've been I've been very specific. The times that I've dated, you know, actresses have been, you know, you know, the ones that I, you know, wanted today. Right. <laughs> but but I don't, let me Look see. If, you. Come on. You uh, can't even think I'm of trying one. To, <laughs> you can't I even, am awful. I can't <laughs> even think of one. You can, Boy, you got some situation, brother. I, I got to get out there and hang with uh, you. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, come on. Let's go. What am I um, doing? Trying, I, I don't know, but I, I've been rejected. And bad, you know. Like. And now, to make matters even better, you you, you are producing a show for MTV. Yeah, it's I called just, Yo Yo uh, Yo Mama. Yeah, it's called Yo Mama. It's yeah. basically what it, the show is about. And look, we all know there's a lot of easy to digest, you know, bullshit reality TV out there. And MTV and I wanted to do something together. And and, and I figured, okay, let me create something that I would want to watch, and that it's you know, hopefully the next wave, the next generation of MTV stuff. You know, uh -huh. and what I did was. And I was watching the Eight Mile, and I loved that whole underground battle. You know, you know. Yeah, well, I, gr I grew up in a black neighborhood. If okay. you were, if you, a lot of times you'd have to rank on someone's mother. You know. Yeah, they called it the dozens. <clears throat> your, back yeah, then. the dozens. Mm -hmm. Your mother is right. this. Your mother is that. So it's a TV show where people slam each other's mothers. <clears throat> yeah, it's basically your mama's so fat. You're so, you know, your mama's so fat. She's so skinny. She's so dumb. She's so broke. Like all these things. And who and votes as to who wins the rank out session? Well, it depends on like if my crown like. If the crowd there, you know, because uh, you know, like if someone's slamming someone and the other one's um, not coming through, you just know who Does won. Does the winner know? get a prize? Yeah, they get a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. They get a thousand dollars. Is there a big tournament at the end right. between the best? Yeah. And at the end, like you know, that. yeah, at the end we have the best of the week, and yeah. then they come and meet at the best of the best episode, and ah. then we find like the. So now that's those are the really really fun ones because you know they rarely freeze. You know, they just they got jokes. You uh -huh. know what I mean? So they keep coming with it. So. So you're a millionaire. You hang out with Ashton Kutcher, Kutcher and Demi Moore. You've either banged or dated Ashley Simpson, <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, Jennifer Love Hewitt, Jessica Alba, something's going on there. I mean, 
doesn't get better than this. Yeah. No. I'm, no. I'm doing yeah, a bunch of movies. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does? Yeah. They always, there's always who's something better? bad. <laughs> he says, who's better? I don't know. You know, I think Who was right the now, worst in bed out of all the uh, girls you did? Give me a name. Give me the name of the I worst. The one that you just had no chemistry with. Doesn't mean she's bad, but you know what? It just didn't work didn't out. Didn't work out between the two of you. Right, you I've had, well, no, I've had, I've had bad, you know. Macaulay Culkin? Ones. Yeah. No, that was he not. was awful. <laughs> he was awful. Who was the worst you ever had? Um, God, let me see. Someone you just couldn't They're all great. You know, they were all great because, you know, you meant it, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah you, sure. You we know that. Yeah, yeah. We get that. Yeah. You, know? uh, you don't have a name, huh? And I don't have a name. <laughs> now, uh, Wilmer's uh, show, Yo Mama, is going to premiere Monday. I'm going to watch what this. Monday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. Artie, you're good at this, the dozens, right? Maybe you should be on the show. Uh, I don't know. I guess. Is, I don't know. Yeah, these are all like real kids, too. They're real kids yeah. from, from East Artie, L.A. I think he's saying you're too you know. old. Yeah, yeah. you're too old. <laughs> You These are real kids. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wants a goof on some guy who looks like their dad. Yeah. Well, they're going to say to me, your mother's probably dead, right? You're like 60. Now, no one could ever even do uh, 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 the dozens on you. They'd be like, you know what, man? Uh, you you, you, you effed uh, Mandy Moore. Yeah. yeah. You know what? There's nothing that, well, no that's always his comeback. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I effed Mandy Moore. Yeah, my mother's fat. Did I tell you I fucked Jennifer Love Hewitt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did, Jennifer wow. Love you, did Jennifer Love Hewitt want to marry you? You know, no, no. Jennifer Love Vildorama? No. <laughs> no that would be guy, weird. That would be so weird. That'd should a guy so with your life really be going to rough neighborhoods and taping your mama? <laughs> I mean, what really. You you know, funny, I, t- I got to tell be you. Be careful. But look, look. Half, like literally 80% of my friends, you know, they grew up in, in Compton and, and East L.A., Carson, you yeah, know. You don't invite them over your house now, do you? Oh, yeah. You know, I oh. hang out all the time. Hey, I'll have a 40 every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what but have it with Demi Moore. Do you have pool yeah. parties and stuff at your yeah, house? Yeah, yeah, we have stuff at the house. Chicks yeah. come over in bathing suits, they bathe topless. Yeah, of Demi, Demi comes I over learned, there. I learned well from Diddy. Yeah. De- De- does Demi <laughs> come over Diddy. to the pool party in a bathing suit? And stuff well, like I that? haven't had one where, where, where Demi has come, you know, because they've, they've been working and stuff. What's, yeah. the, what's the one chick in Hollywood you haven't had so far, but you fantasize about, like, hey, I want to meet her? The dream band. Can't wait who, to meet her. Yeah, I mean, who you've, you've worked your way through pretty much an A-list here, but, like, who You know, who would I love to? Me, I, you know, obviously everyone's gonna say the obvious one. I think, I think Angelina is, is Angelina oh, really? yeah. fantastic. Yes, you know? yes. Well, you said talk about being high. the ultimate. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, but you don't want to be hanging around with those kids and the, the Mohawk and Zahara. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I'll do. sit that one out. <laughs> Zahara. <laughs> Who needs a kid with a Mohawk? All right. Yeah. Fuck her um, while Brad Pitt's taking those kids sailing or something. <laughs> Ever do a black chick like Halle Berry? <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Look, get yeah, out. Never, never Halle Berry, <laughs> but, you know. Not Halle yeah. Berry, no? Yeah. Well, anyway, Wilmer's show, Yo Mama, I will watch this, premieres Monday, April 3rd at 6 p.m. There was a time that I was pretty good at doing that, Yo Mama. So was I at yes. one time. Wilmer, what's your favorite Grew mother joke, you, mother joke I, you've heard? Yo you Mama joke, let me see. There's one, there's one that goes, uh, Yo Mama's so fat that when she dances, the band skips. <laughs> that's right. That's, know, a, that's a classic. That's a classic. That's a classic. That's a classic. <laughs> another one that's, uh, Yo Mama's so fat that when she wears heels, she drills oil. Oh. All you right, know, that's good. good. That's the a good other one. one is, uh, you Artie, know, what's your favorite one? <laughs> Well, uh, the black a black kid uh, said this to another black kid when I went to high school. I mentioned it the other day. It's one of my favorite dozen jokes I've ever heard. Of. Your mother's so black that when she went to night school, they marked her absent. <laughs> <laughs> That was good. That the was problem good with one. MTV is... Now, will they do the you're so black, yeah. they won't do that? See, they oh, will, yeah, we do they it. Will. You do? Oh, we go, we go there. That's the thing about when I talk to MTV about this show, and they were great about this, too. You can't um, do sex stuff, though, of course. Oh, like, yeah, we can. You can? Oh, yeah, we can. Oh. Yeah, because the thing is, you know, uh, we said, look, there's there's a guideline, and we understand what MTV is about and everything, right. but look, we can bring a phenomenon that comes from the streets like that and water it down. For this is a good idea. Half-hour you know? show? It's a half-hour show, You're yeah. the executive producer? And creator and host. Look at you. I a little bit. You look at you. Okay. Well, you know, it's about, you know this, it's really about owning your product now. You know what I mean? If yes. you don't own it, you can't make money anymore. Let's go back know? to banging Lindsay Lohan. I can't <laughs> like Seriously. Is there any money you... in that? Why is there yeah. money in that? Put a that? show on about that. <laughs> Does she still call you? Um, Lindsay and I talk yeah. to her once in a while, yeah. You ever do Paris Hilton? No, no, no. That's not, you don't like her? No, I, it, she's, she's, she's nice, but I, I won't. Why? You know, I just, um, I have this thing where um, I just don't do things um, that have been done know, by there. everybody else. <laughs> no, but like the truth is, is that true? You know, <laughs> is she too overdone? Is you don't she like racist overdone? chicks? No, <laughs> exactly. No, no, you know, I just, you know, she's she's uh, she's cool uh, and everything, but I don't, uh, you know, I don't. I'm that's some, that's you, only do I I you only do virgins. You only do Right. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I, I only look for those. She's what not a virgin. <laughs> only fresh blood. <laughs> Alan, Chicago. Come on, let's say hi to Wilmer. Hey now. 
Hey, now. Hey, how's it going? This guy is my hero. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, need, I need to smell his finger. <laughs> I like I like Wilmer because he comes in here and he doesn't act like he didn't bang these chicks. He banged them and he's proud Absolutely. of it. And yeah, that's that's a good, good man and a good guess. Absolutely, thank you. Kyle, thank you. go ahead. Hey now, Howard. Yes. Hey man, this guy's my new favorite actor, bro. Yeah, me too. I might actually have to watch that show. Yeah, now, now you're gonna have to watch my movies too. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you what fucking movie he was in, but Jesus Christ, I'm gonna know now. You're damn right. <laughs> Thank do you, you. Do you ever Thank videotape? You. Like everyone's uh, videotaping. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, you know, this is the thing. Because of all these crazy things that's happening now with these videotapes. Yes. Now all you can really do is tape and like erase right after because right. no matter. How well you hide these things, they will get out. You yes. know what I mean? And that's a, to be honest, that's one of the most petrifying experiences of anybody. Mm. Like, yes. that's like, uh, that's that should be your MTV show, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. You, you know, know what? The one thing <laughs> When I stop getting moms. movies, we'll talk about You're producing that one. Yeah. So you haven't saved any of your video, but like when you and Lindsay yeah. were together, you'd videotape and then you'd say, hey, I'm going to erase it right no, away. I, I, uh, yeah, I don't have any videos at all. No videos, man. Oh, man. Right. Oh, man. Do, you, do you make a plot? When you're with, a, when, let's say you're with Jennifer Love Hewitt or you're with Lindsay Lohan, and these are A list actresses, and you're talking a whole different league than any of us get so you decide to have some fun you decide to make a video do you make a plot or you just videotape the sex um you know no i mean I wouldn't that be like work because that's what you do all day but those yeah, chicks yeah. like that like you go really they like the play act it's like if i had Lindsay lohan i'd say to her Listen, <laughs> no that's never happened baby, here's what they like <laughs> here's what i would do i'd go baby we're gonna make a video i'm holding the camera you walk in you're auditioning for a part and you want it really badly and I tell you you have to get naked and then you start crying but you have to get <laughs> no, naked. No, no. That you doesn't happen. Do that? that doesn't happen. No, Why would he no, want them happen. crying? No, no, no. Because you've been acting. Oh, yeah. my God. It's never happened. Uh, do you ever worry that now your reputation is so incredible like you're you're like this incredible lover that you'll disappoint women that you no, have the, he's the got an eight-inch eight penis. Eight no, too no. high? Are you bigger than eight inches? <laughs> yeah. Just a little oh bit. Are you fully oh, aroused? What are you? Give me the exact number. Um, Say you've measured. I don't know. Are it's probably around, it's probably around eight. Eight or nine? Yeah, eight. God damn. Let me measure you. Let me, let me measure you. <laughs> Get out um, of the In a former life, were you like a slug or something? Like a, uh, Zach, I was a ninja. Yeah, Robin, let me ask you, are you hot for Wilmer? Would you like to do, I mean, I know you have a boyfriend and everything, but I'm saying. Well, he's very cute. Are you falling for, is it, explain the charm from the woman's point of view. What's going no, he's on? He's really good looking. Are you, are so you nice aroused in any way? Uh, you, yeah. You are. He's good looking. Are you what thinking you about having sex with him, like the way I see a stripper? What? Well, you know how I see the strippers and I get worked up? Are you thinking about what it would be like to see his eight inches? Wow. No. No. What are no. you thinking about? Tell me what's going through your head. I'm just thinking that it must be fun. <laughs> Robin, you want to cool down? Look at me. <laughs> Take your shirt off, Artie. She needs to, I need her concentrate. I need her being professional. Bong hit Eric, of course, in Jersey. Go ahead. Hey now. Hey now. Hey. Go ahead. Wilmer. What up? You are the man. Oh, thanks, brother. Thank Holy you. Shit. It's my best work yet, by the way. Yeah, but yeah, I, mean, I can't I mean, wait for you guys to see my movies. I don't, get I don't your movies. Know. Compared to you, the rest of us live in a concentration camp. Oh, seriously. <laughs> Go ahead, Bong hit. Question, though. Um, when you guys sit around on the 70s show, and yep. it's a circle with the camera going around and all the smoke and you're getting stoned. Yeah. Have you guys ever been able to get away with really smoking weed on the set? No, man, no, because, you know, it's, it's a big crew, and, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's you know... It's, you smoke uh, weed, or you were not into it? I don't, I don't. you know, well, I, it's funny. Honest. When, when Lindsay... I'm completely honest, like, you know, I was so petrified when I first got to America between 14 and 18 years old that, that I was so focused on learning English that I just missed that window of trying, like... But when you're, when, stuff, when you, know? you uh, when you were, like, a chick like Lindsay and she was going through her drug problems and stuff, you had to get into it a little bit, right? No, a little no, bit no, of... no, 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 you never even tried marijuana? I on my life and on my mother and really? my yeah, on yeah. my mother and my baby brother and everyone. Wow, yeah. look at you, yeah. man! What, why? Yeah. What does he need drugs? The rest of us are doing drugs to forget our miserable lives. He wants to remember. This guy wants to remember everything that happens to him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to tell you. Yeah, something. I'm trying to forget 2002. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let me tell you something, Wilmer, Vilmer, whatever you want to be called, you are the man, and oh, there's nice. no doubt about it. you are become you are becoming a legend, like my friend John Stamos. I mean, Stamos is ripping through Hollywood with a vengeance. John is awesome, by the way. He's a really he, sweet guy. He, uh, do you know I, him? I know him very well, yeah. You two hanging out, you look yeah. like brothers. Yeah, no, we, really? We've seen each other um, a lot, and we've hung 
out. We had a lot of mutual friends, you know, and and, uh, and have you banged the cool. same chicks? You ever go to parties? No, and, no, you know? we never have. I no. don't know. It's about an that, exact we've parallel. We've got some parties. Same he's, parties. He's very yeah. cool. He's very cool. Yeah, yeah. It's an exact parallel, Howard, because John was in movies no one ever saw and fucked every hot chick. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Aren't you going to play? Uh, aren't Aren't they doing a remake? Of, what What's the movie? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be I'm going to be Punch oh, in the Chips, chips movie. Oh, yeah. chips that's movie. right. I did yeah. read that. Yeah. I might visit you on the set. I might come down. Oh yeah, come down. We might start hanging with you. Let's do it, man. You seem to know how to party. I'm going to start doing the cross and the Jewish star. I think it's working for you. <laughs> I got to get into that. Let me, hey, let me, let me, let me tell you. And, and it's and it's it's exciting right now. You know, I th- to be honest, everyone's giving me a, a great opportunity and a great platform to do God movies right. and stuff. Yeah. And what a great idea! He's the boring white guy. <laughs> yeah. Hey so, Rob, you're on the air in Florida. Come on, quickly, because uh, Wilmer's got to get out of here. He's got chicks to bang. Go ahead. <laughs> Wilmer, you're a god, man. Hey, fuck <laughs> any of those girls again. Which one would it be? Guy asks a good question. You know, most girls after you date them and you break up, it's wise not to go back. But sometimes you're laying in bed going, God, she was so great. I would just, if I could have one if more night with her. we could do it again. Out of all your girlfriends, famous ones. Right. Who would you want one more time to go back to? Uh, it'd probably be, um, it would probably be Mandy because that was probably the most, one of the, the most love. meaningful ones of my. Yeah. Well, oh, Mandy. Mandy. Yeah. All right, Mandy do, do an F, Mary kill with him. All right. F, Mary kill. You know the game, right? If you got to pick one girl to F, one to marry. And one to kill. Okay. Mandy Moore. Married. No, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, just get it. Just get it. Just get it, Mandy. Just get it, Mandy. Just get it, Mandy. Don't get yourself into shit here. Lindsay Lohan, Mandy Moore, Jessica Alba. Go ahead. Um, let's see. One to one to married would be. I mean, they're all married to material. Well, <laughs> they're all married, guys. but you got to marry um, one. You got to kill one, and you got to F one. All right, I would marry Mandy. Go ahead. Um. He tells me you're gonna kill Lindsay. No. What do you, you got to F or a killer? You got I would F. F. Lindsay. And you kill Jessica Alba. Right. Wow, it's that's just, weird because you never F Jessica. Right. I would you know F her because she's too good to be true. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> Exactly. Mad, think about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're the first guy who played this game that actually could do all right. three of them. You're the first guy who actually has to really think and think it through. He's done two of them. Yeah. He did two of them. Well, I'm gonna give you this. Now I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to keep Lindsay Lohan and Mandy Moore, but I'm going to throw in Jennifer Love Hewitt. Now ah. what do you do? <laughs> Oof. All right. Oof. Now well, these are all three women you've had. Okay. Now what do you do? Wow. That's right. Wow. This is right. Real, what a twist. Now he's your new what show. What a twist. This is your new show for MTV. Yeah. <laughs> you interview yourself. Oh, my Lord. That's right. Well, we should go 50 50 on this one. Oh, uh, man. This is a guy who knows. I, um. Right, who do you marry? I'll probably marry. Let's change it up a little bit, I guess. I'll marry, um. See, this changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah, Look at how tough it changes is it? everything. It is. Who do you marry? Because they're really nice girls. Why you know not stick I mean? with Mandy Moore for the marriage? Okay. You want to marry her? Or you want to marry Jessica, uh, I mean, uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt or Lindsay Lohan? You got to kill somebody. I think, somebody. That, I think, that, for, that. I think that for this one, I'll probably, I'll probably marry Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan. Now, who yeah. do you kill and who do you F? I'd probably F Mandy. Go ahead. And you're going to kill, kill Jennifer, Jennifer Love Hewitt. Hewitt. Is she that big a pain in the ass? <laughs> That ended badly, dude, huh? Yeah. Dude, the, the right answer, the right answer goes, was, <laughs> the right answer was, you fuck them all and marry nobody. Well, now here's the best part of the show. We're gonna wheel in all three women, and they're gonna actually do it. He's like, what a twist! Come on in, Mandy. Oh Kathy. my God. Well, it sounds like you're living the high life, man, and I love it. I tell Thanks, you what, man. why not? You know what? We're all a little bit jealous, but that's okay. Is <laughs> you it hard? A lot, a yeah. lot of jealous. Is it hard to deal with the jealousy? Is it? Is you it know, difficult? it's. I've gotten a lot of. You know, just like you've seen tonight. You know, I, I've gotten a lot of love. And a lot of people have been really great. Look, you know, this is the first time ever that you see a Screech or an Urkel character on a TV show, and then going to be able to, you know, do something on MTV as cool as right. this. And yeah, then, Screech and Urkel, and then, we're not getting know, the chicks no. you're getting. Yeah, and then all. after that, like, you know, being able to do movies with Rich and Lettered, and like, you know, I'm, do, I mean, I'm doing movies that I really want to do, and good I'm excited you, to do. So, so you yeah, you seem like a good dude, platform, man. You know. I'm, I'm, hey, there's a look, lot of hot chicks yeah. who work here. Should we do an experiment? See how long it takes oh. him to get a number out you there. You want to know something? I'm going to do you a favor. I, I mean, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Jillian Grace and that other Playboy playmate, Pilar Lastra, are out in the uh, green room. Oh, they room. are. I'm just going to stick you in the green room, see how long it takes you to bang them. Or like get a number. That's what. Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to sit you in there. Yeah, we want to see yeah. how long it takes. Pressure's on. Yeah. Pressure's on. Uh, Wilmer Valderrama's show, Yo Mama. 
premieres Monday, April 3rd yeah. at 6 p.m. and will air daily Monday through Thursday on MTV. And, and, and it's a good idea for a show. I like it. I think it. so, too, yeah. I think you'll do okay with this I thing. I so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Put him in the green room. We, we know that Jillian Grace will basically fuck anyone in SAG. <laughs> how many, yeah, how many playmates have you uh, had sex with, would you say? You know, I've never had sex with playmates. Really? Get yeah. out of here. You're I, always no, over I, there, aren't you? No, I've never. In fact, I How actually... You don't even have to go yeah. there, huh? it's, I've uh -huh. been there for a few parties, but I've never... You don't even need that. You know, yeah. I, guess, I guess not. When you get in the famous ones, it's a lot hotter than... Uh, yeah. yeah. Good for you, man. Hey, hey, may, I, may I do like a little shameless plug? On, on the 70s show's final episode for good, you know, it's yeah. going to be a May 18th. That's it? We're the finished, show's over? We're done. Oh. Yeah, we're done. We finished 200 uh, episodes, eight years. You'll get paid for the forever for those. For my life. No, we were fortunate enough to get sold a second round in syndication. Oh, you know? oh, I know, I know. Artie, Artie, why are you moaning, Artie? Yeah. Artie why just you moaning? First of all, anyway, <laughs> it's like like the sitcom I was on lasted 54 episodes, and they were like, my agent was like, dude, if you get till 80, you know, forget it. You're gonna, you will never have to work again. Right. That's one, and that wasn't even a hit. We you get two rounds of syndication plus a, this dude, he's got to be worth 15 million bucks right now. Wow, yeah, it's very, it's very, 15 million. I'd bucks. say right, yeah. and right. Now. Very excited. Yeah. It's, nice. it's look. I mean, to be honest, oh, oh. I, the reason why this show was so oh, special to me in so many oh. and so many levels was because, because oh. you know, <laughs> it's because you know oh. the show came to my family and me when we most needed it. You know, uh, so what? You know, blah blah Don't blah. But, you. but like, hey, so eight, what? no, but I'm sick of you. But then eight years <laughs> later, I'm sitting here uh, having I know to dream about. about my dreams to anything I've ever wanted to do. And so like, it's, it's a dream to be in front They're of you. They're turning on you. It's getting a little too good. Yeah. It's getting a little too good. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I would Bring do, this, so, yeah, I would do the so same thing. If what? my father was live, I'd probably send him to college. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the finale of, uh, so the finale, is it a big show? Is it yeah, a big show. We have yeah. an hour special on behind the scenes, interviews with us. I'm sure all of us are crying like little girls. And, oh, okay. You know what I mean? I, and mean then, I would love to get the real interview with you. you got to come back, man. I want to know if any of these girls ever peed in your bed. I want to know I want to know if you peed on them. Hey, you know, you know, give me, bro. give me one hint. To, give me a, t oh uh, give me a taste. How about anal, Howard? Any, All right, any, give me a taste of one thing. I'm not saying name okay. any names. Any blind item. Any of these girls. I'm talking famous. Did you ever have the anal with them? Yeah. Um. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh wow! Oh, what a wow. twist! What a twist! Oh! <laughs> Look, I, I told you, Howard. I won't lie to my fans. Oh! Oh! He stuck oh. in an arrest. Oh! oh. <laughs> Hey, I didn't say who, though. Just, by right. the way, because I'm sure there's a lot of magazines oh. and newspapers listening right now. Oh, you and can be sure tomorrow, of that. And my ass is going to be on fire. I oh. got a okay? little hands imprint on my car. Oh. I wouldn't have it any other way, though. I will only do it in this show. But Howard, I... get on the air with us in oh. Jersey. What's up? Hey, uh, Wilma, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Howard, what do you say we uh, get rid of Mike Walker? Get Wilmer on every Friday. He tells four stories. We figure out which girl he didn't have. <laughs> <laughs> There's a game for you. Listen yeah. for that. The, the, the hey. Wilmer game. That's we right. get Wilmer on tape farting. It's perfect. <laughs> That's right. Ross, go ahead. You're on the air in Chicago. Hey, Howard. Hey, uh, now. Love the show. Uh, Sirius is fantastic. I just want to say something. Artie, you got to shut up when the guy is talking about this kind of stuff. You know, he's on the he's on a roll, and you're messing him up. Fuck you, asshole. <laughs> yeah, I love you. <laughs> Shut the Thank fuck you, brother. up. Thank you, brother. Don't piss on Artie's parade. He's yeah, having a good I'm time. I'm having a good time. The guy took a shave, all right? <laughs> well, listen. All right, I see you looking at your expensive watch. What kind of watch is that, it's by the way? It's a huge brother? watch. You know, it's I like just got clock. this watch. I'm in Utah shooting this thing, and I walked into the store, and they have a Bentley watch. What What is that worth, that watch? How much did you pay for that? Honestly, uh, like... Uh, it's 7, an episode. 7,000. 7, <laughs> it's got diamonds. I'm like, I, only 7,000. Only 7,000. <laughs> 7, well, hey, listen to you. Yeah. You got a couple of million. It's yeah. no big deal. No, it's it's uh, it's this watch. It's, uh, what is it called? Uh, Breitling? Can you tell the time with it, though? I mean, it does. Yeah, yeah, you can. You oh, can. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. It's, some of these watches. It, it's you gotta... huge. You better yeah. be able yeah. to see that one. Right. But he has no diamonds. But he has no diamonds. All right. Well, listen to me. As long as vagina can see it. That's the key. <laughs> Wilmer Valderrama, nice to meet it's you. Thank you, sir. You meet you, too. Absolutely. This is an open door podcast. Policy right here. Anytime you. you want to come in, you want to promote, you want to just hang out, you want to have a couple cocktails, you come in here. You are the man. You, you want to go you out sir. one night? Thank you, sir. You're the man because you're honest. Let me ask Thank you something. That right. was the one question I wanted to ask. Could you guys hang out with him? I could. Oh, that's so cool. I could. Thanks. I could, but I'd have to you kill him. You wouldn't get jealous? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, I hung out with Stamos right. when he was married and Rebecca and, you know. Well, that was married Stamos. And I, yeah. I've hung out with Stamos and, uh, you know, it's it's a little intimidating because when you're with a guy who's a major poontang attraction, yeah. you don't want to feel like yeah, you're second Yeah, but you, you get hit with pussy shrapnel. <laughs> you That's do. True. It's true. I mean, uh, he, for your ego. he steps well, on a pussy landmine and you get hit with it. That's him. right. Ralph <laughs> told me when he went over Stamos's place, Stamos rented it after the big breakup with, G- right. with uh, what's her name, uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, yeah, remember you know, He's all broken up. <laughs> he rented a house in Malibu. There, you could, it, it was so crowded with models in there, <laughs> showering and stuff. And Ralph Good went over, him. he went over Good to get him. the pussy shrapnel, but nothing hit. I mean, <laughs> John, hit they were there for John. <laughs> Good for him. I mean, it's, uh, you know. Net- so could your, ha- you know, your ego handle? I well, don't know. I really don't. You know what? I don't want to test that out. Yeah. Quite <laughs> Jason, you've got it the last word for Wilmer. Come on. The guy's got pussy to get. What is it in <laughs> Philadelphia? <laughs> Wilmer, you're the man. Thank man. you, you're brother. Man. I appreciate it. Why is he the man, Jason? I'll, I'll tell you why. Because he comes on this show listening to millions of people listening. He's telling us all of his secrets. Doing us all the good stuff. And That's right. Ah. That's exactly right. Let that be a lesson to all other guests. Thank you, Jason. Thank, Thank you, you guys. You can oh, come back no. anytime. we got to take a break, and we'll be back right I after I appreciate these. everyone. Thanks. Yeah, and Robin, calm down over there. Will you? I'll, I'll try. I'll try. Oh. <laughs> hey, Wilmerman. How'd it go in there? Really good, really good. I had a good time. They're great, you know. It's, it's fun. It's fun to meet him, you know. I'm a fan of his, and I'm glad that there's people like him out there that can actually speak their mind and say what everybody wants to listen to, you know. It's cool to be part of that. And the fans were great, you know. Everybody called in. It was cool. Well, how about pretty much every chick you've been with? All the famous actresses. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation. Are you going to be getting a call from Lindsay Lohan after this? All probably not, time. probably not. No, everybody, it's all love. It's all fun stuff. It's all good times, you know. You got you to gotta be, you gotta be humorous about someone they can take that stuff very serious you know so you don't think some of those girls are going to be pissed off that you talk about them on Howard no I mean look we have a, we're all of us are really really good friends and you know I uh, look like again it's all in fun and games and we all know this is entertainment so thanks for stopping by alright brother see ya You know, I got on the phone. I have on the phone with uh, with us now Krista Miller, who has been authorized by Mandy uh, Moore. Moore, Mandy Moore, the that actress and Mandy singer, yeah. to speak on her behalf about this whole Wilmer Valderrama thing. Why doesn't Mandy speak for herself? Good question, Krista. Hi. Hi. Hey, Krista, th- before I get into introducing you and telling people all about you, yeah. wh- why doesn't Mandy speak for herself, Robin asks. Okay, hi, Robin. Hi there. Um, because Mandy's young, and I think she would be nervous um, coming on Howard, although she's a big fan, as is her boyfriend, Zach Braff. First of all, Wilmer Valderrama, who is a yeah. uh, guy on the TV show... That 70s show. That 70s show. Yeah. Thank you, Robin. He came on my show and said, among other things, that he took Mandy Moore's virginity, that right. he popped her cherry. Now, how could this guy... Th- let me understand this. Wilmer was in here. He seemed like a perfectly rational guy, very sane. Yeah. He, he His claim was... And, and again, I, I mean, I, I don't think it's any big deal that he took her virginity if he did. Uh, he claims he dated her for a long time, that uh, she had never been with a, a man before, you know, in terms of uh, intercourse, and that he was the first. Do you think he's psychotic that he would make up a claim like that? Yeah, well, it didn't happen. I mean, I'm friends with her. She's told me other things. I mean, she's not, you know... What happened then? Well, I don't... He, um... First of all, it absolutely didn't happen, and Zach even called him after. Oh, and what did, what did he say to Zach? He hemmed and hawed and said that he got, um, his words were twisted. And I'm like, dude, I was listening. He, he doesn't speak the language all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that it wasn't, everything kind of got misconstrued. And the thing was is that, um, you know, Mandy's family knew him. She's young. It was a big deal for someone to lie and say that he... Sh- they took so you're away. claiming that this is a lie, mm-hmm. an out-and-out lie. Out-and-out lie. Did he ever have sex with Mandy? No. You mean, I'm talking about, did he ever get a, a, a he's oral? He's never had regular sex with Mandy. Oh, but she gave him oral. No, I don't know about oral, but he's not had sex with Mandy. So who took Mandy's virginity? Well, well I'm, that person, I'm not authorized to say that. You would have that to. that person please step forward? Someone's going to, was it Zach? Is that what the story is? Zach took her virginity? No, I don't think that's the story, but... Um, I'm See, I, I can't believe that Wilmer... You think that he would 
I don't think make he... up a story. Look, I got to tell you, I, she was really pissed. Well, I bet if it's not true, I wish I knew the truth. I would like to hook them both up to lie detectors. Is Mandy willing to take a lie detector test? Hmm. She might be. Really? She's pissed. I want her to just come in. I will be respectful. I will ask her one you question. You know what? The person we really should do the lie detector on is Wilmer. Yeah. I'll do it on both. he now made a lot of claims, and I'm wondering about every one of them. Yeah, well, you know... Um, well, Lindsay Lohan has said whatever um, Wilmer said was true. But she sort of said... Jennifer Hewitt said it wasn't. Right. That's true. And even Lohan said it sort of tongue-in-cheek. Right. Like, what did he say? Yeah, I don't I don't think he's as big as a stud as he says he is. I see. I mean, have you seen him? Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, he seems like a nice-looking guy. Robin no. thought he was good-looking, right? He's a you cute did, right? guy. Sure, he's a cute little wow, guy. Wow, you're saying... Now, when, when uh, Zach confronted him, did he admit that he didn't take Mandy's um, virginity? Um, well, I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. You're not going to get in trouble. You're just being a spokesperson. But I'm, uh, I don't know if he, he, he was comp- really uh, tongue-tied and, and uh, embarrassed and mm. didn't want to be on the phone with Zach. Will Mandy come in and say, she, will she swear on the Lord Jesus Christ? That she did not have intercourse with, uh, with uh, Wilmer Valderrama. I don't know. I'll have to ask her. Yeah, huh? She was when I said to her because I checked with her. I said, you know, do you mind? I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm going to defend your honor because like, she's so adorable. She said, right. really? Would you? I mean, she's not lying. Wow. I wonder what the real story is here. I don't know, but why would a guy use all those famous names? And say things happened that didn't Well, you guys happen. apparently twisted his words, which you didn't. We did heard the whole... What are you talking about? We don't twist anything Yeah, now. that's what we're claiming. Does, d- would, would Mandy come in here, undress, and let me give her a full medical examination? <laughs> yes, I know she would let you do that. <laughs> Hosting the better half. It's where I'm going to talk to the better halves of uh, Howard, Artie, Fred, Robin, and Gary. Specifically, uh, Beth O, Mary Delabate, Allison Norris, uh, Dana, and uh, Mr. X. And uh, we're going to be talking about what goes on in the show, but hear about it from their perspective. So, uh, getting ready, and it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. Hey, it's Gary, and this is my wife, Mary. Uh, she's about to go on the show, My Better Half, where she's going to spill all the secrets about me and tell all the things you know about me. Howdy, my name is Dana. I'm Artie Lang's girlfriend. Um, hopefully, I'll have a chance to get Artie back for all the vicious things that he said to me. And no, I'm only kidding. Uh, I'm going to tell you how great he is. Um, and I look forward to the sitting with Allison and Mr. X and Beth and Mary. Hello, I'm Mr. X. I'm Robin's boyfriend. I'm going to do the Better Halves show. I have no idea what's going to occur, what the questions are, so uh, we'll be figuring it out together. Now, is there anything you won't answer? I'll answer anything as long as I like it. <laughs> Hi, I'm Allison Norris. I'm Fred's wife. I'm here to do the Better Half. Um, I don't know what to expect. Ask me some good questions, and I'll give you some good information on what Fred's like. Um... And, uh, you know, maybe you'll be satisfied. Hi, I'm Betho. I'm here for the better half. I'm really excited. All the girls have been drinking a lot of alcohol, and I'm ready for the questions. I'm ready to ask, I'm ready to get the questions answered from those women in there because we've never heard their side. Good evening and welcome to the better half. I'm John Hine, and with me tonight, we've got Mr. X, Mary Delabate. Beth O, Dana, and Allison Norris. Now, the number to call is 888-STERN-100, and we're going to let all of the better halves have the mic tonight, and we're going to hear the stories that you always hear on the show from their perspective instead of Howard's or Artie's or Robin's or Gary's or Fred's. I'd like to start just by going around the room really quickly, and if you can say who you are and tell the story of how you met your better half. And actually, we're going to start 
with Beth. Beth, we've heard it from Howard a hundred times. How did you guys meet? John, I have to say this is wasting up time because everybody knows how we met. That dinner party, the way Howard says the story is the same exact way that I, I will tell the story. We've said it in front of each other a million times. So waste the time on me. Let's move on to the to the gold. So there's no difference, nothing? No, I've heard him tell it, and I've said it. It's all the same. Dinner party that night. We haven't been apart since. Okay. Leaves more time for the others to tell their story. Mel- Mary Delabate, how did you meet Gary? Well, my story is pretty boring. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gary was at a party that a publicist was throwing, and a friend of mine invited me there. It was after work, so um, we bumped into each other, stayed for a short while, and he asked if we wanted to go someplace else to have a drink, my girlfriend and I. And we did, and I was impressed because the next morning he called me at like 9 a.m., and uh, I thought that was really early and on the ball, but I didn't know we got up and started work at 5. So, <laughs> um, you know, and then we saw each other every weekend since. That's, and that was 15 years ago. Wow. That's very sweet. Very sweet. Mr. X, how did you meet Robin? I met Robin in a circular bar. We were sitting across from each other. The place was primarily empty. I was waiting for more action to come in. None came. So after two hours of staring at each other, I sent her a drink. I was prepared to leave. And as I left at this time, this was before Robin had a breast reduction. She started beating her breast on the bar. To summon me back. So I came back in, and I haven't been able to get away from it since, 20 years later. Oh. I don't think that was quite as romantic as Mary's, but still a sweet story to oh, say. Okay. <laughs> Allison, how about you? Oh, um, I dread this one. Um, uh, we're like the first reality couple. <laughs> That's right. I remember really this story. Are. Now, there may be some people new to Sirius who may not be familiar with how Allison actually met Fred. So, Allison? We met on uh, Dial-A-Date. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, really? We no. did. We, met, <laughs> we did. We met 18 years ago. And uh, I I don't know. I called in to um, the Stern Show. It was on in the morning. And, um, you know, one of these people that just kind of like dares, you know, somebody dared me to do it. And I was like, okay, I'll do it. Why not? And I called and I actually got through on the phone which is so unusual to get through on the phone and um, I was bachelorette number three and to make a long story very very short um, my father was on the other line so I really was very restrained about what I could say and Howard's like okay so what are you going to do to Fred to you know win this date and I'm like uh, I don't know I'm going to do nothing (laughs) I'm going to do absolutely nothing and they're like oh don't pick her she's the worst and of course Fred being as contrary as he is, he, he uh, picked me, and I went and went to this round table of freaks, because there were all these dial dates at this table. There was, like, a person with, like, one leg and one eye and mother-daughter dial date and I was completely bombed. I was so drunk and nervous, and I remember saying to my girlfriend before I went, uh, I just have to get through this evening, and I'm done. I don't know what I got myself into. And How was- many years later? Are you? 18. Wow. And we actually talked all night long. And before we looked around, this is the honest truth, there was nobody there. We were like, oh, my God, everybody left. You know, the the little guy with no legs, he walked out. (laughs) (laughs) You and Fred talked all night long? I can't believe that. Believe it or not, and he hasn't said another word since. (laughs) Here we go. Okay. And last but not least, Dana, how did you meet Artie? Um, I was a bartender in Hoboken. And Artie would come in often for lunch. I worked a lunch shift. Um, And then at night, he'd start to come in. We became friends. He was like, (laughs) believe it or not, (laughs) the only, like, sane person in the bar (laughs) amongst all these other drunk animals. And I was just so happy to see him every time he came in. And um, we really became friends first. And uh, the night he finally made like his first romantic gesture he gave me his phone number and i was working on the rooftop bar in hoboken and that night he gives me his phone number i put it in my pocket i see him from the roof walking home with this blonde on his back (laughs) he was honestly giving this you know beautiful blonde girl a piggyback ride to his apartment with another couple and i said oh Okay, <laughs> and that was it. So, so, but anyway, so he came back in, and he was a little persistent, and I still adored 
the man as a friend, and then we got romantic, more romantic slowly. I forgave him. <laughs> How soon did you get romantic? Um, that next night. That not normal. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, a little while after. Okay. But so you forgave him for the blonde on the back. Yeah, was... because he, you know, he was a single guy, and I was a single girl, so, you know. Hmm. But he made this romantic gesture. He gave me his phone number, I guess, finally, after having all these conversations and stuff. And anyway, I had to clear that up. Okay. Well, <laughs> now we know all the stories. Let's get to some of the questions. And the first obvious one, I think, would be how, and feel free to chime in as we go at any time. <laughs> how often do any of you listen to the show? On what basis? Allison? Oh, as much as I can. I mean, um, it's a little dominated by Nickelodeon and, and Dora the Explorer, <laughs> considering the radio's in the one room with the television is, but I try and listen all the time. I Dana, love, how I about love you? the show. I'm sorry. Dana, how about you? Um, well, I teach, and I'm usually in school by 7.15, 7.30, so I really, you know, if, if anything, try to listen for the first hour, but since the move to Sirius, I'm, I'm not connected yet. <laughs> so I haven't heard anything. How are you not connected? Well, because my serious radio is sitting at the bottom of Artie's closet right next, <laughs> right next to the TiVo that I got him not too long ago. So the two of them are sitting there, and <laughs> that's it. Beth, how about you? I don't listen to the show. Not at all. Oh, if occasionally if I'm getting reports that something is going on that's talking about me or something else I'll, I'll tune in i'm gonna ask mary and mr x but first i gotta go back to it because both you and dana alluded to it do you guys get like 84 messages on your cell phone if something happens yes, relating 85. to 85 mm -hmm. so instantly you know what's going what's going i usually on. call howard's assistant laura to see what's going on and then i tune in to hear the conversation then i either call gary back or i don't when he leaves a message on my voicemail so it's almost like an instant alert for instant you. alert yeah allison how about you yeah same thing. I actually, you know, there was a while when I was not listening for a while because I just couldn't, you know, my spy, I, I just couldn't deal with listening, you know, people calling in. And I just said, you know what, I'm not going to listen for a while, but I love the show. I Dana? Listen. Dana? Yeah. I, I have to say, I, um, especially this week, <laughs> I get a lot of phone calls. I really do. And I respect that. And I think the feedback that I get from my friends has been pretty consistent with with what already says happened. But um, I have to say that the month off or so ever since Sirius, uh, you know, Howard's moved to Sirius, it's been a nice little break, you know, just, you know, from listening every day and only because I really do support Artie. I think he's, you know, insanely talented and I enjoy hearing him do what he's best at. But, you know, it was a nice little break, I have to say. I mean, I want to hook the series up and everything, but, you know, sometimes you, you need that break, mm -hmm. you know. I, I think Definitely. you guys Absolutely. can attest to that. Mary, maybe. do you listen? I listen. I, you know, I have two boys, and um, you can't listen now at all with series. You never know what you're going to hear. <laughs> right. So um, I listen less than I used to. Um, How often did you listen when it was on terrestrial radio? You know, I listen to it sort of coming and going, you know, when I'm going here and there in the car, at home, not at all. So I, I don't know, at the most an hour a day, but mm -hmm. often not at all. Like last week, I didn't hear it at all. So anything leading up to today, I haven't, you know, I'm not really that aware of. I heard a little bit of the Dana already business. Do you have people <laughs> reporting to you? People report into me, and usually it's wrong because I think my sources are not very good or something, <laughs> but it's like telephone. So, you know, sometimes I'll call Gary, and he'll be like, what? And it was so off base, so I try not to do that. Okay. Mr. X, how about you? How often do you listen to the show? I listen sporadically. Uh, it's the five hours during the day. It's the only time I can shut Robin up. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Let's go to the phones. We've got a couple of great calls already. Let's go to Zergog in San Jose. You're on the better half. Hey, great. How's everyone doing? How's the panel doing? Hello. Good. Welcome to oh, the great. view. <laughs> Don't be shy. Don't speak up at once. Hello. Dana, your thong is sticking out. Oh, I'm sorry. Zergog. Can you get that it's for hot. me? Can you get that for me? Hello. <laughs> Zergog, what's your question? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to say, since I know that their significant others are listening, I want to say hello to Howard and everybody else. But my question is for Mr. X. 
And Mr. X, I there's probably no real nice way of saying this, but I do mean this out of respect. Um, why do you go by Mr. X? I mean, you really should be proud that you're with uh, Robin. I mean, she's a very wonderful woman, sweet, lovely, beautiful, big tatas, all that good stuff. <laughs> it's it's not that you're, you know, I mean, you're not so egotistical that you have to go by Mr. X. What's the story, bro? We want to know who you are. I used, to, I used to have a sensitive job for the government. So it, when I was working with the government, I didn't want to... Uh reveal my identity and now it's just become kind of a joke and we enjoy it so i it going and you've just been rolling with it ever since exactly okay very nice let's go to nathan in cincinnati nathan you are on nathan you're on the better half hello nathan you're on the better half oh sweet oh hey what's going on uh i got a question for uh mary de la oh. <laughs> go ahead mary? hi how's it going i'm good uh, how are you no, I uh, I wanted to know. Like uh, Gary always strikes me as like kind of a kinky guy. You guys <laughs> ever uh, he ever call or you ever call him uh, Baba Booey in bed? <laughs> well, that's not my idea of kinky, but uh, you know what? I'll do it for you. <laughs> but what if what if he uh, what if he's having an off night and you know you know. You- we lost him. Oh, but no. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Did you do that on purpose? No, I didn't. Mr. Kinky. Actually, I didn't. But uh, yeah, I don't know whose idea of kinky that might be, Mary. No, but he brings up an interesting point. Not the kinky part, but the Baba Booey part. Does that bother you? Like how Gary's always referred to as it with Sal songs and everything else. How do you feel about that? Well, the Baba Booey thing, I think, is cute. You know, they oh. call me Mrs. Fooey sometimes. Oh. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't like, you know, we went away with Sal over the summer. We went, Heineken took us to Amsterdam and to Paris, and I never met him before. And I thought when when Sal got the job full time, I said, Gary, you have to quit. How can you work with Sal? I mean, he's just impossible. He's rude. He's so mean. But um, I learned to like him a lot. He's a really hilarious guy. So, you know, Gary has a hard shell, and I try to have a hard shell and not let it bother me. So, you know, I turn it off if I don't like it. Now, in the past, Howard's gotten on Gary pretty strongly. I think a lot less recently but beforehand he used to beat him up pretty good how'd you feel about that i feel bad i could tell when gary's taking it hard and when you know he's letting it just sort of brush off so um you know i think it's gotten better he's been a little bit you know kinder to gary so thank god for that howard's so happy it's serious that i think his whole demeanor at home has just been he's just been floating around in bliss land he's so happy i think everybody feels that i really do Hmm. so all right, let's take another call. Brian in New York, you're on The Better Half. Hey, how you guys doing? My question is for Allison. How you doing, Allison? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. I want to know when you and your husband, the kids are in bed, you're going at it, you're having a great time, it's late <laughs> at night, are you screaming out Eric or are you screaming out Fred? What's your name? My name is Brian. I'm screaming out Brian. Oh, come on. <laughs> Eric or Fred, tell me. <laughs> Oh, come on. You call him Fred, Don't right? You ha- I call him Fred, yeah. But, you know, it's kind of romantic. I feel like I have two husbands in a way. So it <laughs> kind of depends. Um, I call him Fred. You see, the one thing that you'll pick up when this airs on On Demand later is the look of dread and fear when the call is like, <laughs> everyone's excited for the call to come in, but then the name comes up, and there are four sighs of relief, and there's one like, oh, my God. I'm surprised no one's asked Dana about her situation. Uh, <laughs> actually, <laughs> As Beth segues, he's going to kill me. The question for all you guys, really, um, when people learn who you are, do they treat you a different way? Like, are you treated a certain way because you're on this turn show? And I mean that in a positive or a negative way. Beth, you're sort of out there in the public. People see you, you know, already. So, well, but you should answer the question, too. How do people, how do people deal with you guys in, again, a positive or a negative way? It's definitely different when I go shopping. It's almost annoying. People catered to me, and it's um, there was an instance where there was a really popular bridal company who was treating the bridesmaids horribly, but treating me like a queen after they found out who I was. And so we called them on it, and I was really it was a whole thing. But yeah, I'm definitely treated differently. It's almost annoying when I shop because they're in my face, and they think that I, I need hors d'oeuvres or champagne, and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Okay, Allison, how about you? You know, it's weird. Some, uh, you know, I don't really tell people, and then when they find out, they're usually it's usually very positive. It's like, oh my God, you're Fred's wife. I love Fred. You know, it's really a very positive response. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of nice. And then when they start asking a lot of questions, I'm like, all right, I gotta go. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Mary, how about you? What kind of reaction do you get? Mostly good. Um, 
I don't know. Sometimes, you know, the women look at me like, you know, how can you let that stuff go on? <laughs> and I, you know, just sort of clarify what, you know. Do they give you a look or do they call you on it? Well, sometimes my friends call me on it, you know. Mm. I can tell what they're thinking. Don't you but, get mad when your friends – I mean, I do. Like, I'm like, why are you calling me and ruining my day, you know, and telling me about right, stuff? Right, because they've heard gonna it. really annoy me. Right. I, I don't know if it's more for them or for me or what, and, you know. Because like, they've heard two seconds of it. They've or... heard two seconds, and I'm, like, busy doing something else, and they're, like, stirring the pot, and then it's kind of annoying, Like you know? the move to Sirius, you know, friends are thinking, well, what's going to go on now, you know, that hasn't already right. gone on? I'm like, you know, probably nothing. I mean, yeah. Gary's there, and he's seeing everything that goes on. You may not hear it or see it, you know, from your point of view, but he does, and... You know what? I we just deal with it. Mm. You know, this they is just like kind of don't get it. This is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. X, do people recognize you? Uh, normally, they jump over me and try to get Robin's attention if we're at a restaurant. Uh, that's I, annoying. I've yeah. been on a couple of yeah. near fist fights, and Robin had to stop me because you know you don't mind people approaching, but normally I find them to be rude and stupid. But they're excited, so you try to let it go. She's convinced me to just let them, you know, kind of say hello and. And keep on going. Every once in a while, you get somebody who's really obnoxious. But as a rule, people are nice. Mm. For the most part, are people respectful when it comes to, like, being out in public and whatnot? Depends well, where you are. <laughs> a lot of times, people won't even approach if I'm with Rob, and they'll wait till I leave because I've been described as a big, burly black guy. I don't know how that comes to pass, but at any rate. With, cow with sexy cowboy boots. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, yeah, 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 but, uh, I think they're just so, no, intimidating. How Howard Stern fans are so awesome. So mm -hmm. it's only been walking on the streets. If someone recognizes me, it's only positive and amazing. Right. It's exciting. I love it. They're it, excited. Yeah. Right. They're yeah. Like, they're awesome. They're all yeah. so. It's, you know. it's, it makes you feel so good, and I get so proud of Howard and his whole. It's just so cool. You know, the one thing I will say, like, like right before they moved over to Sirius, the one thing I'll note, I noticed when we were walking, people were so into the move. They were like. Go, good luck. We're with you. I mean, it was such a great. It was a. It was a really great thing. It was such a positive vibe that, you know, people were really coming. They really got it. They were really coming. I mean, the fans are so loyal. Dana, how about you? How are people treating you when they find out who you are in relation to the show? Um, I mean, I'm never really recognized um, at all. I teach, so my students have no idea who I date. <laughs> Um, I teach eighth grade, so, you know, they are aware of Howard Stern, like the show, because a lot of them watch it at night, um, because I've heard them come in with stories, and they'll say, like, um, on Howard Stern, you know, like, I hear that, and I don't say anything. Um, the fu a funny thing happened once. I was at um, on one of the shows in Las Vegas, and... E scanned, you know, my face briefly, and there was a huge rumor throughout my school that that Miss Cerrone showed her breasts on Howard Stern. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so funny. This is a true story. So I had to then get a tape from E, and I went to my principal, and I had to have her put it on file because, you know, parents may think that I actually showed my breasts on Howard, and I guess that's the perception that the kids had but if i do meet someone my age and you know they're they're so kind and like it's such a pleasure to meet you and i love artie and artie's great but you know that's it hmm. okay let's go to the phones let's talk to henry in fresno california henry you are on with the better half hey how's it going guys hey hi hi, hi. I, I had a question do you, do you guys hang out like uh, socially or you know you guys i know you guys all have the husbands and wives together at the show, but like off the show, you guys hang out together. Do you guys hang out socially? Anybody yeah. can take that. Occasionally one. we do, but yeah. as couples. But Dana, anyone here, Dana and I have gotten together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On our own. But with and we keep in, at least try to keep in contact via email. Actually, yeah. Allison and I, too. Yeah. But we try. I think yeah. I think we try the best. We it's can. always great when we yeah. do. We always say, "Oh, we have to do this more often." I know. Yeah. Every time we, every time there's a function, we're like, "Why don't we do this more yeah. often?" Yeah. And, yeah. You know, life happens. Jeff in New Hampshire, you're on the better half. Uh, yes, I had a quick question for everybody, uh, including Mr. X. Um, how is it like having your uh, lives uh, kind of in the limelight? Um, a little bit, and um, lo and then my other second part of my question would be, how how do the women cope with uh, 
you know, all the hygienes that go on, you know, during the show. Okay, that's that's a good two-part question. Let's take the first part. How do you feel living your life in, in the public, I mean, in being out there? Anybody? It is what it is. I met Howard when he was Howard. I, I, I kind of went right into it. And um, something, I mean, people know when I have sex. People know I'm having my period. <laughs> people know what my bowel movement problems are. And that was, that's what, that's when I drew the line, actually. I was really pissed off when he was talking about my <laughs> problem in that area. So, yeah, it, that affected me. Nothing else until then. But, Beth, mm. you knew, I'm guessing, you knew what you were getting into. Oh, absolutely. Mm. And, and I've been fine and cool. I mean, it's it's part of what it is. And. I mean, I wouldn't change it for the world. Now, Mary and Allison, you guys have, and, and Mr. X, you guys have sort of grown, as the show has grown over time, has there been an adjustment? Have things always been the same, or have things gotten any crazier for you, I guess, when dealing with the public? I don't know. I think maybe the recognition factor has gone up since the beginning. Mm-hmm. It has. Um, yeah. It's funny, when we first met, you know, when Fred and I first, there was no television show, so nobody knew really who... You know, he was, and then I remember when we were living downtown and when the E! show started, and then it was like, you know, it was just like a whole different realm happened, you know, and it was a little scary at times, you know, people running over to you because, you know, we weren't used to that, but, you know, it's... It's been a long ride. So. Yeah, it's been a good it's ride. A good ride. Pretty much yeah. the same thing. Robin and I went to a fight in Atlantic City, and after the fight was over, we got mobbed, or she got mobbed, I should mm. say, by almost the entire arena she was even frightened on that particular occasion yeah. so over the course of time it has the notoriety has increased i think we've grown with the significant others too like i know fred you know it's been an adjustment for him too you know coming from radio and no one no one really knowing who you are and then going to people knowing who you are and then the movie and the book and all of that i mean that was like it was an amazing amazing time it really was now let's go to the second part of the question which is I think he said hijinks, but I'll put it more bluntly. How do you, you guys all know what goes down on the show? How do you deal with, you know, the different guests that come in? Is it accepted as part of the show? Is it a big deal? How do you feel? Allison, I'll start with you. You're right next to me. It's, you know, it doesn't really affect me, honestly. It's part of, you know, it's how Fred makes a living and... I kind of knew what I was getting into when I made the call. So, I mean, if I can't deal with it, then that's really my stuff, you know. Dana, how about you? Um, it's all part of the job, you know. Um, no, as Artie <laughs> would say. Um, I guess, you know, it is what it is. I, I almost like the fact that he is surrounded by what he is because um, – I think the alternative is someone who feels trapped and like, you know, they have to lie to their spouse Mm. to get out there every Mm. once in a while. And it really all ultimately boils down to self-confidence. I don't want to sound cocky, but that's what it is. And and this is me and I'm not going to change physically or, you know, anything else. And that's it. You know, I it is what it is. I don't worry about it. You know, Beth, how do you mm. feel? Because Howard gets into pretty graphic details. <laughs> well, it's to... case by case, but um, I have to be <laughs> honest, I get really jealous. And I see some of the women that come on the show. I do. I don't listen to the show, but I do read that web- website and I see the pictures of these celebrities and these beautiful women that I know I can't compare to. And I, I get that feeling of dread and I get really sad inside. But it's just part of the I feel insecure. But that's that's Beth, just how everybody. It everybody here is laughing at yeah, you. Give me, give me a break. I mean, they love me. They're all my friends. But we no, I'm being honest. It's sometimes it's very hard when there's this gorgeous woman on saying and Howard's saying what she wants to do to her and he, she's saying what she wants to do with him. These are all, of course, secondhand. It, it, it bothers me. I'm being honest. You're, it be- does. you're beautiful, Beth. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very, very beautiful. We went, we went to your cover, your, your, you know, when you were That's bathing suit. And I kept saying to Fred, why is, my, why is her face on my body? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there are many, many you. beautiful women in yeah. an average bar. I mean, they don't all flock to just the Howard Stern show. I mean, but I'm saying like it can happen anywhere and right. and to anyone at any time. And, you know, um, it is what it is. It's just his job. <laughs> Mary, how about you? Um, I feel the same way. I got immune over the years. Um, I don't like all of it, but um, 
It's true. You know, these guys that are accountants and stockbrokers and lawyers and whatnot, and then they have to lie and go to scores mm-hmm. or whatever. My husband tells me exactly what goes on. We yeah. talk very honestly about what it is. Mm-hmm. And it's true. If he were going to cheat on me, he would cheat on me. Right. No matter where he was or who mm-hmm. was throwing themselves right. at him. I mean, I'm in, not in the same position as Beth. I'm sure he doesn't get the offers. Gary doesn't get the offers. That I know. <laughs> Gary's hot. <laughs> Mr. X, how do you feel with Robin being around all this? Does that bother you at all? No, not at all. Uh, I'm a little bit jealous of she and Beetlejuice, but you know that. <laughs> Uh, right. Let's go to Joe in Rochester. <laughs> Joe, you're on the you're on the better half. Yeah, does Mary does Mary Gary's wife Mary get mad when he gets to like um, feel up like good looking women, say like Jenny McCarthy? Yes. <laughs> you get mad? I, I got mad at that. Yeah. Did you hear it or did you hear it secondhand? I heard it secondhand, and I was not happy about that. No touchy. What, so what, what makes does he do? Yeah. What, what does he do? Mad? Yeah. What, what makes me explain mad? About that? This, explain yeah. that. I think that's thing. crossing the line. I was going to say, mm-hmm. do you all have a line? That's yeah. crossed. I mean, Mary says obviously yeah. don't touch the, the women or men or both. Well, when Fred comes home from here. scores, I mean, he smells. It's like, please He's go take a shower. I, I mean, yeah, it's like, you well, know. That, I think the scores you know? thing is different yeah. because Why is that? the scores girls know who Artie is. I mean, and you, you know, have it completely. And Gary, they know who Fred is. So these girls, like, flock to them. They rub every part of their body. And don't they you know, smell when they Artie. come home? And so once <laughs> I was there with Artie, we're at Scores, and he's standing right next to me, and this, you know, beautiful girl comes over, and she says, hey, baby, and she kisses him on the cheek. And he goes, like, he's like, uh, uh. Uh, this is Dana, and she's like, oh. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, that, I was like, oh, my God. I've what, seen that, What too. happens yeah. when I I'm not yeah. here? But, you know what? Such is life. I mean, there are guys, you know, again, I'll, I'll go back to what Mary said, stockbrokers, lawyers, doctors, plumbers, construction workers, they do the same thing. So, hmm. Beth, how you do you know. feel about scores? You know what? I'm fine when he goes. Um, I just have sex with him before he goes. It's very important. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the other thing. If you haven't had sex in a while, you're like, oh, honey, do you have to go? Uh, come over quick. Yeah. But, but then he comes home, and I, I make fun of the glitter that's all over mm-hmm. him. And it's always remnants the next day or the next day after. Um, but I get jealous, too. I want to hear everything that happened. Yeah. I'm like, tell me, tell me. I can't believe you, you know, yeah. but, but it, it's fine. It's, it's harmless. It yeah. really is. He comes home to me. <laughs> Joey, you're on the better half. Yeah, hey, how's it going, guys? Hi. I got a question for Mr. X. I was just kind of wondering, with Robin, sometimes she portrays herself on the show as being kind of self off of kind of the crazy things that happen, like, for instance, like the Sibian stuff. She really doesn't say too much during it. Away from the show, is she uh, that same type of person, or is she more that flamboyant, the kind of crazy the person that you would find on, like, the Sibian away from the show? Hmm. I'm not sure I understand that question. Let, let me try to rephrase it. Is, is the Robin that we hear on air the Robin that you deal with at home? In terms of giggling and laughing constantly, Acro- yes. Across the board. Uh, I mean, I, I mean you, you heard her. Did you hear her revelation, for example? I did. No, no, I was, trying, mm. I was thinking about it. I can't, what was it? I don't remember what it was. <laughs> All right, this is remember. comfortable. Her revelation was that at one time she pleasured herself with meat and vegetables. <laughs> oh, yes, 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 yes. Well, you know, now I can answer the listener's question. Because years ago, when she used to come over to my apartment, I, when she'd leave, I'd find food missing from the refrigerator. <laughs> she hadn't eaten anything. <laughs> So I never understood that until just this year. But uh, So I guess maybe she is the same on and off the show. Now, do you all find your better halves or other halves, the way they are in the show, is that the way they are at home? Or what percentage would you say are they the same that you hear on the show than what you deal with at home? Mary? Well, it depends. I mean, <clears throat> there are those that say that Gary's a bubbling idiot, and then there's those that find him really bright. And the bright side is the true side. Gary's mm-hmm. a really smart guy, really funny guy, great sense of humor. So, yeah, in that sense, he is. But, um, you know, like when Sal goofs on him or people insult him, that is not who he is. Mm-hmm. Beth, is the Howard on air, the Howard at home? Howard's very smart. He's very funny. He's very entertaining. It's always a, a funny day in the life of Howard. But um, I have to say he's gentle. He's sweet. He's romantic. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that if people really know that side of him. So I think... I think he's different at home, yeah. Dana, how about you? How's Artie there compared to here? Um, well, 
He was the same. <laughs> are you and Artie together? Uh, we are, sort of. Okay. <laughs> Actually, Dana, wait a second, because we'll get to that I in one minute. Her. Allison, <laughs> Allison, is the Fred we hear or don't hear, actually? I was going to say, do you hear Fred on the air? Do you, do you hear him at home? <laughs> yes, I do. Okay. He's very different. He's actually very vocal and, and very involved and, and very um, Probably good dad. loving. Mm -hmm. He's the most incredible dad. Hi, Tess. Um, Hi, he's, Tess. Yeah. Oh, he's... He's just um, he's an incredible husband. He really is. We need to touch on something that everybody's been talking about, and uh, I want to talk to Dana about what's going on with Artie. Now, those of you who didn't hear, uh, last week on the show, Artie talked about problems he's been having with Dana. I don't know when I was going to get into this on the show because I, I wanted to, to uh, maybe wait for a slower show or something, but uh, uh -oh, I'm curious to hear on? the better half show because uh, I'm curious to hear what Dana has to say because I haven't talked to her in a while. What do you mean? What? Uh, we're, we're having, you know, a lot of problems. It's uh, off again? It, it, it's pretty much, yeah. You tell us, I mean, what's going on? Um, first... Hold my hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are the tissues? No. <laughs> no, first... Uh, look, I'm just going to be honest here. Um, I love Artie very much. I have for the whole four years. Um, and he's... Such an intelligent, warm, loving man, and he doesn't take out enough time for himself. He gives, 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 and I think he's um, overlooked himself for a long time, and it's starting to show. And uh, I just want Artie to be happy. I did really start to think about um, children and you know, a family, and I believe, I didn't hear, but I believe already mentioned something about, you know, a house and um, this and a separate room for the dog and stuff like that. And that's all fine and acceptable to someone who doesn't have Artie's best, best interests in mind, in my opinion. And I just want Artie to be happy. And we've been happy for a long time, but right now I don't think Artie's very happy. Um, he's got a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, and I just think he needs to handle the stress and the pressure a little bit better. Um, marriage, a child, things like relationship, a successful relationship aren't things that I'm going to check off on my to-do list. Um, they're things that, you know, enhance my life, make my life, uh, what it is now better, um, so I just think uh, I lost that man that I knew for the last three and a half years. I, I lost him for a little while, and I just think he needs a little help getting some things in order. I don't know. You know, I don't know if I could put it into the right words. I don't know if anyone can understand what I'm saying if, unless you've been with us for the whole four years. But but there's hope for you guys. Absolutely. And he has decided to go to therapy, and I'm so happy about that because I will stick by him 110, 1,000 percent. He was just so vivacious not too long ago and um, fun and happy and when that disappeared, my concern is not for me in this relationship. My concern was for Artie mm -hmm. and what happened to you and where are you and come back because I love you. And, mm -hmm. you know, I want to see you happy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You women have to stop trying to civilize us <laughs> Neanderthals. Just yeah. leave us alone. And if that's the case, then I'm okay with that, too. You know, mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. honesty mm -hmm. is a factor here. And mm -hmm. I just want what's best for him. And if he doesn't want to, you know get happy then hey i know that i have to be so howard welcome to the better half hey guys Hi, howard. Hi. i've had an absolutely exhausting day dealing with les moonves and viacom so in love with me that they can't let go of me but anyway I, you know i'm listening to the show and uh, i think this is such a great opportunity i'm more curious than ever uh, first of all, Mary, hi. Hi, how are you? Good. You know, I, I, today I did something uh, demeaning to Gary. I, I made him go to the apartment and check to see if I had thrown away my masturbation tissues. Are you kidding me? 
No. Does you know, that, I think I did hear a tidbit of this. Yeah, does that upset you when I take Gary and ask him to do something uh, as disgusting as touch my... <laughs> honey, my, that's gross. Uh, I know, honey. I, I know it is. No, it doesn't bother me. Come on. With your husband, mm. and let's face it, he has to touch my cum tissues. <laughs> I mean, I just can't oh. sit well with you. Oh. Oh. There was no one else available. <laughs> well, there were some people. He's the only one I trusted. That's sweet well, on some said, level. No, it doesn't Dorman. bother. Did it bother him? Probably not. Dana, I love you. Hi, Howard. Hi, Dana. I love you. And I'm very sad to hear about you and Artie. I'm more confused than ever. Here, here's, i got to ask you point blank. Let's go to dinner. Bye. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, I'm, I'm really more confused than ever. Are you uh, saying... That if Artie goes into therapy, that you would consider moving in with him? Absolutely, Howard. Howard, okay. listen, I was raised Catholic, right. and uh, I I am not Catholic anymore. I'm, <laughs> I'm spiritual, actually, and so I consider this to be uh, sort of our pre -cana. You know, I, mm. I genuinely mean that with all my heart. I do not want to go to a priest. I don't want to go to a rabbi. I don't want to do anything. I just want... This is our pre cana Right, so therapy. you're saying, you know, I admire you. I think Artie needs to be in therapy. Thank I think you, your, Howard. I think shows that you love him. Absolutely. But, but are you dating anyone presently? No. Would you, what, 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 if Artie doesn't go to a therapist within the next month, will you begin seeing other men? No, not within the next month. I think it's going to take a little more time. Mm -hmm. I have Clyde. So, so, I know. So, <laughs> what do you think? Why do you think Artie didn't immediately go into therapy? I'm going to tell you why, Howard, and, and I bet you know this I don't. just as much as I do. All but right. whenever mm -hmm. you tell Artie something, whenever he hears the word ultimatum, or if you if 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 Artie is told something, or if he feels like he's being told to do something, mm -hmm. he will run. Mm -hmm. And and I I. What my hurdle is, is trying to let him know that it's so for him and hopefully, you know, for us. You know mm. what I mean, Howard? Like, yes. It's I, I admire what you're saying. What you're saying is that uh, as soon as you put your foot down, it was basically, a, 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 I think it's a very loving thing to do. You're saying, Artie, I don't think you're capable of being in the relationship with me, and I need you to do this. I need you to go in therapy. So let's say Artie goes in therapy and you move in together. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, you want to have children. Yes, one. Do you trust Artie? To, do you have? Tr do you trust Artie to be the father of your children? Uh, absolutely, you but do. I think I think right now um, I don't think. See, uh, I don't know if this is too personal or not, but I'm going to say it. A child or a marriage should not be a void that you need to fill. It should be something that enhances, in my opinion, your life. And right now, I'm okay. You know, I'm okay. I would love to get married. I would love to have a child. I think Artie thinks maybe that a marriage is, is a void that he needs to fill in his life. I, I think he should be happy before he commits to a marriage. I don't think a marriage is going to make him happy. I see. So um, I'm going to ask you for your, your best guess, your best opinion now. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, what is the likelihood of you and Artie getting back together, uh, moving in together in this house in New Jersey with a special room for the dog? <laughs> ten, being, 10 being, yeah, that's most likely to happen. One being, it's never going to happen. I think I think it's 10, but I think it has to be, Howard, for all the right reasons, not because you want to fill a void or because this is something you're supposed to do because you're 38 years old. Do you, you think, know? You think is, it, is it hard to get Artie to commit to marriage? I'm trying to understand this because, you know, tomorrow morning I'm going to have to deal with him. <laughs> uh, do you think it's hard to get if a guy? If he shows up? No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> He'll show up. Do you think it's hard to get a guy like Artie to uh, commit to marriage because he has a pretty insulated life in that he makes a good living, his mom cooks for him, mm -hmm. his mom, you know, does the books and does the whole thing. His sister's very protective of him. Mm -hmm. Is it almost like, well, what the hell? All I need is a woman to give me sex and everything's pretty complete. Sex and a child. Come That's on, That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, again, I'm going to just go back to, um, I, I love him, Howard, dearly. I think you know that. But it has to be for the right reasons. I don't, I think right now, Artie feels like he has to be married for whatever those reasons mm -hmm. are he has to be there's nothing we have to do that anybody has to do it's it's a want 
because of the right reasons. And that's what I want to make sure of. And that's why I think therapy is like the precana for us I in see. a sense. I, I admire that, and I think Artie does too. I, think I he hope so, Howard. I hope so. Allison Norris, quick question. I got it. John, do you mind that I'm asking some questions? Go ahead. All right, real quick. Allison Norris. Hi, Howard. Why does Fred always think that I don't like him or appreciate him? I've always told him how much he means to me. Am I not uh, demonstrative enough? Am I not a, is that the right word? Yeah, am I, do I, I'm probably wrong with that word. But do, do I, what do I need to tell Fred that I love him? No. What do I need to do? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, maybe just tell him you love him. You know, maybe. Allison, um, does, does Fred really think that's true? No, I think, I, I honestly, Howard, I think that Fred feels that you really do love him. I think it's kind of a brother thing where, yes. you know, you love him and you expect so much from him. And honestly, Howard, he has your back. He there's I nothing. Know that. Uh, can I tell you the honest truth? I mean, we're all being honest here. Yes. There's nothing he would not do for the show. He would almost take a bullet for the show. Would he take uh, anal from uh, Artie? <laughs> um, That's what I really need him to do. He almost would. I don't know, but he <laughs> he so he so would do anything for the show. Mr. And I, and I, I, honestly, Mr. X is a hard guy to read sometimes. Mr. X, how do you feel about me? Seriously, be, be honest. Am I am I uh, good enough to Robin, or am I? Uh, do, do you ever get envious of me with my relationship with Robin? I need to know. No, absolutely not. And, and we don't we, compete, do we? Absolutely not. And I appreciate the Mercedes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Are you driving the Mercedes? No, Robin won't, won't let me near it. <laughs> you know something? You're one of the funniest guys I've ever met, much funnier than me. Um, but I've never heard you really speak seriously about your affection for Robin. Is there a true love there, or is this just a mere friendship? Oh, true love, absolutely. That's why we don't have to speak about it. Why? Why can't you tell me how you feel about her in words? Is that something? It's none of your business. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Why does it concern you? Because uh, I don't know. It's a radio show. I'm trying to mix it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I hope Artie and Dana stay together. I think Dana's tremendous. She's I want to say something about all the wives right now. Thanks, and all Howard. The, I want to say to everyone, uh, Mary Delabate, a true pleasure and a, and a great oh. woman. Uh, Mary, I heard wild things about you on your trip to. Um, uh, I, I wonder if you would comment. I heard wonderful things about you on your trip to uh, Amsterdam that you actually uh, got high. I did. And, uh, <laughs> and you passed out. I did. Yes. And um, and uh, did you find that embarrassing that it was discussed on the radio? Oh, no, not at all. It was hilarious, actually. I had <laughs> two no hits. Two hits of pot. What do you think of the fact that Gary says he doesn't get enough sex from you? Is that a shtick or is that Does he say thing? that? Yeah, he does. He feels he's not having a, an active enough sex life. He has, he has voiced that on the air. Oh, uh, well, he's got to warm me up. He, is, does he not warm you up enough? <laughs> no, he does not. He does not. Uh, he's going to turn me on. What, do you, what, what does that mean? What does he need to do? Well, he's going to romance me. He's going to treat me nice. Howard, actually, Howard, tell I, him what to do. I have a question for Mary with you on the phone. Okay. During the show, Howard often says what Mary, what you should be doing in the house, what your role should be, and then when Gary comes home from work, he should be doing something and you should be doing something, meaning you should be taking care of the house, doing the chores, that kind of... Howard, correct me if you think I'm wrong. I here. believe that Gary is too much of a house husband. He puts in an exhausting day, and I think he's expected to do too much with the kids. Yeah, but where do you get that information? From me, because I'm insane. <laughs> no, Mary. I really do think that. I think, you know Gary... what? I, I think John Melendez put this picture out there that Gary is, like, pussy-whipped and does all this housework. I'd mm. love to see that. Okay. I will give you a list of what Gary does and a list of what I do any day. Can I be Gary's advocate? Get you see, that's the problem there's less. Gary needs to sleep in on weekends. He needs his rest. He does. He, he does. He feels he has to get up early one day a week, uh, one, one weekend day, and then you have to uh, you have to split the chores evenly 50-50. But oh, Gary please. I wish we did. That sounds great. You're saying you do more of the work than Gary. Absolutely. I take what, care, per I, what percentage would you say? Taking care of the house and yeah. the children? Oh, God. I would say 90% I do. No, that's fair, though. I mean, I mean, because, you know, Mary is home and Gary, Gary is at work. Right, but you know what? A man and a father, their only job is not just what they do at the office. They I... have to come home and take out the garbage. I know how unglamorous that is, but there's stuff to be done. And... I don't know how Fred is as a father because, you know, I'm not really sure, but i got to tell you something. I think Gary's one of the best fathers, and I've seen Mary in action. The, the two of them together are dying to my parents. Thank so I, you. I can't, I can't criticize. I want to say to every one of these people, because we do socialize occasionally, probably not enough, uh, each of them uh, I consider to be part of the team that goes into the Howard Stern Show because if the people at work aren't happy and uh, and they're having miserable lives at home, uh, they can't concentrate on the work. Their role 
doing the show is almost as important as, as just about anyone's. And I always recognize that. And I resented all those years at uh, CBS Viacom that they didn't invite these people to the Christmas party where they should have been allowed to celebrate with their husbands and wives. I agree with partners. you, Howard. I thought it was an insult. That was so weird that, that we could never go. That yeah, how did you feel about that? I found that, that like so strange. Like he was going to this party and we were not invited. I found that to be a little, honestly, I, I was a little, it was weird. It's wrong. It's weird. No, but it things are so weird. nice now with everybody getting together. We've been having so much fun. And, yeah. You know, yes. we have you to thank, really. Yeah. Well, we're all awesome. happier now, I, I, I got to say. It does, it, does, it does feel good. Artie and Dana got to work this out. It sounds <laughs> to me like Dana's got her head screwed on straight. According to what you already told me, Dana, and this is good news, Uh-oh. Artie is going into therapy. Yes. He's calling hey, the guy who recommended it. And, uh, and I'm going to stick by him through it. So. For you. Yeah, well, we love you. Howard, what are you going to marry him. Beth? You know, Beth and, I, <laughs> yeah, Beth, and I had this, Beth and I have had this discussion. If Beth and I were married tomorrow, would it change our relationship with each other one bit? Uh, honey, now, you, maybe you should answer this question, but I, 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 I just know we're having a blast. I know we're having a ball. And um, I, I kind of feel, you know, I'm probably one of those guys who got shell-shocked by my first marriage. But I don't feel that Beth, unless I'm reading this wrong, honey, I don't feel that Beth <laughs> thinks we need to be married in order to somehow enhance our relationship. Am I wrong or right? You're correct. I had this conversation. I was in Pittsburgh this past couple of days. And I had this conversation with my mother last night, and she was getting so upset. But I said, I really don't need to be married. I, I'm so fulfilled. I'm so in love. I'm so happy. Why change a, the most beautiful, perfect thing in my world? I don't think it's lack of commitment on my part. We've been together six years, and I don't think it's a lack of commitment on Beth's part. And I, I just don't get how, you know, if it's some, if Beth said to me, if we were married, this would happen, and, and it would be so much better, and this and that, or, or if I felt that way, I, I, I think we'd do it in a second. It, we, we just. We just feel very committed to one another, and I know I'm in love. I mean, she is uh, the light of my life. And, and uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, when I was going through hell today, uh, you know, I mean, knowing Beth would be home tonight and, and just uh, sit there and talk with me and stuff, and, you know, it, it means the world to me. So I, I don't know. I mean, you, know what I, you know what I mean, Mr. X? Yeah, so for, for once, you and I agree on something. I feel the same way. So yeah, yeah, I know you and Robin just don't care about marriage, and you guys have a really, I mean, you guys have a great relationship. Mm-hmm. Howard, can we keep Beth here a little longer? Is that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I, I, I'm sorry I interrupted. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Howard. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Howard. Bye. Bye, everyone. All right, we're going to take a quick break. This is The Better Half, only on Howard 100 and Howard 101. I, I said you were hot. Did you I, I did not. No. Minutes Thank you. Running? You don't have any more spots. I heard all of it. I, 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 I don't know where that great, idiot had to call up to bring up that Jenny McCarthy crap. Whatever, God. I'm okay. That was so yeah. stupid. Did you call? Yes, that was me. I, oh, my God. I didn't no, know. that was you? That was me. I go, how come like, you get mad when Gary calls up like Jenny McCarthy? No, it's Gary. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Not at all. Mary, I have a caller in here. Get out. I have a caller. I have a caller. Who I've been waiting to put on. It says, Mary, did you know that was Gary who called me? <gasps> but I didn't, oh, they didn't even tell me. Oh, no, no, this is somebody Brandon, else, but that was. Oh, you really? Somebody else clued you in? Somebody else recognized your voice? Everybody else recognized your voice. Everybody else recognized my Everybody The this, entire this studio in there tried not to laugh as loud as we did. Oh, my God. How does she not know this isn't Gary? Oh, that's hysterical. Here we go. We've got more. We've got we have plenty of callers. Oh, I think we have... Uh, Howard's other better half on the phone. Ralph, is that you? Oh. Hey, now. Uh-oh. Hey, now. <laughs> um, Hello, bye. <laughs> Ralphie. Are we wrapping up the show? We're going to wrap up in a little bit, but ask your question. <laughs> okay, I got a couple questions. First of all, Dana, I think you're a saint. I, I think that you're – I love that you, uh, you're doing the right thing totally, and you shouldn't do anything till he's in therapy for a month or two because he's really got to – get himself centered. I mean, part of me loves it. The other part of me loves, you know, crazy out of control, hands full of Twinkies already, but I don't want to see the guy kill himself, you know? I have a couple questions for you all. What What is the thing that your your, your better half complains about the most? Like, you know, besides, like, the obvious thing, like the hours and being tired and things like that, but, like, you know, does Gary come home and go, Jesus, you know, Sal, it really just crosses the line all the time, and, you know, like, what, what, what do you, what do they come home and really bitch about? Ralph, I got to hang up on you because there's other callers, but we'll go with that call. What what gets... Howard complains <laughs> about Ralph all the time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good out. I like 
What a, <laughs> but it's a good question. I mean, yeah, Mary? Yeah, well, I mean, not if it's uh, Sal, but if Gary has an interaction, a bad interaction with somebody, um, you know, a fight with Scott the Engineer or something with Sal, then, yeah, he gets upset by, by it. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's sensitive that way. Mr. X, how about Robin? Uh, she doesn't really complain about a lot in terms of the show when she comes home. No, very rarely. Okay. Howard thinks he's fat. It was heartbreaking. He wanted a bag of frozen bananas this afternoon, and he'd walk to the refrigerator, and he'd walk back to his desk. And he'd walk, and he'd walk back, and i go, what are you doing? Because I'm trying to decide if I should have the extra bag of bananas. <laughs> thinks he's fat. Do you think he's fat? Oh, my God. He's perfect. He's insane is what he is for thinking he's fat. And a couple of quick rapid-fire questions for you individually. Allison, does it bother you that Fred is referred to as being from Mars on the oh, show? Definitely. Definitely. It I does hate bother that. you? Yes, Aww. it does bother me. I hate that. That's Jackie Martling can thank for that one. But, yeah, because, you know, he's quiet, and people perceive that as being strange and weird, and that totally bothers me. I don't like that at all because he's not. I mean, he's, he's such a great guy. You know, the one thing about Fred, if anyone were to ask me, is there anything that people don't know? He has no agenda. Honestly, is like no hidden agenda about the man, and I'm constantly reminded of that over and over again. That he has like no agenda. He's just, he is what he is. And if so, there's if there's one thing you had to change about Fred, what would it be? Just one thing. Just, no. <laughs> <laughs> you had to pick one. No, I mean he's you know he's too humble. He's like he's just too you know he's so creative and he's just. He's really smart, and he just needs to, um, you know, he doesn't need. I mean, that's, like, silly, but he just, um, if I had to change anything, well, you know, that's a loaded question. <laughs> no, it's... No, that's a loaded question, but, um, no, he just, he he needs to just own who he is, you know, because he's such a smart guy, and he's creative, and, and he just needs to have a little, maybe more of an ego. Okay. Beth, question for you. Is Howard hmm. thinking about the show... 24 7 or is he able to break away and spend time with you that has nothing to do with the show he's thinking of the show 24 7 mm -hmm. and does that bother you no. is that something you'd want to no. change it's him it's him it's he, believe me he gives me my time and he's so generous with his time with me but in his head there's always that what's going to happen next on the show or thinking about the show or what ha what played out on that day so he's non-stop work Actually, I want to ask that question to everybody else here. Um, is it 24-7 Howard, or is, are, are they able, is your better half able to forget about the show and concentrate on you? Everybody's laughing. Yeah. I, well, Tony looks like he's going to throw up right now. <laughs> he's holding his mouth. <laughs> Do you want some more Chambouille? <laughs> I'm trying to avoid breathing into the microphone. No, Robin uh, turns it off rather readily. Wow. I mean, she will listen to it now that you're That's on great. Sirius. She listens to the little portable radio around the house, but... We get into other things when she gets home, and she doesn't uh, focus on it all the time. Mary, how about Gary? Well, I have friends that say, oh, you're so lucky your husband's home for dinner every night, but he's, <laughs> yeah. he's in front of the computer or he's on the phone. Totally. Constantly. Constantly. So with you on that one. Dana? Um, same thing with Artie. I think um, he, too, is very creative, and if he's not thinking about the show, then he's thinking about... Beer League, which is coming out soon, his mm. movie. <laughs> plug, plug. Uh, sorry. Um, and no, and if it's not that, then it's his stand-up material. And I think that that's where he derives a lot of his pleasure. And I think, um, you know, it should, he should try to get some pleasure from pottery class. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Artie-lang.com with an E. It's exactly. Artie-lang.com. Beerleague.com. Oh. I love it. You're, you're on the ropes yet. You're throwing the plugs in left and right. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I don't know how that happened. It just did. I, I don't know. <laughs> she's pretty <programmed. laughs> Sorry, exactly. I She's I don't have a hidden Future agenda. Community I don't have a hidden there agenda, by the way. I know. No, I know you don't. I know you. Don't. I know you don't. Anthony, you're but on the better the half. Truth. I know. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, Anthony? Good. Uh, um, I want to ask Gary's wife. Um, how do you feel about the "I Want You Back" tape? The what? The uh, Gary "I Want You Back" tape. Oh, oh, the oh you know what? <laughs> I have never heard it. I want to be your boyfriend. I want you to be my girlfriend. I'd dump everybody I was going out with in a second if you said you'd go back with me. And it would be just me and you. So if, if, I want to make that clear. If it hadn't been clear, I'm making it clear now. 
Right. I want you back, Tape. What is that? It's great, it's Mary. It's the old girlfriend tape. Oh, I, oh, I remember that. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. You've <laughs> never that. heard that tape? No, I've, 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 I've actually heard it, yeah. <laughs> When I hear little tidbits of it, it makes the hair on my neck rock. It's so <laughs> funny, though, Mary. Oh, you you love love the creeps. Was that too... Yeah. It's funny. It's funny. Okay. Last call of the evening. Louie in New York. You Make are it a on good the better one. half. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how you doing, guys? Great show. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Louie. My, my question's for Allison. Um, I used oh. to... Uh, I used to love when Allison would call in and uh, either defend Fred or argue about something that had happened uh, off the air. And it always seemed that Howard and the other guys would be able to easily get under her skin. And I thought that made for great radio. Uh, and Allison, have you just calmed down a bit more or, is, or, or why aren't you uh, calling in anymore? Because they're not attacking me anymore. <laughs> you know, they're not, I guess, you know, are you referring to stuff from, like, from Tony and Tina's, and is that what you're referring to? I think he was referring to stuff that had happened in the in the past. Yeah. Like, well, you know, I guess it's just, you know, it hasn't been, you know, in the forefront. So, um, you know, I guess if it made for great radio, then that's that's a lot of fun. But the truth was, it did get under my skin. So I guess that was, you know, the honest answer to that. Um, did I answer your question? Oh, I th he's gone, so I he's guess gone? you did. Okay. And uh, we've got to wrap up the better half. I want to thank everybody. Mr. X, Mary Delabate, Beth O. Thank you, John. My pleasure. Dana, Allison Norris. Thank, thank you. you. Hope you all enjoy. Howard, thanks fun. for calling in. Honey, I'm coming fun. home right now. <laughs> Final words across the room. Mr. X. I don't know why Robin says this is so difficult. <laughs> Piece of cake. You're ready for more? Tomorrow, tomorrow, right. yeah. Mary, anything you want to say in closing? No, it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much, John. Beth. I love Howard. <laughs> Dana. I love Artie. <laughs> this Allison? was a lot of fun. Thank I love you. Fred. <laughs> John, who do you love? <laughs> yeah. I love my job. <laughs> and, of course, Yay! I love my... And, of course, I... Yes, I love my wife and Tell I love us my about team. your wife. Oh, yeah. that'll be on the next okay. Better Half. Okay. She'll be hosting. I'm anyway, Christine. thank you for listening to the Better Half only on Howard 100 and Howard 101. What do you think Howard's reaction is going to be to the show? I don't know. You want to call me tomorrow and I'll let you know. I don't know. We'll see. Well, he called in, so maybe I feel maybe he thought things were going a little slow and he wanted to up it a little bit. Could be wrong. All right, Mr. X, tell me how you think uh, to make the better half win. I thought it was fun and hopefully it was entertaining for people calling in and listening. Now, you didn't really, you weren't that vocal today. So well, when you were four women, you're the only guy, how much did you get to say? I'm surprised I got to talk as much as I did. Plus, I know Robin's listening and you know, I'll probably have, I look like Kunta Kinte tomorrow after the whipping I get, so uh, I had to be careful. All right, Allison, how do you think tonight's better half win? I think it went great, actually. I think um, it, it should go more. We should do more. What was your favorite part? Um, I love listening to Dana. I thought Dana was actually very real. And um, I just love, you know, I love when Howard called in and I love just getting real, getting really real. And I was sorry that it was over so soon. Did you hear it all? Yeah. Um, I have to see. I'm trying to think what part. There was one part you could have been nice really good. As, I always could be nice. As a, gen as a general rule, I thought it went really well. I had a lot of fun. I, um, I hope I got my point across. It's hard. Uh, it's been four years for Artie and I, and in the last week, a lot has been revealed. But I think it went well. A lot of fun. And I look forward to doing it again. I think the callers were really tame. I think John was tame. I feel we were really willing and, and ready to go anywhere. And we just didn't go to those deep, dark places, and I was ready. Do you think uh, John was out with not asking Dana the direct question? I tried to ask ten times. I wanted to get it going. That's been the topic all week from what I hear, and I feel like that's what callers and, and audience wanted to hear. What's going on with Dana and Artie? And we kind of got the surface of it, but, man, I really wanted to get in there. What was the problem? What happened? What's your sex life? I really wanted to know. Next time. Just finished up the better half with uh, all the significant others, and... Uh... Learned a lot. I mean, definitely interesting seeing how they were on, on Mike. Howard called in, which is always great. Learned a lot about Dana, a lot about Mr. X, uh, some stuff about Mary, who I knew a little bit before. And uh, Allison, I thought, was incredible. And Beth was great. And uh, it was really fun talking to them. A little bit intimidating. I didn't know them beforehand, but now I feel comfortable and hopefully we'll get to do it again. Have a good one.
thành xét tinh của thằng Phong luôn Không hiểu Ngắm nhìn biển rộng bao la, một màu xanh biếc cho ta say lòng. Lắng nghe sóng vỗ di dâm, như lời du thua ta nằm trong nỗi. Ngắm nhìn mây lượn lờ trôi, bồng bềnh là lướt như thời đôi mươi. Nắng vàng như miệng ai cười. Cho hoa đùa đó Cho người thêm xuân Ngắm màu xanh thẫm nuôi ngàn Chúng chúng And as a guy on parole He's not allowed to have bullet casings in his house And I guess <laughs> the cops somehow ended up at his house and found bullet ca- Why were the cops at your house anyway? First of all, I've never been on parole Oh, what are you on? I was on probation. Probation, okay. You know, there you I go. had a five-year run on probation. So after a year, uh, they, see, every month, the probation department would come to the ranch, and they'd just do a, a probation check, make sure your life is on track and everything is right, and make sure you're not doing whatever it is you're not supposed to do. And honestly, I hadn't left my home in a year. I was home and just doing my thing. Really. That's what's great about this country, that we have the resources to you check up. You sit at home, though. Yeah, yeah. But, and, like, and also to check up on people and make sure they're behaving. Yeah, well, L.A. is it's like much was much safer with me off the street and in jail because you know, <laughs> right. you know it was much safer because uh, we noticed the drop place. in crime. But on the but seriously, Howard. So what happened? You got out of jail. You well, come home and the ex-wife, the the, the well, wife. Let me back up a little bit. First, with these this this probation violation that they that landed me back in there was ridiculous because in 2003 when I got arrested for the insurance deal, they had you know 100 ATF agents that rolled my house at six o'clock in the morning. It was like something you see, you know, on television. You don't really think it's ever gonna happen to you. And when it did, they took a shotgun. It was an old family shotgun. You know, I think my mom used it to shoot snakes in Florida. And uh, it had a box of shotgun shells that my son Paulie bought in like 2001. Now I got arrested in 2003. So they took the gun and really, I honestly thought that they took the shells. Why wouldn't they? These were the same shells a year, let me see, two, two years later, that when they did a probation search in my house, uh, they found him, and basically that's what put me in jail. And we even proved that I had paperwork that showed when I bought them in 2000, when Paulie bought them in 2001, where they were purchased, the shell casings, we tracked the, the, the VIN numbers on it, the ID numbers You were a it. victim of circumstance. Well, actually, yeah, and I'm not bitching like, oh, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I'm sorry. You, you went and you did your time. I, I had to take the year, so I went and I did it. It was hard, man. It was a bitch because, you know, like when you get in Weren't trouble with something you really when... didn't do, and it's like, God damn it, you know. So I, I didn't do to... anything that bad. But wasn't I had to he do sick, it. too, when he went in? Weren't you sick? Yeah, I was real sick. I'm still sick, man. I'm down right now 50 pounds. Sick so. from what? What's the matter? Uh, Audie's still with the show? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know, I wanted to say that I, I, a couple of months ago I was in L.A. I did the Jimmy Kimmel show, and afterwards I hung out with your son. I, and he's a great guy. I actually had a blast with his yeah. kid. Yeah, um, Paulie, we, Paulie's a good, he's really a good, good, he's a good son. How did that kid turn out normal? I don't know. He just, he's the anti-Joey. You know what he's, after, he's after, Does he look like Joey? A little bit, you could tell, yeah. I mean, and... And he's normal? Yeah, you know after, what? After the mom gets he, shot in the fucking head? Yeah, I, I gotta yeah. say, he seems normal, and he's wow. a really, he's a really good kid. He's, like, got a great energy about yeah. him, and... What's he, he do? He just got, I have, we had a lot of fun together. Thank I, you, Artie. I really appreciate that. And my, both my children are really, wow. really good Wow, good, good for you, Joey. Well, good for you. Well, saying good for you, Joey? Joey was away most uh, of the time. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, All right, good, good for your ex-wife. They must have done something right. I mean, he's a good kid, you could tell, you know. Thank you, Audie. Now I'm now I like you again. No, I'm, I'm being serious. It's the Actually, truth. Actually, he, he looks more like you, Audie. So I don't know. Yeah, you know? We, a lot of people asked if we were brothers. Is we he were a heavy set kid? Well, not heavy set, but no. he's got the Belushi look to him. Yeah, I see. Well, we all of us do. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Remember, Joey, Audie, you're the young me. Okay? Yeah, Joey, right. let me understand something. <laughs> so you get out of jail. This hot wife was she cheating on you when you were in jail? You know something? No, I don't. You know, I don't think so. I, I really, yeah, I, I really do love her a lot. Did she, she visit good. regularly? Um, hey, you know something? 
Um, is you know what I forgot to ask you guys? What? Is there anybody else on the line? You're supposed to get David on the line. Where's David? Oh, is that your buddy, your producer? David, one is of them. He should to... be on the line. Oh, oh okay. I see he is here. Again. Oh, that's right. We can't we can't interview Robert. Joey without David. Right. David hey, David. You there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, yeah. great, man. Oh. Good. But did she visit you regularly while you were in prison? Who? Your wife. Which one? The, the new one. The first one. I mean, Absolutely. One. Every visiting day, Ivanka came down <clears throat> to the jail, and she waited on that line outside with all the all the people that wait out there. To she's going to have no people. problem meeting a new man, that's for sure. Know, that's a good-looking woman. She's very beautiful. Any <laughs> conjugal visits? She's hanging out at the jail still. Yeah, it's it's any conjugal visits, yeah. uh, Robin? Yeah, any conjugal. No, it was all uh, no contact visits. Wow! It was we, all through the glass and on the phone. You were in prison. You weren't in jail, right? I was in jail, L.A. What? County, Men's oh, Central. L. Great spot, right? That's, that's exactly where I was. Great to you, Joey. <laughs> no, I was well, well taken care of with my medical and all that. Did yeah, you I have a? Gonna, did you have a roommate? Um, not a roommate, but a cellmate. We were in single man cells in a secured area called 1700 and 1750. That was a cell block, and we were on lockdown, 24 7 lockdown. We only got out to wow. take a shower or. Uh, Did you have any meet. fights? Oh, no, no, no. They go on, but yeah. no, not me. I was segregated. Yeah. We're doing a show, Howard, called Celebrity LA Lockup. So the Sheriff's Department was very, very helpful in doing interviews with Entertainment Tonight and Insider with Joey and making his stay as safe and um, quick as possible. So, Joey, tell me the big answer here. So Amy Fisher's getting a divorce, and uh, you're obviously getting a divorce. And then the speculation is that you two are getting back together as a couple, which would be the most phenomenal friggin' thing ever. Yeah. What you got to do it. You got to do it. And, you you, know and you've said in the paper you've had contact with her. What kind of contact? On, well, on the phone. Oh yeah, you called her? Absolutely. Well, we talk. Absolutely. When yeah. did you talk? You, you know talk what? I, I got it. I have to tell you, and and it's like, you know, like life has to go on, and like I've been trapped in this whole well, not trapped, but just like <clears throat> in this situation since Mary Jo got shot, where I was just like pounded by Mary Jo for years, and it was like when Mayor found out. When, when we all met a year ago that, you know, Amy did what she did and there was drugs involved and Amy didn't remember doing it and, like, Mary Jo and, and Amy made up and it was like, it was like, okay for them. I'm still carrying the anger and all this other crazy, horrible yeah, stuff. Yeah, you've I'm said like, horrible things about Amy. Yeah, I did for all these years and I decided, you know, for me to be able to, here we go, here's a little Dr. Phil for you, but for me to go on and get on with my life and be able to, like, recover from everything physically, emotionally, financially... <laughs> I need to put that down. I need to put the anger down. Because it does, no matter how strong you are, no matter who you are, the shit eats you up, man. It eats you up from the inside out. And I'm like, fuck this, man. Why? You know, Mary Jo didn't even care at one point that, oh, I don't care. She says she doesn't remember shooting me. You know, I care. So, so what do you? So, so what happened? You I started care. calling. So I have to let it go to be able to make up with my life and go on with my life. So I'm gonna. I have a good relationship with Amy. And what do you mean? How often do you speak? I spoke to her twice this week. Wow. And, wow. And you spoke to her on the phone. Did she talk to you about the fact that her husband and her were breaking up? Yeah, I know all about that. And, you know, I didn't file for divorce. My wife did. And I understand that her husband filed also. But because did Amy. you two were talking? Maybe. <laughs> did Amy say to you that she still has feelings for you? Um, you know something? We talked a couple of times. And uh, I'll be in New York next week. And I'm going to definitely go to dinner and just. You know, I owe her. I owe I owe her. I owe her an apology from the way I acted the last time that I saw her, and I'm not defending myself to the point. Well, I was sick or any reasons. Why Wait I a didn't second. You're attracted her. to her still, aren't you? You want her. You know what, Howard? It's Honestly, just me, listen. It's just me and you oh on the phone now, right? Right. <laughs> go ahead. You know what? I'll be in town next week, and I'm gonna. <clears throat> hopefully, we'll go to dinner and. Uh, I mean, you guys had good stuff. sex. You had a good time together. So it's not like you're totally repulsed by. I mean, aside from the uh, fact that she she pulled the shooting incident. Yeah, no, I'm not totally repulsed by her or right. anything that she did. You know, she got, did you read today in the paper? Here. She just got big giant tit implants. Uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, um, well, David. Uh, you know, all I wanted to say is these two have an opportunity where they can rekindle their relationship after 15 years. Wow, that would be the that biggest the story crazy. ever. It was a uh, Romeo and Juliet type of love affair with the gunshot, you know, that everybody heard. But Amy's, Amy's shooting Mary Jo, going to jail, Joey going to jail. Can you imagine the ending of the story is Joey and uh, Amy get back together? Yeah, well, they got to do the, the movies over the again. Tragic. Hey, yeah, Joey, is there a temptation on your part? Is there a temptation on your part to get together with Amy Fisher? 
just so that you ha- you get back in the news and there's a whole big opportunity here. You know, really, it has nothing to do with in the news. I could go outside, piss, piss along the curb, and it's going to make news. I mean, she does often, is, by the way. Which I try not to do because in L.A., I think you get like a year for that, so I don't want to do that. But <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing Amy when I get back. Nobody's. You think you'll that, fuck her? Um, Honestly, you want to, don't you? Nobody's the same. You know, everybody changes over the time as time goes by, and you know, she's not the same person she was, you know, ten years ago, five years ago. They describe, nor is any of us. But they describe in the newspaper that her body is exceptional. She has a Playboy Playboy. In fact, they're saying she might even become a Playboy Playboy. Playboy. That's right. Are you for sure? Yeah, we are. Oh my God. Will you be posing with her, David? Yeah, I will actually be posing nude. (laughs) Because you say we are doing Playboy. (laughs) Well, you know. Are you managing her as well? Yeah. Yes. Amy's going to be in Playboy. And I'll be no, doing I'm it with her. David, has this been orchestrated by you to get the more interest in these two? You know, I, you couldn't orchestrate this, this story. Either either these two, these two, timing is right. They're free finally. There's some opportunities. I think things have to be life-changing. Have you told Joey he better close the deal with Amy in order to make this thing happen? I don't have to. I mean, these two have chemistry together. What you're going to see over the next couple of weeks is kind of like a Truman show, and we're going to um, we're going to chronicle some of it. Oh, it's a TV and show. And I think it'll be fun. Wow. It's a TV wow. show. Wow. Listen to Robin. Oh. Oh, he's entering on everybody. Stop it. Wherever it goes, it goes. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be all right. She's a professional yenta, you know. <laughs> she gets paid to be she's a, a yenta. Cute yenta. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Joey Boots wants to say hi to Joey Buttafuoco. Go who, ahead. Who does? Joey yeah. Boots. Joey Boots from Mass Pico, Long Island, your hometown, Joey Buttafuoco. Hey, Joey. I want to tell you right now, you're the most disgusting, vile human being. I wish death on you. I hope you fucking die. Uh, you know what? To fucking do this, for, to try to stay famous, which is all... Gorilla, that's your Joey. agenda. Your like agenda... Gorilla. Your agenda is to stay famous, man. So you're going to take the mother... The, you're going to go out who with the girl. Guy? You're going to go out... Hey, hey, who is no, no, no. You're, you're trying to hook up... Howard, you're trying to hook this asshole. Just answer. You're it's Joey Boots, for Christ's sake. You're, you're trying to hook up uh, with the woman right, that right. shot right. the mother of your children. What about that, Joey? I'll, he's worked up, but but what about that, Joey? How can you go out? Who was that guy? Joey Boots, for Christ's sake. He's who the from, fuck is he? Did Joey do. Boots you don't know? I don't know who he's he is. He's in the whack pack. <laughs> I oh, I oh, was that guy. Uh, uh, listen. Did he ever go, did, get through the sixth grade? Joey has a good point. What he's saying, he how can you start having sex? Again with the man, the woman who shot the mother of your children. You know, I'm going to go have dinner. Yeah, I mean, maybe the, Joey Boots has sex on the table. Maybe it's a first time, the first time out of the game. I mean, your son is going to freak out, and so is your daughter that you're having sex with uh, Amy Fisher. Well, you know what, man? We thought some pasta, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea, no, man. No, seriously, Joey. You come on. You got to think this through. This is a major thing. You think? That's yeah, true. of course he is right, it is, Joey. Well, you know something. He is right. I'm heading back to New York in a little bit. <clears throat> I've said my life's going in a different direction, whatever it is, it is. You know, you're going to see these guys on the cover of People magazine. We're going to do uh, Letterman. We're going to do Letterman. Well, how do the children feel about this? You know, so honestly, up with... if, if, if Mary Jo and Amy can sit down and, and, ha- and not even hash it out, but talk out what they needed to talk out, and Mary Jo can forgive her. You know, what? What's your tactic? What happened to Hello? Joey? Hello? Joey. He's gone. No. David, you there? else you know everybody oh. else is making up and going on with their lives you know i'm entitled to do the same thing joey what's you know? the plan to what you, you want you want to go to bed with her i Hello. lost everybody yeah uh, you there oh our phones went dead yeah completely dead on? you should see what's hey, going ma'am. on hey joey you there I, I, everybody got this kid. Hello. hey anybody nobody here? can hear anybody wow the they'll whole probably f- call back. maybe they'll call back let's listen in let's hear if anything else happens like yeah. we get some inside information we got disconnected Hello? Hey, guys, the phone system just died. Yeah, we know. The whole thing just crashed. We're, we're checking on it. That would have been great if he just said something like, uh, Amy, you can keep blowing me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think? I'll go around the room. All right, first, Fred. Is this just a huge publicity stunt orchestrated by David Creep? Yeah, David Creep is definitely behind the whole thing. <laughs> and right. I really feel badly for uh, Mary Jo. I mean, she's taking more shots on this. There's a phone being dialed up. I feel bad for her and for her kids. Joey, I think, is, like, totally lost. 
Uh, Robin, is this a publicity stunt? What's going yes, on here? Yes, yes. There's nothing going on. They're just doing this to get back in the press and uh, to create another TV show. Artie, what do you say? It has to be. I agree with Robin. There's, I mean, as low as a human being can go. <laughs> I, I, I would hope he at least called Mary Jo and said, listen, this is going to be so embarrassing. The innuendos, the press, the tabloids are going to say we're together again and she shot you. The Again, like Joey Boots made such a great point. The mother of his kids right. yeah. was shot by this woman. Absolutely. And I, I hope he at least said to Mary Jo, look, it's going to mean quick money. Do you mind if we do this and I give I you a cut he, or something? Right. What do you think the reality is? Do you think that Amy Fisher will start banging Joey again? Her no, husband, her I husband don't. was a Joey but a Fuco lookalike. I don't think so. I, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I really don't. What, why wouldn't well, you think Amy Fisher would do the that? The more interesting question is: Would Joey, if given the opportunity? Fuck her. Yes. But that's my point. Why would Artie not think that Amy would be open to it? Because I just think the whole thing is a contrived stunt. I really I understand do. that, but why would you say uh, Amy Fisher's the one who won't be Yeah, she's crazy. Into it? Well, she's I don't know. Nuts. Well, she she's older now. We're all, as Joey said, we're we're not the same people. Oh, we can were you five grow out ago. of nuttiness? <laughs> yeah, can you grow out yeah. shooting somebody in the head? I'm hoping you can. Artie <laughs> thinks Amy might be normal. Now, well, listen. <laughs> she grew into I'd normal. fuck her. I'll Fucker, I look enough like Joey. I'll, I'll fuck, fuck her, her too. I'll fuck her I'll right fuck now. That fucker. But While we're I, I don't know. I, but he, I, I think Mary Jo, having met her a couple of times, I think she's got enough class in her to go. I don't care how it's much still money. Gotta hurt. Yeah, what I don't are care. You talking about Mary Jo is a, she's a nice person. But what does Mary Jo got to do with this story? I'm saying if Joey did go to her and say, look, I I'm sorry about what I'm about to do, but it's going to make me quick money. Do you mind this? Will it be that offensive? Even if I hope and he would have Joey's said not going to sleep with a spreading Amy Fisher. I, I, I would hope he wouldn't for the sake of his oh, kid. You're oh, you're crazy. Please. I don't mean, I well, listen, I'm telling you what I think. <laughs> uh, Joey will fuck anything. Absolutely. Well, he likes that. He'll, uh, be Amy fucking, he'll be fucking his kids. This will be fucking because they're going to be screwed up. And his, his kid is a they're nice gonna kid. They're going to be screwed up. If they <laughs> survived all this, yeah, they could survive they, he, that. I don't think anything he can do will hurt them. I met his son. His son's a real nice kid. He's got, he doesn't seem to have any issues. And Did you talk to him about the whole situation? No, that, would, that was awkward. I wouldn't have done that. But well, I've actually hung out with Mary Jo a couple of times, too, and I think she's the type of person that would have said, I don't care how much money you're getting. I don't want this to happen. So I think he's already pissed her off. Let me just say belief. something. I'm trying not to blow my stack because we have a phone system that regularly just has to be rebooted. I don't yeah. understand that. I, I don't get it. So I'm trying to maintain my cool when we're in the middle of an interview, but uh, that will need to be looked into. Joe, are you there? Yeah, I am. All right, hold on a second here. I'm going to get this all back again. I got to get the, your 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 friend there, David Kreef, on the phone. Too. Oh, okay. You two are like two peas in a pod. Yeah, maybe they're having a relationship. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's the real story. Really? David, you there? Robin. All right, it's Joey. All about you, Joey. Um, the question was asked while we got disconnected. Are you? Let's say the scenario arrives. You're out dinner with J uh, Amy Fisher, having dinner. She looks great. She's got the big titty implants. Mm -hmm. You know, she's wearing a short skirt. You like what you're hearing. You like what you're she seeing. She smells good. You're having a few drinks. <laughs> she says, Joey, you know, I always loved yeah. you, and I still love you, and I want to fuck you. For all time's sake. I want to have sex with you. I want to take you back to my house. Would you have sex with Amy Fisher if, if that kind of scenario evolved? And Lou did not have his guns there. There you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah, totally. You would. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, Artie, do you see what we're saying? He's so, saying it. Artie said you wouldn't. So who won? No, no, listen. He's saying it because that's the only way anyone's interested in all this bullshit. Oh, stop no, it. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's, it's, it's to make no, money. It's Can I ask you money. something, Joey? No, Joey, man to man? Sure. Is she, the, is she the best Artie, pussy? You crazy? Is she the best pussy you ever had? Um... Uh, gee, uh, you know something? It, it's no, but you know, it's it's <laughs> that's a tough question. It really is. You've had a lot of uh, a lot of experiences. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's especially it's lately. But you know something? Uh, right. Especially last night. What yeah. happened last night? <laughs> what happened <laughs> last night? No, 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 no. We're not going oh. there this morning. Too early. Uh, I'm sorry, Howard. What was your question? The question is: Is from? she the best pussy you ever had? You know what? Amy's a lot of fun. Well, how so? She's just a. Uh, she was always just a very nice until all the shit broke. But then, right. then we all know why and how that happened. Would and, she be uh, open to anal with you? You know something? Definitely. I don't know. You never did that with her. No. I'm talking about in the old days when things were good, when you had your affair with her. No. 
But were she things would... ever good? I mean, the old days, things were pretty crazy. Well, no, there was a time when he had good sex with her. Yeah, well, for a long time, but... You know, we're but Joey, what about, about the fact that she accused you of being her pimp and and that uh, you know and th- that was all heavy uh, stuff? That, you know something? Yeah, there was a lot of stuff being thrown out there in the in the early days. You know, after the whole shooting incident, and you know, orchestrated, of course, by the attorneys. But know, wait a second! Doesn't that scare you? Say. Even my attorneys were telling me what to say. I was never involved in anything so like this. Joey before, should so. have a pimp based on his. Uh, you know, there was so many things said. Honestly, I mean everything from the the pimp to her her life on and drug with drugs and, and her whole way of life and that I gave her the gun and I was responsible. So I'm saying, her, aren't you afraid? Her. No, because you know why? Honestly, and we spoke about this and then it blew up into a rage or what have you. But you know, she actually, you know told me she never remembered shooting Mary Jo. Like, she doesn't remember a lot of <laughs> All right, so you don't you know? think she's crazy? I don't think she's crazy. Wow. I really don't, honestly, and that's coming from my heart. I, I really don't. Do you have nicknames for each other when you were on good terms? Did you have uh, lover no. names? No. Never. No. But honestly, I, like, today, you look, you know, I, don't, I know, honestly, to answer your question, I don't believe that she's crazy at all. Wow. You have know, your kids she... weighed in on this, Joe? Do you think your kids are going to be pissed if you start a relationship with her? Probably. Yeah. You don't care about that? No, I do care about that, Artie. Well, how are you going to deal with that? I'll well, with, he won't see his kids. I'll, I'll deal with it when it comes yeah, to Artie. Artie's so serious. Yeah. Uh, no, this this creep you've latched on to, David Creep, whatever his name is, <laughs> is, is is trying to promote the fact hey, Artie, that he's trying to promote you're, the fact that you're going to fuck you, the you woman who shot your kid's mother. You're on Jimmy Kimmel, and you're not on the Tonight Show. Huh? I'm out on the Tonight Show because Jay Leno's a yeah, fucking listen, asshole. Right. <laughs> right. He's no not a letterman. No matter what hey, you man. say, Artie, you're, I love you, man. You're not funny, Artie. What? You're not even funny. Dude, you're, you're a creep doctor. who's trying to latch on to Joey to try to get him, to try to promote, Howard to try to get him. Right of your life. And Howard Stern, if without Howard Stern, you're nobody. Nobody gives a shit about you. Guess what, dude? I had a career before I was uh, here, and I'll have a career in show a, business doing a lot of well, well, well so after you're, you're fucking you're dead from creepiness. List, you're not on my list. <laughs> We got cut off again. David, is that hung up. Yeah, I didn't hang up. I didn't hang up. Oh, How did you hang up for Artie? No, dude, you're you're just a, a, a weaselly I mean, parasite say, creep you know, what a, who, what who wants to try to are, who wants to try to get this guy to to make money off well, promoting he might fuck good this good chick you, who mur- almost fun? murdered the mother of his kids. Good for you. You're a creep. Well, you're a creep. You? You're the worst. I, I am not. I'm no, I'm no well, creep. Wait a second. How did we get into this? I don't know. I was talking to I'm Joey. A, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get to the bottom. It just makes it just, it just makes me sick anything. when this guy's like. I go like, why would you love. fuck Joey? This guy's like, Ugh, she's hot. The guy has no concept of love, caring, romance. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> his biggest claim to fame is to be with Howard Stern for the rest of his. What's life. your claim to fame, Jimmy douchebag? Why don't you fucking check? What's me wrong out? with being with Howard Stern? Yeah, yeah. What's wrong with being with Howard Stern? Is that a problem? But you know, if you were funny, it would be better. Well, Howard, why am I on the show? Because you're funny. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, today, Sir, what's your claim to fame? Bro. All right. Let's get. Let's get. Well, let's find out though. One question I have. Yeah, I mean, don't... aside from your feelings about David Creef. Right. Um, uh, I met Joey's kids, and I feel bad for them. Yeah, that's his problem. He met a kid, and that's the end of it. Oh, he met well, a met, kid. He met Joey's kids. Yeah, I kid. met a kid. Right. Hey, can I tell you something? A guy, a, a kid who you don't give a fuck about, you don't right? Give crap about this story. What? You really don't. And you're just you're just talking out of your mouth. It means nothing. You don't know any facts. What what really. what don't I know about it, Dave? Know about what kid. don't I know about you it? Don't what, know what? About the, the probation violation. You don't know why he went to jail. You don't understand why he's out of jail. You don't understand. What, what does that have to do with anything? What does no. that have to do with anything I'm you saying? Just talk like as if you know this stuff. You don't, you've done no research. You don't know anything. What you're, don't I know yeah, about the yeah, Butterfuco saga like that you know? Howard Stern. That's what you know. What? Just be funny, man. That's what you get paid for. I'm not... No, I, no, I get paid to talk on the radio. And right now, there's a lot of people laughing at the fact that I'm pointing out that you're a fucking creep. Well, I think everyone already listens to you every day and knows that about you. I only show up once in a while. you're, here you're a parasite day. leech. Yeah. Well, you guys obviously... Uh, uh, you have wow. some previous history yeah. maybe that we don't know I about. never met David Creep. I mean, David... Let me tell you, I'm in the comedy business. I'm working on huge <laughs> film about it. I, nobody knows who the fuck you are. Bro. Yeah, oh, no, David you, actually does have a... You evidently do. He does do some film work. What I are you doing? That. What are you working on? What are you working on, on David? Right now I'm doing a, a wonderful project with Susan Lucci. It's a Sopranos... <laughs> Sounds episode, funny. Where she's the lead. She's She is the Sopranos lead. It's called... Mafia Wise, the Antoinette Giancana story. It's a sequel to Mafia 
why, uh, mafia princess that was on 15 years ago. That sounds hilarious. I've been everyone's been waiting for a sequel to that one. Well, once again, uh, I, David, tell him that's about as, so that's as anticipated as Jaws Two was. David, tell him about your previous work. Yeah. David. Hello. Hello. Are we gone again? Where's David? Joe, are you there? Again with what? the phones. Oh. Motherfuckers. <laughs> Hello? Cocksucker. <laughs> the, Howard, they're still there. Jo Will says Joey's still there. You didn't put him on hold, did you? No, I didn't did, touch you a didn't thing. You didn't touch anything? Joe, are you there? We, oh, we had to call Joey to back because his phone got disconnected. Well, then where's David? Uh, what? Where's David? David, you there? the hell is going on today? He and Artie were bonding. You guys were really going at it. <laughs> along well. I don't know. Something, Artie's something, on the right track, by the way. I can give you a fucking list of who he's booked his guests on the show. But wait a second. Wait a second. That's... I'm trying to find out if Joey Buttafuoco is really hooking up with Amy Fisher. Don't I, we want to know that? I say yes. Well, he just, How are we going to find yes? that out, though? I think what Artie is pointing out is we can't find that out. This is uh, crazy if he gets back with it, I think if, if he does it, they'll both tell us. If it's just for the TV show, it's not real. I don't know what's going on. All hell's breaking loose. I mean, are they going to film I like, them? I like hearing Artie yelling. People. Yeah, Joe but... will be on it two seconds. Right. Are they going to film them having sex, though? What, what are of we course, going? Where are we Dave, going here? I don't know sure. anything about love. David will film that. <laughs> Joey, what's going on today? Oh, I'm back on. Okay, cool, man. Every, this phone keeps getting fucked up on you guys. What's up with I that? I think at this time it was you. No, it was all your... I'm going to hang up, right? Come on. Hey, you know, Artie, I, no matter what, I think you're hilarious, and I we always had fun, and, and so... That's Joe, this ain't about, about you. It's about the kid that I met that's your kid who's a nice kid who I yeah. think you're going to hurt by this. Yeah, well, Paul, he's, he's not a kid. He's 27. You know, he makes his own choices and decisions. Hello? Life, you know? <laughs> I'm going to... What is going on? And David's on there. Wait. David, you there? Yeah. Hey, what, what, we keep losing Joey. I th did your phone disconnect? Uh, my phone has get disconnected three times. So it's got to be us then. Yeah, I mean, I'm just I, I haven't hung up because of Artie. Trust me, that. No, right. we know. Sir. Yeah, we don't know. We're having trouble, and I just lost Joey. Your again. layer of sleaze is way stronger than that. Uh, listen, pal, <laughs> maybe you and I will meet. There he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Oh, he can't no. even make his threat oh, or his offer of a duel. Fuck me with this phone system. I'm but you are. I'm fucked. I'm getting pissed now. That was Fuck, getting I, to be fun. I wanted his threat on tape. Yeah. Well, you got half a threat. <laughs> if anybody's worried about XM and Sirius merging, I think it's necessary because we can't afford a phone system. <laughs> Do you want to meet? We're... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's a... <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do to you, Art. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been uh, it might have been divine intervention for that guy, because if we ever met, he might have an Adirondack <laughs> coming out of his ass. He doesn't like you, I'll tell you that. Wow. I don't like him either. All right, here's Joey. Hey, Joey, this is on, crazy. Yeah, man, we keep getting cut off, but we, it's on your end. Cause, uh, yeah, it is. We must we, have a time it. limit or something. It's yeah. definitely our fault. You know what it point. is? We have one of those old pay phones. There you go. <laughs> if you don't put the quarters in, you lose everybody. The operator go. needs more money. See, God Artie's, doesn't want this promoted. Artie's really worked up. <laughs> Yeah, Audie's pissed off. I'm getting that feeling for the little bit that I can hear because I keep getting cut off. But Audie, it's like, you know, I, you hung with Mary Jo at the last show, right, out here in L.A.? I've met her a couple of times, sure. He is I right, Joey, though. If you bang Amy Fisher, yeah, it, it's going to fuck your kids up real bad. Right. Well, the thing is, it sounds like Artie's more concerned than Joey is. I don't think that's a good thing. Who gives a shit about me? You know, who gives a shit about me? But you no, should no, give no, a I shit. Mean, you should give a shit about yourself because your kids probably give a shit about you. you know, so you should give, a... should give two shits out about. She can rip my fucking chest out. She, at this point in, in, in time, she doesn't give a flying fuck. Who's about this? Who? Mary Jo. But what about your kids? Uh, you know something? I love my kids. My kids love me. It's like, you know, I don't know what else to you tell you You don't think so, this would hurt them? You know something? I'd probably have to sit down with them, talk to them. So you you didn't have do time that. to talk to them before you, you might want to do that before bang the Amy Fisher? Well, first you'll bang her, you then, you'll, then you'll talk to them. Um, like, Although I personally would love to see this. Well, of course we would. <laughs> course it would be good would. for us. I think a lot of people would. I mean, but seriously, I just want to when you talk to Amy on but, but, because... but wait a second. When you talk to Amy on the phone, like, is she talking romance? You know, we talk about a lot of things. Yeah, have you had phone sex? 
No, no. But what, like, does she ever say, you know, I did love sleeping with you, Joey. You were so great in bed. You're such well, a man. Well, you know what? She did tell me that she loved me very much back in the day and now. So it's like, you know, it's, I don't think I'm the resp- I don't think I'm responsible from, for her breakup with her husband or anything like that. I, right. I would hope not. But I think she's just looking for a change and moving in a different direction. Right, is it, she's is vulnerable it, right Is it merely now. a coincidence that hey, the Tom? two of you are getting divorced at the same time? You want to know something? I didn't know this was happening on my end. This has happened, like, when I got out. I see. You know? So oh. I, I didn't know what was going on. What is it, Freddie? My I end, actually I have a couple... Out to I have, this, you know? I have a couple questions for Joey. Joey, when you were uh, with Amy back in the day... Did you think it was going to get more serious? Did you hope it would get more serious, or was it just a, a fuck? Uh, that's what it was just. It was. Just, but how about now? Do you think would I don't, you would love I don't to know. see I'm it develop? See where, I'm going to see where it goes. I'm gonna Back in the day, it was he's saying she was just a fuck. Right. Well, uh, wait a minute. Hold he's it, not hold ruling it. out the fact that maybe it could develop into something. Otherwise, it would just. It's just Absolutely, he's not ruling it out. But right. to me, it seems odd because. You just found out you're getting a divorce. You're already ready to jump into something else with Amy Fisher. Hey, he's you know been in prison a year. Um, not, that I'm, not that I'm ready. To There's no other girls on the it. planet, right? <laughs> you know what? And he's used to her. <laughs> By the way, Joey, have you had sex since you got out of prison? Then? Yes, you have. Yeah. Oh, wait, David's back but on the phone. They can't talk about it. Artie, David's back on the phone. He was in the middle of threatening you. We, we're sorry about the phones. What was the I threat, David? Get you get right back. Dave, shoot him. Continue That's your threat, Dave. What was the threat? I don't know. You say, do you want to meet? Hey, oh, buddy, if uh, I you know, get, uh, maybe he yeah, wants me to be in the next Mafia Princess movie. Listen, maybe it's a, a business movie. Go crazy. I have heard that you have sparks of genius. I just haven't seen it today, that's all. All right, dude. You know what? I'm not. You know what? I said my piece. As a matter of fact, this little argument is probably going to get you more press because you're on Howard's show than I'm anything. Not, listen, I'm not here to get press for me. I'm excited about Amy and Joey and their... That is exciting. Oh, so that's what I'm you know, David Isn't that is, the, you? is very excited about Amy and Joey and Mary Jo. He's been excited that's about great. them for David, a David, why time. are you excited? Amy, Mary Jo, and Joey together, they said that would never happen. And the fact is, when you see Mary Jo on Thursday, whatever... She will tell you that I brought them together, and I'm looking for people to have love and be re- reunionized and have fun and have good families. I have children. I know what you're saying, Artie, but you can't, at some point or another, when your kids are grown up, I don't know if you have kids, but at some point or another, you have to live for yourself, and you right can't now. always live in the past. Okay, Dave, but let me ask you this. All, all, you know, all craziness aside. I mean, kids are my number one thing. I've been working for nine Well, listen to Artie's question. Okay, so suppose, suppose someone shot the the mother of your kids would well, your right kids now, uh, would yes. your ki- well suppose in the past it happened would your yeah. kids be upset if you were dating them publicly well listen i'm telling you right now people change and i don't know what was there 15 years ago i wasn't part of mary joe and joey's relationship i don't know what caused it i don't know if there were drugs and alcohol 85 percent of all crimes have something to do with drugs and alcohol. Right. We'll say that. Well, so, I know something about that, but right, you know. So my feeling is, and believe me, I know something about this too, and, and I work for the sheriff's office. They're wonderful people. Sheriff Lee Bach is the finest man I've ever met. He's going to be governor of the state of California. We work for charities called 999 for Kids. And do the you think you could is, hook up O.J. and Nicole's sister? No. Yeah. <laughs> what about well, that? O.J. was in the same cell that Joey was in, by the is way. Is that right? And we went in there, and the reality is what we're trying to do is show there is a lot of crap that can happen because of alcohol and drugs. I think if you stay away from alcohol and drugs, there's less than a 15% chance that there's going to be a Let's see what the fans have to say. I can't argue with that. Uh, Steven in Cleveland, you're on the air. Thanks for taking my call, Howard. You know, other than the 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 shooting, I mean, this was just nothing more than a fair, but man, Joe, you got to look at this thing like, you know, what what it's going to do to you, the, the, the relationship you have with your kids. I mean, this guy is nothing more than a parasite trying to make a buck. Artie, you hit it right on the, the head on the... You know, I well, mean, I think Artie's changing his mind because, Artie, I think you realize if people are in love... Anything can happen. You can have cancer. You can be an alcoholic. You can be a drug addict. I'm not saying anything that's too far away from any family in the world. Why doesn't everybody deserve a second chance? You well, so let them have love on their own, buddy. I mean, why do you? Yeah, why do you have to hook them up? What is your interest I'm, in it? Yeah. What's your love connection? I'm a why are you the love connection? You know, I'm doing a project coming up with you know, dollar. with with many many talent that are superlative talents. The fact that Joey and Amy are this item that they are. It's not my doing. I just happen to facilitate it. All right. Like Sinatra with Dean and Jerry. 
Exactly. Oh, I go. freaking love you. Listen, listen, listen. I, I got to say something. You know what? I, I met, I've met Joey and Mary and now Paulie a couple of times. And to tell you the truth, I uh, I have an affection for them because I probably have the same background as them. I'm, right. I'm the same type of person. And I really like them. I do. I think they're deep down, they're good like people, all three of them. And I just feel that it's just good. This is going to tear them further apart. Artie, it's just the worst thing that could happen Artie. to a family. People show their sides. Like, you have a side that you show the public. But that's something David, you, have you can't a think this would be side. good for Joey's no. kids to uh, sit there and uh, know their dad is now in love with uh, the woman who shot well, their mother. You've been through a divorce, Howard. Yes. You know that a lot of stuff happens when you decide to get divorced. Your kids yes. sometimes take sides, all sorts of things happen. All I can tell yeah, you, yeah, but is that you know, usually it's difference. unjustified. Yeah, I mean, the end of the day, this was all for the love of money. What are you talking about, pal? I'm just I'm, saying, as I'm someone, just you, the reality of this is, people go through divorce, people go through separation, they go through alcohol, they go through drugs. They usually don't go through gunshots, other, though. You have a life, and you know, you don't live it only for your kids. You live it for your kids before they're 18, and then they have their own lives. Oh. Yeah, but all, a lot of this stuff is history. Uh, Adam, you're on the air. Go ahead. Is the guy from Cleveland still No, now there's a guy from New York City. Go ahead, Adam. Hello. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. Yes, hello. go ahead. Hey, uh, Joey, man, I got to give you some advice. You need to stay away from her, not for anything else for your kids, but for yourself, man. She is so stupid. I used to live across the street from her. I just moved six months ago. She is so stupid, she'll get you arrested for doing something stupid. She is not Drive stupid, you're wrong. Really? She's a very oh, smart girl. Yeah, you're th- you sound something. like an idiot, but she's a smart girl. Oh, oh really? Okay. Let's yeah, see. You're an idiot. Drive she's just, smart. She drives David. First of all, and she's hot. Let me, I want to hear, 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 hear this guy. Let me hear this guy. I want to hear this guy. Seriously. All, I'm her, husband, her husband spent all her money. She told my wife and her girlfriends in the neighborhood. Nothing left. Gone. We don't know that. Okay. This is hearsay evidence. So, Joey. Don't worry about the money. It's not there. You got to start it all over again. Number two, the girl drives around the neighborhood with the kids in the back seat, not buckled, jumping around in the front seat. Oh, that's all hearsay. Come on, come on. Let's let's yeah, go. Yeah, we on. don't even know if he lives across the street from Amy Fisher. Dominic, you're on the air. Go ahead. That's well, the idea. You don't know. Dominic right, was Joey's I, lawyer. For yes, him. I started with Joey actually through Howard, and then I helped marry Joe later, and and Joey knows that. Yeah. And then I helped Amy get out of jail. So I kind of was there from the beginning to the absolute end. Okay. And I understand Howard and Robin's attitude, but I, but what I don't understand is why uh, you would make the comments you make about Artie, who's the best guy in the world. I love Artie. You're talking to me, Dominic? Or yeah, somebody else? Griff. Griff, Griff, whatever. Oh, no. Griff. Griff. Well, I, I love a... Artie, man. I've Grifter. seen him. I, I, think I don't Artie's know Artie. I think he's got sparks of brilliance. All I'm saying is it sounds to me like this <laughs> issue is sensitive, and I don't know why. I don't know Artie. All I can tell you is there's a, there was alcohol and drugs involved 15 years ago. There's not anymore, and if there's not, then at least people can think clearly. That's all I can say. Alcohol and drugs by who? By Amy and uh, I think Joey was probably... No, 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 no. no. Joey never did drugs, and I I read every probation report. I was totally clean. Absolutely. Totally clean when that all that went down. I I got clean in 1988 from everything. if If you can make money with this, that's up to you. But, but, I think Artie's point and everyone else's point is true, and that may be something Joey accepts. But if these kids came out of this okay, I am. I say that's an act of God almost, because they went through hell. And I do you, was there. Do you think things will change when they're 25? That Joey makes a decision like this to do anything in his I life? I don't know. Let me I don't tell know. You, they hate Ivanka, his current wife. They have given her so much, such a hard time. They've never accepted her. It doesn't matter if it's Amy Fisher, Ivanka, <clears throat> whoever it is. Her, their family is never going to accept anyone as the mother. Wow. Mary hey, Listen, hey, hey, Dominic. This is yeah, almost like Dominic, a movie that you wouldn't I, believe. I, I, script. Hey, babe, I, I got to tell you, and anybody who's who's listening to this, Dominic and I've always said this. You are one, you are very rare. You are, and I've been through attorneys and met with them and, and I gotta tell you something, you have never lied to me, Dominic. You have never misled me. You will help me make decisions to go on and make the right decisions. And I gotta tell you, man, you never lied to me. You never told me this. Honest to God, you were great for me and you helped me recover for this. This is no, now part of my recovery. Okay. Still 15 years later. I don't know how this is gonna come out. I don't know. You well, know, if you... Amy calls me, I'll give her a free divorce. And when Mary Jo called me and forget why, you know who paid for it, and that was my... Right. 
yeah. him a lot, a lot of money. But all I'm saying is, listen, you got to do what you got to do. Right. But I think Artie, who I, who I truly love, is just trying to say to you, you know, is it going to hurt the kids? And maybe that's a, a test you're going to give. Yeah, I think it's baby, incredible. Dominic, they're not eight years old. Well, I'm not saying you're uh, I'm right or wrong. Well, it doesn't matter it if doesn't a kid is eight years old. Are. If a kid, if well, a kid, are you telling me that at some no. point or another you don't? Make well, what this is, listen, there's a million, there's a billion women well, they, on the planet. We're talking there, about there may or may not. We're talking be about reasons. specifically the yes. woman who shot and there's Mary their Jo. Mother. Listen, you want to know one other thing? People are forgetting that, that she was underage when he was having sex with her. So there was another act of victimization going. Nobody on. Nobody wants to listen to me. You guys are doing a great fucking job. Listen, job. listen. The thing is, you know, here's after I met, I never met Joey's daughter. Joey's going to fuck Amy Fisher. I, mean, I hear yeah. it in his voice. But he after, does not care. He's hell bent on doing this. But after Howard, I met his son. I'm hearing that now they're going to just Howard. put the two of them in a house Howard and see brilliant. what happens. Right. That's crazy. Am I right, David, or not? You are brilliant. You're the only one that makes sense on this show. Because to me, you understand this show. Oh, you're nuts, David. I'm going to get on Artie's side in a minute. Yeah, well, I mean, listen. I mean, people make money off snuff films, too. Really? I don't know why I'm so smart, but I'm telling you. <laughs> but I I Joey. can't see. I mean, it's one thing to have them have a meeting. It's another thing to have them dancing around town, Hold it. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. going to Vegas. Joey, it's a done deal, isn't it? Pretty you're much. Underestimating, you're underestimating Amy. Amy can, has two kids. Hold it, Dominic. I didn't get an answer. Too, right? I, didn't, yeah. I didn't get an answer. She's a great mother. I don't think she'll do anything Joey. to harm her kids. Joey, you two can put a show years old, i got to have a word in here. Joey. Listen. I agree with Dominic. I really do. Joey, you're going to have sex. You've always been the voice of reason. Wait. Oh, and God bless you, and I love you. So what do you agree with? He's saying not to have sex with this girl. Well, that's not the issue. That's not the issue. Well, I discussed that on the phone today before they even meet, whether or not they're going to have sex. So Amy's children have to see a headline like that. So what's the issue? You could sell this as a reality show. You you want to see them in a house? Wait, 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 wait. wait. What's the issue? I don't even know. Howard's the only one that brought it up. I've never brought it up. No, what is the issue? If you can believe this or what? not, honestly, from my heart, I, I owe Amy a huge apology. It's not about sex. For me to get started into this another phase of my life, I owe Amy a huge apology. And I'm, whether anybody's right. there to see it or hear it or not, and I hope somebody is because I owe it to her publicly, I really do, because of the last, the last try. And the last try, I was a fucking maniac. You know? And by the way, those got the highest ratings of any Entertainment Tonight well, sweep sure special ever. I'm sure it did, Dave. I'm not arguing mm-hmm. there's going to be interest in this. But, you know, uh, after I met Joey's kid, Paulie, I honestly said to myself that night, I said, wow. That kid turned out great. He's nice. He ducked a bullet. He got through it, and he's going to be fine. And now you're dragging him back into it. Why test him twice? Artie, you and I have something in common. Artie, in my defense to that, I I love love my children, and I'm sure you speak to Paulie, and he tells you he loves me. We have a great relationship. We go riding our Harleys in the hills and and everything, and I have a great relationship with Paulie. Oh, here we go again. Are we there? Yeah, yeah we're here. Go go. Wow. My son Paulie is not 12 years old anymore. He's 27. He's a grown man. You know? I know, Joe, but and, it, and my daughter Jesse, I'm sure you met. You know, she she's working hard and she's doing her thing. She's 24 years old. He didn't meet Jesse. He said, "Oh, okay. I never but, met Jesse." But you know, again, I, I just said to myself, "God, this kid ducked such a bullet right. in his life." Look, and we're going we're going over the same thing. Right. I'm just, I, I don't know uh, that Joey's actually. Have you? Told your children of what you're doing? No, no. I, haven't, I haven't seen. I haven't seen or spoken His to either one of my beautiful not, children. Wait, David, you got to shut up for three himself. seconds and let the guy finish the sentence. That's okay. You guys are doing a great job. Joe, Joey, Joey. Yeah. You said you were interrupted. Every David jumps on every line you say. What What did you say? You haven't seen your kids how long? I haven't seen Paul or Jesse uh, since I went into the county, and that was January. I haven't seen them. So it doesn't I've sound like I called and left messages for Paulie, but um, I haven't heard from any. I haven't heard from them. I know that they want to see me and speak with me, but I haven't. And, and you know, for whatever, for everything that everybody says about me, and I've we've all ducked this whole thing and just gotten through it. I'm, I am a, I am a very sensitive guy. And I know you guys a long time. And Howard, you were the only one there back 15 years ago when all this shit jumped off, and, and you were really the only one who gave me the chance to to speak 
Honestly, you really did. You know, so you, you and I. All I right, so that, so man. all right. Well, everyone's but just I saying to you, you better seen, think this through. I haven't seen my kids, and I'm, I really need to. But I just got out like eight days ago, and I'm dealing with so There's much. There's something bullshit. wrong here between you and your kids if you yeah. haven't seen them for that long. So I would think real uh, hard about whether I, or not you should yeah. see Amy Fisher. I yeah, have a, I have a question. But on did, the other did they hand, visit him in jail? No, no. he said no. He hasn't no. seen them. No, I didn't want them to, guys, because it's a real shitty place to be, even for the people who come to visit inmates. It's a bad place to be. All right. Thank you, David. And David Kreef, yep. Joey Butterfuco, thank you. And keep us uh, posted on what happens now. Between... You got it, man. All right, very Listen, good. guys, honestly, I hope everything turns out all right. I really do. Thanks, Thanks Artie. Thanks right. a lot. Thank I you, guys. Bye, right, Robin. Bye. 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 Right. Bye, Howard. You let that guy have it in there. Uh, yeah, I have no more energy. I don't know. Just something about it struck me the wrong way. And I did meet... Uh, Joey's kid, and I felt bad. I don't know. I feel bad for the kid, and now it's just. I mean, this is how anybody could disagree with what we were saying in there is is beyond. Me. Well, you were dead on, and you've been in show business a long time. Does he remind <laughs> you of a lot of the creeps you've met? That I don't know, to... man. I tell you, I've met some creeps, but that guy's that takes it to another level, man. That's that's creepiness at level red. I don't know. And uh, the fact that he tried to feign that he, you know, he cared, and that <laughs> he cares about people in love. I know. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's it's a fucked up world. I'm glad I'm not that healthy. I'll be leaving soon. Okay, you guys can deal with David Grief. <laughs> you know what's really fucked up? It's like everybody has a second chance. Everybody should get a second chance, except me. I'm not allowed to have a second chance in my life, I guess. You know, Mary Jo, God bless her. She's got a new guy in her life, and she's happy, and that's good. You know, my children even got a second chance in life because they were very young when all this happened to their mom, and it's... Uh, you know, they got a second chance to move on. And like a banker always told me, that's why I fell in love with a banker. I said, because she always told me, when is it my turn? Don't you get another chance? It's like, I think I just got my second chance with a banker. And I really believe that. I really believe that now she's gone. So. I know I'm going to embarrass him by saying this. Ooh, what? I love JD, but I walked into his room. I've never smelled him before. He's always been pretty clean. Uh, I, I walked. Have. I, I didn't know this. I walked into his TV room. I wanted to watch something he was watching yesterday afternoon after the Did show. Did he have the door closed? No, it was open. And I walked in, I and I couldn't even stay within the, the four walls. It's it was filthy. so bad. What, what the fuck is going on I've with his hygiene? Smelled, I think we have a, either. We have yeah. a, I have with his breath and his No, body. I don't know his breath body odor. odor. I, that, Bro, you stunk yesterday. Did you yeah, use I the think odor? I might have just farted or something. No, it was really? body odor. It was like it was underarm smell. Oh. I, know. I know I didn't shower I didn't shower last night because I was late. I, I woke up late, so it yeah, broke. Yeah, you I'm mean, trying dude, I shower you know every no, day. Yesterday you smelled really funny. I, I don't know. And that's a re- I mean, Do come you on. get nervous around Howard? Is that no. what? No, I don't think like so. Give it off an odor? Like I've, been back, I've been back in that room a million times. Yeah. Yesterday was really weird. It was the first time I ever had to like leave. It was like a homeless guy was sitting there watching TV. Oh, I'm you're sorry. St- he stunk. Nah, you don't, I, I'm sorry for you. I'm just telling you. I'm just <laughs> well, giving you a tip. You. I, Do you use a deodorant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you use? Uh, uh, speed uh, stick. Speed stick. The yeah. stick Get the slower one. Do you, you know? you ever, how long is your armpit hair? I, dude, I don't know. It's long. Let me see. Lift up your shirt. Let me see your armpit it's here. It's long. Let's see what's know. doing on your arm. It's too long, Jake. I'm going to give you some grooming advice. Right. No, no, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Do you get sticky during the day under there? Uh, I, I do. You know, I do. You get using the wrong deodorant. A bit. You're a sweaty guy. A I want bit. you to switch deodorants to my deodorant, <laughs> which is a uh, dry secret. You use secret of woman's deodorant? I don't know if it's secret. I don't know what's a band maybe. Strong enough for I, men. I'm going to look the name. Dro- it's it's dry. Secret. Strong no, no, not for secret. Made for a woman. It's not secret. Well, I'm I don't, sorry. I don't use like a gel. I'm going to get the name of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gary, call Laura and ask her the name of it. <laughs> it it's, could be secret. No, no, no. It's not. You're right. It's not secret. It's a shorter word. It's dry something. And I want you to switch to it. Okay. Because I tell you, I'm dry all day. And I've tried other deodorants and they don't work. This is the one that works, and you need it. Everybody's <laughs> different. You gotta just. You, you, gotta, you gotta find yours. Right. I, I right. thought I found mine. Apparently, no. one day. No, you lost it. Did you use it yesterday? Yes. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I come in. I sit. I come in. You know, overnight, like you know, the day before. So, 
I mean, I, I don't know if it had worn off by then or something. I don't know. Yeah, but you see, one day of not washing shouldn't mean you stink like that. Right. I, do, I don't know. I, I don't know what was going on yesterday. Are you, I had a theory about you. Oh, Jesus. Are you nervous about the upcoming meeting of your mother? And, no. uh, you think he's smelling no, from that? No, I, yeah, I think he's actually <laughs> letting off an odor. He's so nervous. <laughs> I don't even well, how many it. years has it been since you saw your mother? It's been a few years. And how, when is the day you're going to see your mother? What I, is the I, date? Don't, I don't know the exact date. It's, it's been, sometime in June, it's sometime is it? in August. August. Oh, August. You shouldn't start stinking now well, if you're going to be nervous I, about I that. I know. <laughs> shouldn't be stinking at all. Trust me, the last thing I want to do is be like Richard. Or no, <laughs> do you worse than Richard. This yesterday. <laughs> yeah, Richard didn't smell like a homeless guy. No, he has an event coming. He hasn't seen his mother in eight years. She ran off with a guy she met on the internet and ran off to Hawaii, and she's never come to visit him. And I know he's uptight. Maybe subconsciously you think it will keep Bill away, her <laughs> new husband. No. no, his name's not Bill. It's Prince Kowali. Prince Kowali? Prince Kowali. <laughs> They're coming by Outrigger Canoe. <laughs> they're paddling through why, the Panama Canal. Is that why it's in June? They have to get. Yeah, they're uh, starting now. Last month. The outrigger takes a long time. They, they have to throw the coconuts out into the waves to see which way the the tide is drifting, and then they, and then they follow it. <laughs> coconuts. Do <laughs> you think your mom will bring you coconuts? I, who knows? Coconuts on a power. Brought me a lua, like a the one of those. Lou. A lay. lay, a lay. Did you write Not it back and say, you know what? I haven't seen you in eight years. They're also I don't bringing think a lay pig. is going to cut it. <laughs> no. Well, I, you know, I wore it for some pictures, but that was about it. Nice. Got a humor, you know? Dear JD, here is what we wear in Hawaii, a lay. <laughs> oh, she was here. She visited. She oh, eight years ago. Or Florida, whatever. I right. I think oh, she you're... did come back once? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, son. She does love me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves, All I know. She loves Prince Machiavelli or whatever his name is. I had a picture. What's his Prince name? Koali. Prince Kowali. Prince Kowali. Prince Kowali. I had a and picture. And she's Princess Kanaku. <laughs> Kanaku. A picture in my head of what happened. She met this guy on the internet. And did you ask? She went, <laughs> she went to visit him once, came back to get her clothes. Is that what happened, J.D.? No. That's no. what she did. I think she went. She actually went back like one or two other times. <laughs> what makes you think? I, he came over here once. What makes you think she loves you? Because she does. She's How my do you mom. Know? She does. does. Mean, what do you think? Every mother loves their son? Well, I, I mean, I, it's hard to love you. No, huh? It's hard to love you. <laughs> well, I know that. I mean, she tells me she wants me to call her more and stuff, so. Call know? her? Yeah. Well, why doesn't she call she, you? She does. She I, doesn't hear from me after a while. Well, doesn't she realize that's your anger? <laughs> I don't know if anger. I just talk when I have to you're talk. Not, you don't think you're I'm angry? I'm like my dad. No, my dad hard, like rarely talks too. So you know, yeah, it's a whole family of haters. <laughs> well, when it's he gets, a whole bottled up family. <laughs> when he gets on that phone at the wrap up show, he yaps like a fucking yeah. Well, yeah, he calls the radio show more often than he calls you. I bet. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. <laughs> <I was like, laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> anyway, I think you no. smell better today because I don't smell you today. Well, I, know, I, I, never I, didn't even, I didn't even shower before I came here today. So. Oh, geez. So you mean this is the stink from yesterday? I get it. Yeah. No. Oh. Dude. Stay away you from the cupcakes. You... No, I, I am away. Don't worry. You didn't know you smelled yesterday, no, so you I, didn't shower I didn't again. realize. Yeah. I woke... No, I woke up late today. It could be a close. So that means you so... haven't showered in two days, probably. No, I showered uh, what Sunday. Sunday. Yes. S Sunday. So today's Wednesday. No, wait. Monday night. No, I showered Monday night. You know what happens, man? I you... showered Monday night. I don't know, man. It's Wednesday. <laughs> I know. I know. I was. I showered before I come to work. What are we living in? Tuesday the Wild night. West? Oh, I know. You have indoor plumbing, right? Yeah, there were guys, yes. in the, there were guys, guys on the this prairie. This is a fucking one-day thing. I'm not... This isn't like a regular thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, you know what happens... Sorry I offended you with You're my... You're not a sheep herder. <laughs> you know what happens when kids live leave their homes? Yeah, I know a... when I left my... You know, you, you live in shitty apartments for a while. It's true, and there's not always great water pressure, and the bathroom's not the most pleasant place to be, especially when you have roommates. And I know you don't wash yourself properly. <laughs> I'm telling you. You're in there for two seconds. You have problem. roommates? Y yes. Yes. Who I, are your roommates? Just uh, a guy I went to film school with and his girlfriend. Oh, he sounds filthy. Film school? <laughs> and and what about the... How many bathrooms you got in the place? The one bathroom. Oh, dude. Uh, it's got to be the grossest... Like, like yeah. his failure film school shit. 
No one he's, he's got a broken leg too right now. Oh no! <laughs> oh, it probably stinks. Hey, I heard your roommates don't pay their rent, and no, you've been okay, covering we don't them need for to months. Get, we don't need to get into all no, this. I want to get it's into this. Get, it's Why are you paid. covering your roommates? I, what do you need got, a roommate this, for if you're paying the yeah, rent? If you're calm down. All calm the down. Rent, is he calm, live alone? I haven't paid. We haven't paid rent uh, lately. What? Like uh, last month. <laughs> What? We haven't paid rent yet. You Why? don't shower, but, you don't pay rent. What is this? Oh, what kind of handheld <laughs> shit is this? I want to get into all my roommates. No, wait a second. Why are you? Why are you not getting money from your I, roommates? The only thing I haven't gotten money is bill money, and that's coming like today or tomorrow. My roommate got hit by a cab, and <laughs> was, like, sure he did. And he's had some issues with getting his paycheck because he just started this uh, back up with you know this editing job. And he had issues with uh, getting his check. All right. So calm down, every guy, everyone. Jesus. Every guy or just come uh, It's everyone. Listen. Don't I, you have I to walk your roommate's dog all the time? <laughs> I, uh, now I do. Yeah. During the afternoon. Is he giving you <laughs> the rap? He, he's, he's, he said he'd give me 50 bucks. So you're me. living in there with the girlfriend and a dog. <laughs> and the guy, yes. Is the roommate giving you the rap like he's going to be a successful, he's a brooding artist, like he'll be a successful. Hey, the kid's got an editing job. He must be okay. Yeah. He's got, he's, yeah he's, 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 what's he's, the editing? I don't want to get porn. No, is no. he editing porn? What is no, no, no. He's editing a. He actually edits for a, a daytime show. Actually, oh, two daytime. Good shows. Good for him. All right. So he's, he's no. He's no. So loser. he's so how got come, a job. Right. He huh? sounds like a huge he's loser. He's got a job. Yeah, he's got a job. He actually works. It sucks because he has to work up in Harlem right now. On, you know, 125th Street with a broken leg. What's the matter with Harlem? He, he works, can't run he works overnight. <laughs> so. He can't run. Yeah. So, hey, you, down. come here with a broken leg. <laughs> what's the matter with Harlem at night? What do you say? Right. What's wrong? Yeah, what, what's your beef, yeah, racist? I'm just, no, he, he just is very nervous about it. What's the matter? You know what? Well, I'm going to send you up to Harlem to walk around Why at night. Why don't you see. take him then? Uh, because like i got to work here. Let's see if Freddie's going to run into one of the Globetrotters. <laughs> Uh, all right, get out of here. I'm sorry I offended no, you. Honestly, no, honestly, I never... No, I'm just I'm, telling you, you should, you, you, you're a pretty clean guy, so yeah, you should I know, show I, I doubt that. I'm, sorry. I'm, jo I, I'm joking around with him. I've never smelt his body, but his breath is an issue. Really? I've never smelt your body before. I never had the... Richard up. said my... Uh, what, okay. A lot of people Goodbye. say your breath's an issue. Uh, okay. What I try and chew gum, okay? Uh, chew gum? I, I brush my teeth, too, but I chew gum regularly throughout the day here. Should I go over there and smell you? No, no, I don't want to. Think no. of how bad his film Just student leave. friend must be. Oh, think. my God. Can you imagine if this was the day he was meeting his mother? <laughs> oh, no, he's going he's gonna to brush his he's teeth. He's going to brush his teeth yeah. and shower that day? Directors don't wash. I, I met a lot of them. I, they think so, they're artists. They don't I, have to wash. I know. Dude. I can't just be left alone. <laughs> I just go back to my room. How many no. times a day do you brush your teeth? Huh? How many times a day do you brush your teeth? I, you know what? I, at least once. Uh, which is uh, here before work, before the day starts here for everyone else. You have your toothbrush here? Yes. So use it a little more often. Yeah, after every time you eat, brush your teeth okay. and r massage your gums and brush your tongue as well. I do I do when I brush my teeth. Yeah. What toothpaste do you use? Uh, I don't need a crest, I think. Do you have a mouthwash? No. Gary, uh, I'll pay for it. Buy him some, oh, uh, what do I use? Uh, Lister, Lister Mint, Lister. The, the one that gets rid of the plaque. Yeah, Listerine's good. You take a little swig of that, and you, you mush it around in your mouth, and you don't use any water with it. That gets rid of the plaque. You gotta, we got to work on you. Thanks. This is why your mother ran away. Yeah. Now we know why your mother's in Hawaii for eight years. She couldn't take the smell. <laughs> she had to get off the continent. <laughs> Prince Hukilau had a fucking calmer oh, down. Still in North America. <laughs> Prince Kauai. 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 Oh. Prince Kalani. <laughs> Kamehameha. Are we done? <laughs> Can't be left alone. Left alone? Here? Are you crazy? I know. <laughs> Wrong job. I like that. you. That's the only reason I'm spending I, time I, on I, you. I, I, you know, it's you like, notice most of these people I don't even comment on. I'm going to cheer JD up. You ready? <laughs> Let's see. The, the older glasses are a little bit Oh, better. you do? Fuck. I got a guarantee lamp <laughs> What are you talking about? He likes, he likes my sunglasses, but uh, these are too small for my face. Yeah, you got you got you got glasses that you know touch your cheeks. Did you get a bruise from playing softball? Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Look at that. Oh, oh my oh, goodness! Damn. That's, What's wrong and, with you? <laughs> I was running hard, and the momentum took me over. And Where'd you, you fall? Yeah, I was I was hauling ass to first base. You know, I 
hit a ground ball to the pitcher. And he couldn't believe he hit the ball. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> like a girl. <laughs> yeah. And I, he, was, he had a, a dribble to the pitcher, and, and you ran it, it was, out? He was bobbling it, and I, I hauled it. Run it out, J.D. Run it out. Run it out. <laughs> I, so I, I did, and I, I, I hit uh, a hot uh, shot to the pitcher. I tripped myself up and knocked the breath out of me. You fell over your own feet? <laughs> they they, they yeah. said he went head over feet. <laughs> oh. Over first base. Grounded out to the pitcher and slow pitch softball is like, oof. I'd rather strike out. Yeah, just I? don't run. Just give up. <laughs> One of the, you know. Wait a minute. So the ball is dribbling. The pitcher's bobbling. You're flying down first base. <laughs> I was and- safe, all right. And I scored the run. Were you safe? Yeah. And you know what else? He is in front of all these hot chicks from the Mori Povich <laughs> show. <laughs> Yeah. Did we beat the Maury Povich show? We did. We beat the Maury Povich show. They didn't score a run until like the fourth or fifth inning. Right. Did a bunch of girls play for them? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we beat them. <laughs> Good. Well, at least God. you didn't lose. Thank God you didn't lose to the Maury Povich girls. It's when so did you play? Aw- uh, Friday. Friday afternoon. Oh, okay. It's so awful. Yeah, I was supposed to play. I was down in Florida. I really wanted to play, too. But <laughs> it's it's tough in that league. And again, this is going to sound sexist. This wasn't even a league game. It's so awful when a girl gets up in softball. It's just it's so... <laughs> just imagine playing a whole team full of girls. Oh, it's just the boring... Most... I mean, everybody moves in. Oh, it's yeah. the most boring thing. Like, okay, give Jenny four strikes. <laughs> All right, we'll give her four strikes. That's what we'll do. We'll be here forever. <laughs> I mean, you know, Jesus. Got to pitch slow. Oh, oh is that bad too big for you, honey? Why don't you get a small? You know, I'll get her another one. Oh, she, oh, maybe, she might be a lefty. Are you a lefty? And you know what? It I don't know if I'm a lefty. It doesn't matter. That, like, I know when I can't hit, my ego is bruised. You know, I feel like less of a man. Girls just laugh it off. Right. Big deal. They don't care. Yeah. But they care if a guy can't hit. Meanwhile, yeah. they, get a, they make a big out, and your team's fucked, and they're giggling. Hmm. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I heard that uh, JD's bummed out about some other things that have been happening in his life. No, what? No, I'm not bummed out about anything, Gare. (laughs) Enough of these notes. I heard that Kimberly Kane took uh, JD off off her top 10 friends on her MySpace page. Oh! Oh. Fell out of her top 10. Apparently I haven't called her enough, so. Kimberly Kane took you off her top 10 friends. Or whatever it is. Yeah. Why are you not calling her? I I don't know. I just had nothing to talk about. Oh. I believe that. Make small talk. Tell her what's going on at work. Like, mm. I stink lately. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I brushed my teeth. Oh, it says I have B.O. Yeah. I ran out of ball to the pitcher in softball. Are you still in the top 20? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just know I'm not in whatever the top thing is where it shows up on the main page. I heard you said you're not that into Kimberly and you're into other porn girls more. He's got a crush on a, can I say, he's got a crush on a scores girl, apparently. Uh, don't we all, my friend? Yeah, don't we all? There's about two, there's like five who of them. You, who are you in love with? Let's bring her in. Uh, there's only one named Celeste, but she doesn't do like promotional work. <laughs> Did she tell you her real name? Is that her real name, Celeste? No, I know her real name. Mm. Oh, you do? Yeah. Look at you. Uh, you know her second name. It's like a whole big deal when a stripper gives you her real name. I got her, yeah. I got her phone number, but she, nah, you you know, know, she hardly calls me back. I, I have to zap them with strippers. You know her second favorite name. Yeah. They usually have about four of them. And there's a voicemail that they send everybody <laughs> right. to. I never tell anyone my real name, but I'm going to tell you, right. but really don't call me that here. It's a typical bullshit yeah, I'm move. A, I'm like Susan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Susan, so why didn't you use that name? I don't want anyone to know, okay? But you can call me Susan. And here's my number. <laughs> Give me $500. Yeah. Which I will never answer. <laughs> By the way, Celeste told Will her real name, too. Oh, oh, really? Yeah, she probably told, that's Car- right, that's she probably told Carlo, the Howard TV editor, too. All of them called yeah. him the same bogus number. Oh, did Celeste tell you a real name? <laughs> of course, we'll get the real name out of anyone. Because J.D. was thinking he was special. No, I, uh, can, no. can I just leave? Her real name is JD. Susan, the chick ripping off J.D. What? Yeah, no, J.D. totally thought he was special with the Celeste thing. Like He got the whole rap from her, and then... Uh, and then, like, when I talked to her, it was the exact same thing. She said, you know, oh, I don't want anyone knowing my real name. But the- <laughs> <laughs> Did she give you guys the same name? What's your, you, what don't, do you th- don't, 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 don't say it. Say it on. Yeah. Yeah. Start with uh, an M? Yep, with exactly. M. All right. Exactly. Mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Get out of here. <laughs> now you wrecked his fucking day. It was a douchebag around here. <laughs> How did you get her real name out of her? Like, what, did, what are you talking about? I, I got her the same. The, it was like, you know, whenever I got her number, she she told me it. So. You got her number? Uh, yeah. yeah, but I mean, like I said, she barely <laughs> called me back. So Cause his, he never has talked to her. You it's know a what it is? Mail thing. His personality is so good 
She just had to have more. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, she never calls me back, although she did want me to pay her rent and walk her dog. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what it is. He said I work for the Howard Stern Show. Right. She thinks he makes money. Oh, no, she knows I don't make any money. <laughs> not Now she does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why you're not hearing back from her. What's the message you leave each time you call her? I don't I, yeah, uh, call uh, me back. Uh, if, uh, what? Uh, what? Call me back if you get the chance. That's it? Well, uh, <laughs> Just saying, do you, you call know, her Celeste or do you call her by her real name when you call her off here? I don't. I don't think I've ever like you know called her by any name, name really. Right. So you call up and you go, "Hi, this is." Hey, it's the badass, or do you use JD? What, what you go, hey, it's JD. I was just seeing what was going on. Give me a call if you get the chance. Oh, now, have gonna, you ever gotten together with her outside of scores? That's huh? gonna turn her on. <laughs> have you ever gotten together with her outside of scores? No. Hey, right. it's JD, the guy who stinks. <laughs> <laughs> If you get the chance, you could get on the phone. You go, listen, honey. Remember, I mentioned scores. I I know. I give do. me a call back. I'm getting a little annoyed here. Yeah, you know, be firm. I I, I need to be more authoritative. Yeah, just say, listen. What do you mean? If you get the chance, you got the. She's a stripper. She's got plenty of chances. Say, so listen. Remember, we met the other night. You give me your number. What'd you give me your number for? If you don't want me calling you, I'm like, this is it. And then give me a call back. I got to talk to you. About She's something. missed every opportunity. Yeah. My balls need licking. <laughs> And yell loud into the phone. It's probably hard for her to hear when she's underneath Eli Manning. <laughs> We've gotten a lot of whoops today. Why do you think Eli Ma Manning just is so large that he blocks her ears? Yeah, I think he's a big football player, you know. When he's sitting on her face. Oh, his face. JD. Uh, uh, could you, you pick up the phone? I think that's JD, Eli, but I can't hear. Could you remove your balls from my ears? I, 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 I hope if you're not busy, uh, you might give me a call back or something. I, 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 Hi, JD. It's uh, M. Uh, I was just giving me a Roman helmet. Did she call you back? You said she hardly calls you back. She's called me back a couple times. What does she say? Uh, you know, I don't, uh, stop calling you fucking turd. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> what, what does she, she say? say? I do. I don't. I don't know. You don't know what she says. She, you know, she has expressed interest that she'd like to hang out, but of course, you know the you know the time. It's never the, you know the right time or whatever. How are you gonna hang out with her? What would you do? I don't day? know. At, 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 at the, first, at first, she wanted to go see Borat, but then you know after. You know, Borat's good. That was months ago. I, exactly. <laughs> that, I makes know, nerd, that makes I know. nerds look cool. Well, That's a good it. movie for you. Like you don't want to take her to a good-looking guy movie. So do you have enough scratch to pay for the movie? And yeah, I, yeah, I got yeah, yeah. I'll help you out if you get a date with her. I'll I'll pay for it. Thank you. Even with Fellini, your fucking uh, roommate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's pulling the whole train over there. <laughs> Francis Ford Dopola. And he's walking the right. dog. Thank you. And listen, no more notes. I, I like can you. leave. You can leave. Thank you. Good guy. Just catching up with I you, love JD. This kid. I love you. That's we why we want to know what's going on with you. I don't feel you have a strong parental influence. I'm trying to help you. Okay. Parental? They Thanks. all left. <laughs> Everyone ran out of town. <laughs> So, uh, Stinky. <laughs> no, you, JD, you hate, like, revealing things about yourself on the air. You hate when you become the topic of discussion. Yes. What was going on this morning? Why, why did this all happen and how did this all come I, about? I don't, apparently I smelled and, uh, you know, you know, I, I, I smell one day and, you know, I get a, I get a, I get a thrashing or it's the worst thing in the world. Now, so. given the fact that you hate this, when they're when they're like sort of busting on you, but at the same time giving you advice, are you paying that advice any mind? Well, or yeah. Like, Shane, are come you, on. Are you thinking in your head, shut the hell up? I don't want to smell. Well, both, because I don't need everyone knowing I, I stunk one day and whatever. Now, and also your mom continues to be an issue on the show. Okay, we don't need to talk about that. Mom. Well, has, I, I just want to ask you, has she been hearing this? And, and when it continues, does she get pissed off? Uh, I think it's getting a little easier for her to 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 hear about, but uh, yeah, I it's. Whatever. Is this gonna have any effect on your eventual reunion no, that you're going to this summer? I don't think so.
Murphy. Yeah, you got it. You, right. want, you want me to talk? Yes, yes, oh, please. Okay. It makes my job easier. You know, I'm uh, I'm here. I'm excited to go on the show. And uh, Spider-Man 3 is coming out, so there you have it. Cool. Howard's already giving it rave reviews. Oh, is he? Yeah, he was talking about it on uh, Tuesday, I guess. Oh, great. He's, He's the best of the three. Oh, good. He's hey, the best of the three. Said he liked it. Come on, sit down. All right. Good morning. So it's been a while. You haven't done the show in it's been a couple years, probably? Yeah, I don't recall exactly when it was, but yeah, it's been a while. You're excited. He's, he's uncensored now. Yeah, I'm excited, you know. I like Howard. I, and I think he's a softie. I'm not, you know. You're not intimidated. I'm not intimidated. He's a good guy. He's always been really nice to me. I mean, you know, he asks me some questions that are a little difficult sometimes, but no big deal. It gets a little personal, but you're, you're okay with it. Yeah, I'm okay. All right. Well, we'll see you inside, Tony. All right, cool. Thanks. The Spider-Man 3 movie that we saw the other day was so good, so cool, so spectacular that it led me to say that I thought Spider-Man 3 is the best of the three Spider-Mans. It might be your best review of a movie I've ever, ever. heard. I yeah. was never so thoroughly entertained and so pleased with a movie as I was Spider-Man 3, and I loved it. And uh, uh, happy to have Tobey Maguire here, who is Spider-Man. Yeah, he's not Tobey Maguire. He's yeah. Spider-Man. You should change his name to Spider-Man legally. <laughs> Toby, you should change your name to Spider-Man legally. <laughs> you are Spider-Man. Like you're a young man now, but then when you're in the old age home and you're like 90 years old, yeah. you're going to be running around nude <laughs> thinking you're Spider-Man. Do, do we have That's to right. bury him in the uniform, in the outfit? Am I the only one? I'll be chasing the old ladies going, come on, I'm Spider-Man. Absolutely. Do you yeah. realize when like Dracula, Bella Lugosi died, yeah. and Tarzan, the guy Johnny Weissmuller who played Tarzan, they, they were young men. They never thought they'd be running around in an old age home in a loincloth right. screaming, I'm Tarzan. But it does happen. Am yeah. I the only intellectual here that thinks you should change his name to the Cider House Rules? <laughs> well, Toby, uh, I'll make no secret of it it is i think out of the three spider-mans the best one yet and i was so thoroughly entertained and blown out by this film and your acting and the way you you portrayed spider-man there was some sensitive scenes the, the crying and emotion yeah it he makes went it, all over the place it was funny he was laughing he was crying were, oh, he was doing great. everything yeah. i had the best time i mean really what an accomplishment oh thank you that's great awesome. great movie oh, great, great movie yeah I Thank said you. that you should probably be nominated for an award because it's that kind of a nuanced performance, but they uh, never do that for yeah. action films. Well, maybe like a People's Choice or an MTV award or something. Well, MTV, you <laughs> might MTV, get. MTV, you'll get. Yeah. You know, best Kiss. Or, right. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like something yeah. something yeah. ridiculous. Something I think ludicrous. we might have got a best film for People's Choice at some point. Yeah. One of those, one of those Spidey movies. You know, it's really weird. Getting away from Spider-Man for one second. In the paper today... There was a story about you. Did you read page six yet? The post? Uh, <laughs> I heard about this. Yeah. yeah. That tabloids will go to any length to paint a celebrity gay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's true. Uh, and, and they use Toby as an example that when he used to hang out, I don't know if you still do, with Leonardo DiCaprio. You yeah. guys had the, the pussy pack or something. What was that called? Oh, I don't know. The pussy, pussy rap. Pussy. The pussy pussy. Oh, is that what it was called? In Toby's young days, he hung out with David Blaine the Magician. Right. And uh, Leo, Leo DiCaprio and those guys. And they were the pussy posse. They'd go out and get laid. I mean, like any young man would. <laughs> right? That must, those must have been the days. Uh, well, well, how is that? Gay? All, all are different periods in one's life. Yeah, right. Most of you guys have settled down now, but the fact of the matter is that in those days, because he'd hang out with Leo, they said, "Let's go fight, figure out a way to paint this kid gay." <laughs> right, and that's unbelievable to me. Why would they do, just so they have something to write about? Jeez. Yeah. Well, I guess then they did an interview with your mom, and she said something about how you guys sleep together or something. Oh. I don't know. It was weird, but... <laughs> they got information. It, they got it was, evidence. It, it was weird, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mom, I guess she got a call. My mom called me like eight years ago or something, and she said, oh, my God, Toby, I don't know what happened. I just talked to this woman. She was pretending she was from this, like, um, gay advocacy or gay pride magazine. Uh. And, and later I learned she was from the Globe. And, and you know, maybe I said things I shouldn't have said. And I was like, oh, Mom, don't talk to anybody about anything, please. How are you pulling this off? You're engaged 
And you've been engaged for and, a long time. And you've got a kid. Yes. With your fiance. Yes. <laughs> but somehow you manage not to get married. <laughs> how are you doing? You're that? living like a how brother. Long, yeah. How long have you been pulling this off, first of all? <laughs> As Artie says, you're living like a brother. Uh, like a brother right? never gets like engaged. A rapper. Now stop it. A brother never gets engaged. He <laughs> <It> doesn't. <laughs> how are you pulling that off? What's well, going on? I've just been busy. You know, it's been been too busy to. How long have one. you been busy? <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy for about a year now. <laughs> Are you afraid to get married? Um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, we're going to get married. I think that, you know, it's definitely, I don't think it's as, as natural a thing for, for me or for, you know, I was going to generalize and say for a guy as it is for a woman, but I just don't, you know, I didn't dream about it when I was a kid. Like, you know, my girl dreamed about being married one day and I, right. I've never dreamed about it. I'm, you know what, what makes sense to me, my girl said to me, I can't wait to have the same last name as you and our baby. Right. And, you the know, poor that woman is an outcast. So you know what you say to her? <laughs> you say to her, who's stopping you from taking my name? Go ahead. <laughs> Call yourself whatever you want. Call yourself. Yeah. Okay. My yeah. buddy did that. Did he? Yeah, he was getting pressure to get married. And, and he his, says, you can take my name? He goes, who gives a shit what you call yourself? <laughs> so take my name? You could be Mrs. Spider-Man for oh, all I don't care. I don't care. Why do you have to be, uh, you don't have to be McGuire. Call uh, yourself anything. That's yeah. funny. So you're eventually going to have to get married because you had a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have a baby. Yeah, well, the baby will say, why doesn't mommy have my name? Right. <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'm excited to get married. I think it'll be interesting. And your wife's super rich. Her dad's the head of Universal Pictures. That is a the mother load. She's nice looking. She's got the money. <laughs> Dad's ahead of Universal. I mean, you're 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 in with the Hollywood elite. It, I imagine. it hasn't done me any good. I'm still waiting for a job from him. I mean, you know. Yeah, but I mean, you're in with the Hollywood. I saw at the baby shower. Here's the list of people who Who's were there. Who's at the baby shower? Listen to this A-list baby shower. This is something else. You had the following people. You ready? Because I don't even know if you know who was there. I'm not sure. Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> oh. Courtney Cock, <laughs> Jennifer Garner, the friends. Demi Moore. I don't think Jennifer Garner was there. And Kate Hudson. Did Kate Hudson mention me at all? Uh, she you think she, she actually We're still talking about that one meeting? You think he talked <laughs> about it? I think she wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I think I could have gotten her. Did she say anything about me at the party? Uh, she's just obsessed, I think. She's talking about you all the time. She is, constantly. Yeah. Yeah. I think she wants it. She's like to give her a call. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to an order of protection against her. <laughs> I should just call the police and say, I need an order of protection against Kate Hudson. That's right. That'd I need great. a restraining order. <laughs> I, think that'll, 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 I don't even know this guy. Yeah, that'll make her want you more, though. Yeah, that'd be cool to just How get How dare he say I can't come in with five, within 500 feet? Yeah, exactly. How cool would it be like if I filed orders of protection against Demi Moore? All of them. All of them. Yeah, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, that's a good one, Jennifer Aniston. And then, like, they'll go to her door and serve her. Say, look, Jennifer, you got to leave Howard alone. And she goes, don't worry, I have no problem, officer. <laughs> we want you to stay. You can't be closer than 100 feet. She goes, I, wouldn't get, I wouldn't even go to that. I won't even go to New York City. I think I can do that. And then your entire life should be getting within 100 feet of them. Yeah. So they can arrest you. <laughs> I want a movie. That's perfect. I have a role for you. Perfect. I'm in. Uh... Jennifer Aniston, fun to hang out? I mean, this is something you were like, wow, I've really arrived. We heard she gets great weed, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> we actually have heard that. <laughs> well, I have no idea. You don't drink or do weed. Yeah, no, I don't. Since you're 19, you've been off the you, booze. You, I don't think you do either, because I don't think people say do weed anymore. They don't? <laughs> no. What do they We're say old. so we can... <laughs> we are old. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I don't know what they say either, but I know they don't say do weed. I just tried to buy lewds. Now, why, why did you stop drinking? Did you have a did problem? Did you have a problem? Uh, yeah, I did. You did? You yeah. went to AA and the whole deal? Well, I, I'm, I definitely sought help. Wow. Oh. No kidding. You? Yeah. You seem so grounded. Yeah. No shit. Well. Look uh, at you. At 19, it was already out of control. Yeah, I mean, I, I've got to say that, um, you know, I was still functioning in my life, but it was getting destructive. It was getting in the way of, of who I wanted to be and what I wanted to do with my life. And I just, the amazing part is I... Spider-Man. That That's unbelievable. Man opens up. I can't continue this shit. That's unbelievable. That's great. Oh, my gosh. On today's Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but in all seriousness, from the time, that means you, your, your best partying years. Like, you were out of control at 13, probably. Right? I mean, in order to get to that at 19. I, I had a short career. You know, I was, uh, uh, I was like 14 when I started 
drinking. No kidding. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. yeah, I didn't realize you had been in show business from the time you were a little kid. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Was, what were you in? I was 13. I, I just did little stuff like... Commercials and stuff? Yeah, commercials. And uh, I did a... My first union gig was a Rodney Dangerfield special. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, it was like, um, you know, where he has comedians and then skits in between. And I was I was a little fan. And, and actually, I've told this story, but we... We go to Vegas and my mom's with me and Rodney ends up hitting on my mom. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Is your mom hot? I get the impression like she's sort of like a party girl. Um, a party girl? Well, yeah. I don't know. You're asking me if my mom's hot. You yeah. know what I mean? Is so, she? Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you know. <laughs> your, your mom uh, taken? Uh, you got a dad or what, what's going on there? Uh, I have a dad. Yeah, yeah. They're not together, though. Oh, no. do you ever see your dad or is he? Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, you yeah, see so yeah. you're on good terms with him? Yeah, yeah. Oh. But and, mom, you've seen her date and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, but anyway. No wonder so, you were so, drinking. So, <laughs> <laughs> my mom's dating Rodney. <laughs> right, well, I gotta tell so, but so, right, yeah, exactly. So you got Rod a young mom, right? Because she's like, yeah, she's yeah. young. She was 18 and my dad was 20 when they had me. Yeah, that's but, but Rodney said to her, he said, yeah, hey, how about we get together and do a little hugging sometime? <laughs> Did Rodney get her? <laughs> no, she said, that's all I do, Rodney, is hug. A little hugging? So, <laughs> hey, how about a little hugging? That's not too creepy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> really? So. Uh, you got twelve million for Spider Man One. Spider Man Two, you got seventeen million. Spider Man Three must have been the mo mother load, right? Has anybody cracked the twenty? I guess somebody's up to twenty five, huh? I have no idea. What do you mean you have no idea? <laughs> I don't know. You had to I'm make twenty five sure. for this one. I, I, you know what? I, Come on, bro. I, I, I was up. I, no, no, I have no idea. Listen, all I know is I don't make uh, Howard Stern money. <laughs> well, no one does. Yeah, yeah, who exactly. Does? Who does? Even no, I don't make. I that come kind to of this money. show, I get jealous. You know what I mean? No, but wait a second. Huh? You can't be jealous of me. You got that. First of all, you got that fiance that's loaded to the gills. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'd say I'd say Spider Man three. Did you make a three picture deal originally? I seem to yeah. remember that. Yes. So you said, okay, the first one I get twelve million, second one I get seventeen million. So the third one, if there was a third one, you would get X amount of dollars, right? Uh correct. And Do they give you points as well? Yeah. Uh, generally, that's how that's how things work. Ah. So is that how you ended up with the twelve million? Because the first one made. I mean, I think between the two, it made like one point seven billion dollars or something. Really? It was something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder who has more money. Toby or his fiance? Oh, she's still got more money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Toby's just a worker. <laughs> right. yeah, her father right. hires guys she's like still Toby. Got more I'm, money. I'm like a sweat labor guy. You're like yeah. a blue collar guy. That guy, guy can pay Toby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That's right. Right. She pays for dinner. This that's girl. That's right. Yeah. So, is it is it astronomical? In other words, you get back end money. In other words, is it dollar one from gross or whatever they call that? Well, you know, I don't know. I don't generally talk about my uh, my deal. So your contract wasn't for $12 million for the first one. You ended up with $12 million because you got points. I still haven't confirmed that. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, now, you have said you would even consider making Spider-Man 4, and I think you should if Sam Raimi's involved. Yeah, Sam's great. Yeah, but what a, this is some accomplishment, this movie. Yeah. Spider-Man 3. I, well, that's why I'm wondering about the speculation that this is the end. I read that you had said at one point this seems like the, the natural mm, culmination mm, of the story, and no, you don't see where it right. could go from here. I do. And that's ridiculous. Well, uh, no, I mean. Spider-Man didn't die. No, he didn't die. He's he's ready to move forward. Did you have fun making the movie? I did. I love I love working with the people, and Sam is great. I right. mean, he's he's so collaborative that it just makes the whole thing really fun. And I think in this film, more than the other two, they gave you more acting to do. Yes, definitely. You, you know, I mean, you yeah. had to play a range of yeah. emotions yeah. in this character. Yeah. So well, you actually change. You know, you, right. you go from one character to another. Right. Essentially. Yeah. And the effects are amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's I, great. I imagine it's a long days on the set because you got to. Oh yeah. You got to do pose roll and stuff. Yeah. Do you believe it's true that they couldn't do this without Kirsten Dunst? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I can tell you that if they, they could clean the slate of all of us and they'd still make Spider-Man movies. I don't know about that. I think you're Spider-Man. Well, I appreciate that, but they would still make them. You know, I mean, it's too big a brand for them, so. You fell in love with Kirsten Dunst on the first Spider-Man movie. You guys became lovers. I read that. <laughs> you read that? I, I know it. You know it. You told me. Did I? Yeah. Oh, I don't believe you. When we were out drinking when you were 13. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you, uh, you fell in love with Kirsten Dunst. Is it weird now to work with her now that there's no romantic relationship and that you're engaged? 
Well, I, I can answer part of that question, <laughs> Go ahead. but but not 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 a, on the. All uh, right, so you, so you banged her. Okay, <laughs> let's call it that. You got together and did some hugging. Was it okay. like a set romance? <laughs> All right, I'm confused. Hold on, I got to try to figure out how to handle this one. No, you had an on set romance. Um, I don't think there's a secret. There. Anyways, I'm not confirming that either. Why? <laughs> I just don't talk about that stuff. All right, let's say you, let's oh. do a hypothetical. <laughs> okay. Is it weird to you know, like have an affair with your, your co-star and then you have two more sequels to get through? And, you know, she's probably That's like... That's why I love the love scenes. I watch those intensely just to see if I can detect any animosity or repulsion. You know how I, you know how I knew you guys were having a thing? Uh-huh. And, and that was the, one, the one scene where she gets her, not in Spider-Man 3, in Spider-Man 2, her nips were hard uh-huh. while she's making out with yeah, Toby. Yeah. Well, that's and already I think where they were that. fighting with each other. Oh, really? See, that's what I think. What's that? By Spider-Man 2, you were already fighting. You hated each other. Oh, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I never, I mean, we, we've, Kirsten and I have always got along really well. <laughs> Sam Raimi said that you two were lovers on the first one. He, he did? Said that. Yes, he has admitted that. I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't who dumped believe who? it. Who dumps who in that Why situation? Uh-huh. I say you dumped her. That's the man. He's, he's, try, he's trying to give me any way he can. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to give me any way he can. We're running around all the angles. <laughs> That's why it's even hard for you, I think, in a sense, to be engaged now. I mean, why? you're Spider-Man. You're Tobey Maguire. You're one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. You could be getting laid left and right. This has got to be a little bit hard for you to be with one woman. True or false? Um... No, you know, I I'm I, I understand what you're saying, but I'm I'm having a great time. You know, it's just a whole different phase in life. He was in a... the pussy posse, Howard. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. that was a hundred years ago. Yeah. It was a hundred years yeah. ago. The pussy posse. You know, he might enjoy that in his forties. Again, getting, I'm getting old. You? How old are you now? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Yeah. Time for the pussy posse to return. <laughs> Return of the that's well, Leo, your next sequel. He, he's out there. He he bangs every model he can get no, his hands on. He's with on. one girl right now. Isn't right he? now, he's got a, some Israeli. I think you don't see him engaged. You still talk to that cat or what? Yeah, he he's, was engaged to Bunchen for a while. When you guys get together, do you like a, remember the pussy posse? Remember how hot that was? <laughs> do, do you, uh, <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> did you and Leo ever do the same girl? Listen to Howard. I mean, you really think I'm going to cave on any of this stuff? I don't know. I, I think you should start your own uh, your own posse, Howard. But wait, you do talk a little bit. He was in a posse. They're called true? the pussies. Can I tell you something? What? When you were 18, yeah. you described mm. that you were with Liv Tyler in a swimming situation. Oh, right, yeah. And you were nude. Right. And you were skinny dipping with her. Right, yeah. And you vomited in the water. Yes, what? I did. Now, when did you stop drinking? <laughs> was that, I, it was out of control. <laughs> Way to knock her down a few yeah. notches. Right. right. You know what? I admire that. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'll do? I'll vomit on her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That you disgust her me. She thinks she's so hot. What happened yeah. there, Toby? Well, I I wasn't feeling very well. It was it was a whole group of people, so it wasn't just live there. Um, you know, I was going to do this movie. And they were all, all the kids there had been there for like a month and everybody had their little clique going on. And, you know, they all went in the ocean skinny dipping and I wanted to be a part of. So I ripped off my clothes and ran in the ocean. Uh, But I wasn't feeling well. Um, And I'm not saying that I was sick. It might have been induced by something. Probably alcohol what, what, and drugs. Whatever. Right. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that so much. But, Probably coke or but, heroin. But I, ahead, yes. but, so I go in the ocean and <laughs> I just... I, what I makes get, you vomit? I get really, I get really queasy and, mm. wow. you know, and then I throw up in there and I'm naked in front of Liv Tyler throwing up going, oh my God, this is mortifying. <laughs> and this is when Liv Tyler was Liv Tyler. I mean, at 18, she was, you know, she had... Oh my hefty, God, yeah. Right? She, she was, was well, hot. Yeah, I think she's very beautiful now still, but she's but, fine, but, but she she's was slimmed down again. You she was like a, yeah, she looks good, but yeah. she was like a goddess then. This yeah. is her pre-normous. <laughs> pre-normous. So who are all your friends now? I mean, are they all famous people? No. Uh, no. But, I mean, because of your fiance, I imagine she's you know, when she's hanging out with Jennifer Aniston and, and all these people. Mm. Uh, did you get to hang out with her and Brad Pitt? Uh, I've met Brad Pitt once or twice, but but I've you know I don't know him. Were you there for the Vince Vaughn years? 
year? You know, a lot of my friends I've had from, you know, when I was uh, just a teenager, and, and so a couple of them are actors. You know, I have friends who do a lot of stuff, but a couple of them are actors and have really come up. A lot of us have gotten successful, yes. Together, which is amazing. Like time, yeah. Kevin Connolly, who's on Entourage, and Ethan Suplee, who's on My Name is Earl. You know, these kids. It's, it's These are great. guys you were friendly with. Yeah, that we've been friends forever. So Yeah, it's... but you could tell us if she's back with Vince Vaughn right now, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he knows all this stuff. <laughs> He knows all yeah, this Yeah, but stuff. he's not giving up anything. Come on. <laughs> and we know, your life's pretty great right now, right? Oh, it's great. Oh, man. Yeah. I can't imagine. Where do you live now? You live in Beverly Hills or something? Uh, I live in L.A. L.A. Yeah. Got a he big lives spread? in Pussyville. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got a big spread? I have a, a nice house, but I'm actually going to move because it's not, it's not good for kids, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, this guy's had some life. He's 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 trying oh, no. to be classy, he's, he's but he's doing it all right. Yeah. I'll give you the list of women this guy's banged right, right here. <laughs> this guy's sitting on the couch. Let's see who <laughs> is on his list. Kirsten Dunst. Okay. Demi Moore. Demi Moore. Yep. When did that Stop me if I'm lying. <laughs> I'm not doing either. I'm neither confirming nor denying. It's Nicole, the safest Nicole route. Nicole Richie. Oh. So, do you see the smile? <laughs> no, no, no reaction. It's it's consistent. I play poker. I know how to do this. <laughs> Quincy Jones's daughter. I was going to mm. say Quincy Jones. Yeah. <laughs> wow. He'll fuck anybody. I'll give you a great name. I'll give you a great name. This man has betted. All right. Christina Aguilera. Whoa. Whoa. And now I'm hot we, for you her. Know, hats oh, off to you. Yeah, dropping low. <laughs> which, uh, That's which, right. which daughter, Rashida or Kadida? Kadida, I think it was. <laughs> I Rashida. Think it was, I think it was Moshida. One of the Eden. <laughs> Moshida. I'm not sure who it was, but you've gotten something else. You've gotten them all. Nice list. That's a nice list. I had, I had a couple of months. That's a good list to retire. By the way, it's the only time it's been like silent. There was like an uh, observation of silence after that. Uh, well, we got a bow to you, brother. Yeah. My list is only Antoinette Giacomano at the Texaco station in North. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, you're, you're skinny dipping with Liv Tyler. I was in North. <laughs> this is beyond your wildest fantasies, right? I mean, your life. Oh, it's great. It's great. Now, it's where great. did you grow up? You're, you know, single mom. Were you guys, you know, was um, it hard? I, I live mostly in L.A., but I, I also lived in the state of Oregon and Washington State mm -hmm. as well. How'd you get in the show business? Uh, His mom probably pushed him. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm wondering. Did it Basically, stage mom thing? Yeah, or? yeah kind Thank of. I, I, yeah. I... Part Thank of God it. for her illness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, really. It worked out for you. <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> Things that, are good. Is that a lot of pressure when you're a kid and you feel like you've got to earn? Um... You know, I, I just did it because it was an alternative to what was happening, which is I, I love school and I love going to school and being a kid, but I moved around so much that I couldn't stand the pressure of, of you know, reacclimating socially again. So uh, when my mom said, well, you know, you got to get, get going in school again or you can start acting, I said, great, I'll start acting. Mm, you're good at it. You do a good. Job. You still take Thank acting you. lessons. I remember last time I saw you. That was a cool move. You yeah. go to the acting class. Yeah, and that's I mean, the best move yeah, ever. You see these struggling chicks and the. He had a look, couple of big movies look who, out. Look you who's know? in our acting right. class, Toby <laughs> McGuire. Well, you said that's totally a get chicks move. Uh, Absolutely. It is. Why you don't need any acting it? lessons to kick and act. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's no uh, big deal. I never thought of that. What uh, you still go in acting class? Um, I, I work with people occasionally. I don't, you know, I haven't had really time to, to get in any kind of class Of course lately. not. You don't yeah. need it. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Are they going to teach you? It's, that would be like me going to Connecticut School right. of Broadcast. <laughs> so I, move. I don't need to go. You'd fuck every chick there, brother. Can you imagine I walk in? I'm a stupid. They go, oh, our teacher's here. How are you? No, 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 no. I'm taking a class. I want to brush up. I want to brush up. I want to brush up on my mic technique. <laughs> yeah. but you know what? There was a period of time. Did you have a little blip there where you didn't want to go on with Spider-Man? Um, no, I mean, I've. I I've, thought at some point after... It's called a negotiation. Oh, is that what was going on? <laughs> we were renegotiating? Of course. Because remember there a was three the, picture deal. the Jake Gyllenhaal name was dropped there yeah. for a while that he might become Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, I, re I seem to remember that. Yeah, yeah. They were threatening you. Yeah, and A-Rod doesn't want to be a Yankee either next year. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Remember when they were threatening you? Yeah, with that? There, there was a thing which was my back was really hurting me after when I finished Sea Biscuit, the movie Sea Biscuit, right. and good um, movie too. Excellent. By the way, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, good and job. and um, you know, I was just kind of looking at all the stunts and you know how I was feeling. We were just kind of examining it, and then of course, you know, stories got 
bone out of proportion and all that. And then my back was fine. I still, four years, my back's been fine for four years, and I still get questions all the time. You know what yeah. happened, though, to, in your favor, though, was Jake Gyllenhaal got fucked in the ass in the movie. <laughs> oh. You can't That's have right. a Superman who got fucked in the ass in the movie. Never, they'll never threaten you with that again. <laughs> Spider-Man ain't gay. <laughs> if Gyllenhaal was the guy, the top, maybe, but he was the bottom. <laughs> Would you have done that, I, uh, I love that you remember that, which, where, where no, he he's was. He's completely traumatized. <laughs> I am traumatized by it. I'm Would like, you have I, done that? Would you, would you do gay movies? Um, no. No, Please. yeah, I, I would. I, I would. I mean, I, I think of, you know, Ang Lee is a fantastic filmmaker, so, right. you know, it depends well, on, being one on of the story movie. and and all of that. Be, being one of his straight movies, yeah. I would say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and by the way, this guy Gyllenhaal, he yeah. wants your whole life, too. He wanted to be Spider-Man, and he was also doing Kirsten Dunst. Ooh. Am I right or am I wrong? <laughs> right? He's trying to be you, Is he I trying think. to be you? Yeah. Did you ever say to this guy, why don't you get your own life? <laughs> You say, why don't you date Heath Ledger? Uh, <laughs> why do you think you're on screen See, he romance? See, went and got his own life, and look what happened. <laughs> it's getting right. banged in a teepee. <laughs> so the, the the movie comes out, and you will be checking the box office gross because you're a participant. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I know something about the movie business, my friend. You're going to crack 10 mil this weekend. <laughs> All right. I think it's a guarantee. <laughs> All right. I like uh, that. That would be a disappointment. Hardy. I think the hype, uh, you might even do more than that 114, right? Isn't that the record? 114? I still? think so. It's, yeah. it's not the record. What is the record? No. Pirates 2, I don't know what the number is, but Pirates 2 has the record. Really? 121, maybe? More. I th I, really? I, I'm not sure. I think wow. it's in the 130s. I'm not a Pirates fan. I, I love Johnny Depp. I don't, I don't <laughs> like that movie, the first one, and I wouldn't yeah. bother seeing the second one, but I would tell my audience that, that uh, Toby's performance in Spider-Man 3, and the move, the whole movie Spider-Man 3, mm -hmm. is the best. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they wove into, the, they, they, they managed to weave in all three villains perfectly. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was, you know, because sometimes that can be overkill. Yeah, it's very tricky. And yeah, that tricky. worked out very well. Oh, good. Excellent. I haven't been a Pirates fan since Willie Stargell's death. <laughs> Sandman Unbelievable. Yeah. Right? The, yeah, the, yeah. The effects, the effects are incredible. effects are unreal. Yeah. The, the Venom character, yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, and uh, even even some of these new guys who come into the, the you know, your arch enemy, the, the, um, the Venom, the, the yeah, kid. Yeah, Eddie, uh, 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 Topher right. Grace. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's real good. He's I mean, really funny. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a really, really good film. I don't know what else to say except uh, congratulations, man. Thank you. you you've yeah. done a great job yeah. on this thing. Thank you. Yeah. It's unreal. The and effects I, in the trailer alone, because I've only seen the trailer of uh, the Sam. Oh, guy. wait till you see it, Artie. It looks I mean, so it's cool. Amazing. Really amazing. I don't, I don't know how you did it. I mean, I don't even know how they make a movie like this because people think I'm in Everybody's the business. Everybody's trying me. to figure out Sandman. Right. You know, yeah. how do you do that? I go, I'm a radio guy. Yeah. But like when my parents ask me how stuff like that gets done, I just give them an answer. You make up something. I make up, I go, you know, green screening. And <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, I know, guys. I know my buddies work construction. They're like, it's easy. It's all on a computer. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll bring a computer into work right, tomorrow. Right, let me see you do it. <laughs> make Spider-Man 3 for me. Yeah. Go ahead and, and make that happen. Yeah, right. That's, That's funny. right. Yeah, so I don't know, man. This is a... Uh, this is good. Yeah, it's great. So then you're going to want to go do a couple of independent films for a while. Yeah, come what do you got do... coming up next? What are you going to do? I don't have anything right now. I'm just, uh, you know, just reading scripts and stuff. Can you chill now for like a couple of months and not even do anything? Yeah, definitely. That's a nice life. Yeah. I gotta it doesn't go. make you nervous because some people get, you know, hey, I got to go do something opposite. I got to do something serious. I got to, you know, I got to um, show people my range. No, I mean, I, I want to do different stuff just to do different stuff, but I'm not worried about it. Yeah, do Spider-Man 4. Don't In an English accent if you want range. Just do it. <laughs> Hold yeah. out. Act like you're not that interested. <laughs> yes. If I were you, I'd call up... Uh, you're Luke, looking at $30 million. Call Lucas Haas and go, hey, I'm thinking about getting the pussy posse back together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Lucas is the only one left. <laughs> It's uh, Lucas is in a good film in the Tribeca <laughs> Film Festival this year. Yeah. What is it, Hansi? Yeah, Toby, um, I was reading uh, an article, but I just wanted to actually confirm it with you. Um, apparently, like, you've been fussing over, like, <laughs> making, getting, getting a specific water. And, what? like, if you don't like, get this water, like, that you drink whatever, that you make a big fuss over it, like, apparently over, like, couple hotel places you've been at. Has success gone to your head, Toby? Have you, you changed? You have to have a specific water? Yeah. Do you need a specific water? Uh, no, I, I don't. I, I happen to have a water that I generally drink. but What is that water? But it's called Ice Age. But, I mean, I'll drink 
any water, pretty much. You know, <laughs> I, I don't li- I don't like Evian. You know, I don't but, either. Uh, but I w- I would prefer tap water anywhere over over a certain water. So, you know. See, I feel the same way about water. Yeah. Robin knows this. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't like the way Evian tastes. Right. Yeah, it doesn't taste good. doesn't taste right. Yeah, it's weird. And that's all I drink is water. Yeah, so I me too. So I seem to have acquired some sort of weird thing. What about reports that you have to travel with entourages of 10 to 20 people? Is that true? That you are. <laughs> no, it's no, not true. No, no, I mean, you know, uh, there's definitely a little group of us that go, but it's not, you know, it's just kind of normal. Do you only do private plane at this point? Uh, no. <laughs> When's the last time you flew commercial? <laughs> of course. You, 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 you fly commercial? Uh, yeah. When was that? <laughs> I don't think you've been doing that since Spider-Man 1. Um, no, I, 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 I do it, yeah. In 1994. <laughs> right, where'd you go? <laughs> the studio flies you around, right, to promote? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. I mean, they've, they, there's, they chartered planes and stuff because there's a big group of, you know, yeah. so many cast members and people organizing the thing, so they chartered these big planes. The last commercial flight he took was to that Rodney special he shot. <laughs> <laughs> hey Ralph, you're on the air. Hey now. Hey now. Hey Toby, you're you're great in these movies. Thank uh, you. Consistently, you're you're the you're the best thing about these movies. Thank I mean, you. Like you did, like you just do that Peter Parker thing, just great. And in this movie, you were particularly great in it. But I'm wondering, does it bother you? I mean, they cast these male roles: Gray Sandman, you know, Topher Grace was great. All these guys, but there's no hot chicks in it. What like, about Ron like, Howard's daughter? She oh, was please. beautiful. She had a double chin. She had a double chin. Oh, uh-huh. stop it. Do you no, think she- uh, Ron Howard's daughter? Is hot? Yeah, she's so beautiful. Beautiful. She's gorgeous. I mean, I mean, how about Kirsten Dunst? Can she get those teeth fixed or worse than oh, Venom? Oh, what about oh, that? That okay, he makes no. a legitimate point. Yeah, the right. teeth. What's up? You know what? You see, I feel wasn't that did, did, on that big screen tower? <laughs> didn't, didn't those? Like, <laughs> but really? Toby can't function right now. <laughs> he's, he's about to pass out. <laughs> we better get him some yeah. oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. One more question, real quick. <laughs> one more question. Well, one more question. <laughs> 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 question. Go ahead. But, well, first of all, you got to admit. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> if, if if in a Spider-Man movie, if if Peter Parker, who is supposed to be a nerd, mm. is getting these super ridiculous Hollywood-looking hot chicks, that would be ridiculous, would it? Y- not? You wouldn't buy it. His love. She's is, the hottest girl in his school. Yeah, Kirsten Dunst yeah. isn't the most hot chick on the planet. Well, please. But if, it was, if, it was, if it was Pam Anderson walking in and Spider-Man's <laughs> banging her, you'd go, this is ridiculous. <laughs> but, all right, but you're suspending disbelief when the, this Venom stuff is dripping all over him, too, so I'd rather look at a hot chick. No, a girl well, with messed uh, up teeth. Well, maybe Ralph is saying they could have hot chicks walking by. <laughs> no, a girl really? with messed Peter up Walker. teeth would be with Peter Parker. And she'd be the hottest girl in the high school. Yeah. She wouldn't get her teeth fixed as an actress? Like they, She's, she's poor, remember? Well, she is an actress, by the way. That's right. Uh, a successful movie, one. She's an actress, so she should get her teeth fixed. Well, it's not hurting her, by the way. Yeah, exactly. She's got yeah, a big career. Yeah, I can't get to the movies without seeing her. Why you, is that why in real life you broke up with her, because of her teeth? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? Yes, yes it is. Yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, in question. Spider-Man 4, she's going to have braces. Oh, good, <laughs> good, good. good. See. La- last question, Toby. Was Kirsten Dunst high when she said that, that, that you couldn't make another Spider-Man without her? Well, listen, this is how she feels. We we went through that, Ralph. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, He's so insulting. Like <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, let's go to Joey Boots. There's a lot of questions for you. Great. All right, go hey, ahead, hey, Joey. Hey, Toby, how you doing, brother? I love the first Good. two movies. Thank you. Wait to see this one. I, I, got a, I got a couple of questions. First one. Is that a cod piece that you wear in the costume, or is that your real bones? <laughs> That's a good question. That's a legitimate question. I, I wear, um, I actually wear like a dance belt type of thing. There's like a, you know, built in like swim trunks. There's like built in. But there's an underwear. enhancement to show. No, 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 no. It's 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 just the opposite, basically. It's it's. It the, shrinks you. Well, it doesn't it just keeps everything in place and nice and compact? And a lot of these fight scenes that I'm looking at, yeah. I'm always wondering, and maybe this breaks the illusion. I don't know. But a lot of times, am I looking at sort of a cartoon, an enhanced computer, or am I looking at you in the fight scenes? It's mostly... There's a stuntman. It's, it's, uh, it's a combination of all three. Animation, right. a stuntman, and myself. It depends. If it looks... It, you know, it depends what it looks like. If it looks like it's impossible for us to pull off with human beings, then it's a computer. Probably is, right. 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 And, and so your penis is enhanced in a sense because that's not your real man bulge. <laughs> no, what he's, what he's no, saying no. is he's so big it. they have to diminish him. Oh. They put him in something to make him look smaller. Is that right? Uh, Brian, go ahead. You're on the air. Uh, that's, quite, that's quite an accomplishment then. 
You know, Artie Ace Bandages, his penis. He just did oh, an episode Artie, of Entourage. Artie, you go for this dancer's oh, really? cup thing. Rescue, Rescue me. Rescue me, he just shot. And he uh, oh, oh. he had a love scene, and he, he put an Ace Bandage around his penis. Yeah, he tied himself down. <laughs> I mean, come on. Huh? You know? Do you get a boner in a love scene what? sometimes? Oh, that's why. I get it. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm trying to figure that See, out. See, he gets it. He's an actor. <laughs> but why, why not be like me? In private parts, I had a boner in almost every scene. <laughs> Did you really? I, honest to God. <laughs> that's Even great. with the guys. Why not? Yeah. No, not with guys. Uh, I mean, I'd be like with my co-star, a beautiful That's girl, funny. and we'd kiss, and I'd put my hand on her titties, and I'd, I'd get hard. Uh, well, he I, couldn't afford that. He's got a fiancé now. If he got uh, a bone with wife. Kirsten Dunst, he'd have to explain that, you know, because he used to be with that girl. Yeah, well, he's over, Kirsten. Are you getting any boners <laughs> anymore? Kirsten Dunst? That's probably why he kept her in the movie. Look, I never <laughs> penetrated. I will say that. <laughs> never. <laughs> yes, uh, Brian, go ahead. Hey, now, Howard. Hey, now. I was just wondering, uh, do you think he, uh, Toby's an A-list celebrity? Absolutely. Absolutely. Spider-Man. Toby, you think you're A-list, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I feel like I work with the best people, so. Right. And, and when you go to parties, they don't keep you behind a rope or Who something. Who do you waiting. think is A-list? I can usually get through the door. Yeah, well, why, do you not think that Toby's A-list? Who's A-list well, I mean, to you? I mean, listen, uh, it's been a while since you had an A-list celebrity on the show, and uh, <laughs> if it wasn't for Spider-Man, would he even be A-list? What are you talking about? What are you t- we had, what uh, makes an A-list? We have Gilbert Gottfried on today. Yeah. He's about as A That's as you great. get. <laughs> Look, who's more A list than Alec Baldwin? We get him. Alec's yeah. in here all the time. <laughs> Can't wait till we have a table. You yelling at your kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, it is great to have you here. Thank you. I am proud of this movie. I am proud to tell people to go see it. I can't believe there aren't more guys from the staff who aren't running in here with questions because they're all Spider Man geeks and they absolutely love the film. Yeah. Uh, Dave has a question. Okay. Hey, uh, Toby, big fan. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Thanks. Good, 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 man. Uh, just wondering if you ever uh, banged Kirsten in the Spider-Man suit. <laughs> Have you do ever, you do that? Like, look, you're on this set a long time. Your fiancé comes by, let's say. Right. And you're in your Spider-Man yeah. costume. Do you ever right. say, hey, you know what? I'm going to have sex with you in my Spider-Man costume. You know, there would be it would be impossible. There'd be no way to, you know, I guess you could drop them, drop the drawers. Because it's one piece. Right. The whole thing is one oh, piece. Oh, is it? I yeah. thought it was two. Yeah, no, it's all one piece. Oh, so you've never had sex in the Spider-Man outfit? No, I haven't. You but haven't you had... think as Venom, you know, when you're, you know, in the... Right, dark, like it would know, just like, get yeah, you there. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, let's go to Max. Max, go ahead. This is your hey, chance. Yeah, what's going on, guys? Hey, uh, Max. Hey, Toby, I gotta say, even though it was a small part, but uh, you and Fear and Loathing was, was one of my favorite scenes you've ever done. Oh, thank you. But, uh, Aunt May, is she on your list of, uh... Did you bang Aunt May? Heard? The woman who plays Aunt May. Well, I will say, in regards to that, that she's a very beautiful woman. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, if you're into that, we got Blue Iris. Oh. That's right. He he doesn't want to talk about the time he banged Aunt May. <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not commenting. I'm not confirming nor denying that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, man. All right. And one last question from Joey Boots, and then we're going to wrap things up. Go ahead, Joey, because Toby's got a lot of interviews. Hey, Howard, I'm back again. Hey, listen, Toby, are you disturbed by the fact that, being that you're cute and all, that a lot of gay guys really jerk off to your image? Oh. oh. That's true. Interesting. Are you becoming a gay icon? Are you a icon? gay icon? Uh, I'm not aware of that, but you know, I, no, I, no, I, I got, I got, I got three friends that are gay, and they all love the hell out of you, and they masturbate to you daily, <laughs> daily, <laughs> daily. Wow, <laughs> it's, it's got to make you feel good in some way. I wish gay men would masturbate to me. <laughs> Nobody masturbates to me. <laughs> Well, let me tell you something. Um, Do you worry now because uh, there were, between films, there were a couple of shots of you in the tabloids, you know, commenting on your physique. So now there's a body image thing with you. Yeah, I don't I don't really, I'm not that concerned about it. I yeah. mean, and, and that was also from after Seabiscuit and Spider-Man 2, I had to, I was so extreme, you know, for Seabiscuit, I got down to like 139. Right. And for me, I'm like a 155 to 160 kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And I got down to 139 and it was just miserable. So I think I, I kind of, you know, rebounded Over, the other yeah, way. Yeah. And, you know, I just want to be healthy, so I'm not really worried about people. Yeah, but they love stuff. to get pictures of you after a Spider-Man oh, movie yeah. on the beach with your pot belly. Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah, cause well, you... there was one picture, too, where I was, like, joking around with my friends. And, and I, poked out. I totally stuck out my gut, and of course. <laughs> and it was somewhere, I just thought there was no way there were photographers. But I did, and I went, you know what, that's going to end up somewhere. <laughs> and, and it, it did. did. <laughs> and it did, you're right. Yeah, I was like, man, Toby's really letting himself go. Yeah, he's letting go. Yeah. go. What's he doing? Yeah, you can end up doing that, you know. Someone's out of control. <laughs> there you go. 
go, Audie. My favorite was Tubby McGuire. Yeah. Oh, that, was, that was good. It is embarrassing, right? I like, well, to me, it's funny, you know, because no. I don't know. I don't care. You don't care about that Not stuff. Really. Uh, Dave, quickly, go ahead in Cleveland. Hey, uh, Howard, two questions. Why won't uh, Toby do the Letterman show? And uh, you should have had Evil Dave uh, call in and ask him that question. Is that true? You don't do Letterman? No, I did Letterman uh, yesterday. Oh. I don't know. Yeah, where are you? I uh... assume it aired last night, but I don't know. Where did you hear that he won't do Letterman? Uh, Dave was saying it he all was talking week about on it. the show that yeah. uh, Spider-Man 3 was coming out, but Toby yeah. McGuire wouldn't do yeah. it. I, I, I didn't. I didn't do. I I just hadn't been on the show for like four years or something. And was there a reason? I mean, were you upset about something he did? No, it was mostly just like scheduling stuff. Oh, yeah. And so Letterman was just trying to pump it up or something. He was. Yeah. I mean, I think it was. I think it was hard to coordinate me getting on the show. So he was kind of pumping it, but busting my chops uh, and okay. whatever. And and it it worked because then I was like, all right, I got to get on the yeah, show now. The show. Yeah, so so he's very clever like that. I got to say, you know your A-list when you do Letterman and you don't even know if it aired or not. You <laughs> there know? you go. That's, that, that would be a sign that of is, I assume it aired. I don't know. And, and, and to, to any other A-listers out there who, who don't come and do the show, I got to say, it's uh, Howard is safe. It's okay to do the show. It's That's a good right. show. I'm a good guy. Yeah, he's well, a good guy. We Thank do you. have a lot of A-listers in here. In fact, next week, Henry Hill will be by. I don't wow. know if you know that. Not very many people get Henry That's Hill. Right. Uh, Irish John, go ahead. You're on with Toby real quick. Hey, Toby. Looking forward to the movie. Listen, does Stan Lee run around the uh, Spider-Man set uh, boring everybody with his stories of how he created Spider-Man? Is Stan Lee annoying on the part? set of Spider-Man is the question. <laughs> no. Well, first of all, he's not annoying. And, and uh, you know, he's he was on the set I think one day. Right. He's oh. in one scene. Yeah. He's in yeah. one scene in every but Spider-Man But are movie. people yeah. reverential yeah. of him because he created Spider-Man? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's great. And he's not, you know, he's not, he's busy guy still. So he's not, you know, reminiscing about mm -hmm. the past. He's doing stuff. So how many days did you work on this film? I mean, how much of your life did this take up? Oh, boy. I mean, I think, I, I think we're like maybe 110 days shooting or 120 days or now, something. I'm not good at math, but I, I think that's almost two years. No. <laughs> 110 days is well, two years, I'm pretty sure. it is two years. You're right. No, right. it's not. No. Yes, no, it is. It's, it's two years. days is not two years. <laughs> two You're years. making me crazy. <laughs> you don't know math. Do the math. Take out your calculator. He I didn't say weeks. He said days. Well, I think 10 days is two years. Robin's right. actually a little confused here. I am. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, so you spent a couple of months on the film. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and now we're going to see what happens. Will you go see this with an audience? Yeah, you will. Yes, you will go to one of the openings. This yeah, weekend. I probably I don't know if I go Thursday night because they do like the midnight show right. or Friday night or something. But I like to see it with the fans. That's that's the most fun of of um, you know you go to the screenings and. They're fine, you know. Yeah. It's and people are excited about this movie even at the press screenings and the like Hollywood type of thing. But to go with the fans who paid and who are there the first day or the second day, that's the most exciting part. Now, can you tell, are you too close to the the product itself, or can you sit there and say, yeah, it's good? I, I like it. Uh -huh. yeah. I've read two different quotes from you. One yeah. of them you say, gee, I think this is the best Spider-Man, and the other one you were like, oh, yeah, it's okay. Well, there was an article that this guy asked me before I had seen it if I thought it was better than the other ones. Yeah. And I said, well, I don't know. I think it's it's got elements that have the potential to make it a better film, but but we'll see. Right. And, um, you know, right now I'm most excited about it. If you ask me in five years looking back, I may have a different answer. I don't know. But right now I feel like it's the best one. I, I feel that way, too. Yeah. I think now, I really, truly do. I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. I tell you the you. truth. Carrie, you're, and I've said it without you being here. Mm -hmm. Carrie, you're okay. on the air. Oh, Howard, thank you so much for picking me up. Toby, <clears throat> I am so excited to talk to you, and we can't wait for Friday. Oh, thank you. I'm excited. my son's eighth birthday that day. Oh, wow. We're taking him to see the show, and I'm just thrilled to be able to tell him that I talked to you. Oh, cool. What's your son's name? His name's Will. Will? Well, tell Will I said happy yeah. birthday. Don't you think oh, uh, an eight-year-old kid might be scared out of his brains with this movie? You know, I think, actually... I think the okay. second one is scarier. You do? Yeah. He's seen them all. He's seen every on-demand about Spider-Man that's on there right now. Yeah, an eight-year-old yeah, can handle it. Will knows if he cries in the movie, he gets burnt with a cigarette. But I, I think it's up to There's parents, no too. Who, some... would win, who would win in a fight? Spider-Man? Yeah. Superman? Mm-hmm. 
or Batman? Mm -hmm. And think about your answer before you answer. I have an answer for this. I think it's more even if you take Batman and Spider-Man. No, 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 no. no, no. I'm leaving Superman in there. I'm going to tell you. you I've got the whole answer. (laughs) Batman doesn't have a shot. He's just not even on the same level. You'd think Superman... But Spider-Man's foes are always stronger than him, so Spider-Man has to use his brain to figure stuff out. He would, like, get some kryptonite webbing and handle the whole thing. You know, that's the problem with Superman, that damned kryptonite. Everybody knows well, about it. As a matter of fact, there was a comic book where Batman fought Superman and yeah. won because of kryptonite. Yeah. Right. Now, so the answer would really be Superman. And any, any common sense person would say, well, wait a second. Superman could just use his heat vision... And burn, and burn your, up the web. burn you up. Yeah. And not even come near you to fight you. He could fight you from another planet. Unfortunately, he never does that. And, and everybody gets the kryptonite on him. Th- the problem is Batman, <laughs> who's really a simpleton in a sense. Yeah. I mean, he has <laughs> no superpowers. No superpowers. Simpleton. Yeah. I love Batman. And he, so. uh, you know, he defeats Superman in two seconds. Batman Everyone gets near this guy with kryptonite. There's evidently more kryptonite on the planet Batman than there is Batman Earth. creates all of those <laughs> right. gadgets that he uses. <laughs> I know, You're but... You're telling me he's a simpleton. Fuck the characters. I want to see Toby fight Christian Bale. <laughs> <laughs> That would be good. Now, who wins? Toby versus Christian. Do you do any kind of like karate training and stuff to prepare for these films? Um, I've done some different kinds of, you know, fighting training, yeah. Right. Martial arts? Martial arts and boxing. I think and, some dance. I've yeah. seen, I see dance. In yeah, there. there's a little bit of dance. Yeah. Who wins? Spider-Man versus any black guy? Okay. <laughs> in his 30s. Uh, that's silly. If Spider-Man was, if, I gotta go. If Spider-Man was in... Go. Oh, go. Oh. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Right, who cares? Let's go. <laughs> what did she say? You she had to let us know. She got to go wide. She right. she didn't want to hang up on us. <laughs> She's got to go raise Will. Very polite lady. <laughs> what if is Spider Man was in Brokeback Mountain. Would he have let Heath Ledger oh, turn please. him over like that and bang him? Possibly. No, no he has way. a sensitive side. He would have webbed him. <laughs> Rob, go ahead. Come You're on fruity. the air. First off, Robin, I love your big black titties. Oh, your silly man. Thank you. That's very nice. Uh, real quick, Toby. Um, <laughs> Kristen Dunst, did she, uh, did she toss you a salad? And oh, what's oh. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, my she didn't God. toss you a salad, did she? <laughs> I love Howard. Oh, my God, that's crazy. Right, he looks right at she, me. It's a legitimate question. It's <laughs> a legitimate All right, let's, Howard, yeah, go ahead. Do you care that there's a bunch of guys out here who are, like, sort of homo for Toby? Like yeah, well, Jason that's what I was saying. And Steve, the intern, that all want to sort of meet him. All right, if you don't mind, real quick, let Jason and Steve. Yeah. The, I just all want right. to see how all ridiculous right. this gets. Get the Geek Squad in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, real quick, the Geek Squad, and then and then you okay. get, then you get out. I'll, of I'll here. take this moment to say happy birthday to my buddy, who's a big fan of yours, Mark Grochon. Mark right. Grochon, I'm sure he's very right. important. Big fan of yours. All right, Jason, go ahead. You're first. Jason is a producer on our show. Toby, let me just kiss your ass. Spider Man <laughs> Three was awesome. All right, all the Spider Mans are awesome. Thank and Wonder you. Boys is awesome. Thank you. You are the man. Thank you. It's awesome to have you here. Wow. All right. Thank you. That's all I have to say. All I wanted right. a big fanfare for you today. Why don't you do a curtsy? <laughs> Why don't you blow be, Toby? There should be, there should be <laughs> trumpets. I expect that next time. <laughs> Steve the intern, I heard like, Steve the intern, he, he goes up to Gary, he goes, I don't want to be a problem, but do you think Toby would sign my, and he start, had a list of things for Toby. Oh, God. And we told him no. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, all right, here's your chance I now. didn't want, I don't want to insult you, but like Spider-Man is like, the greatest oh, well, character that, of all time. How's that insulting him? No, no, no. No, I didn't want to insult Toby, he, a great actor like Jason says. Wonder Boys is a great movie, but like for me, you're Spider-Man. What was you your know favorite I mean? scene in Wonder Boys? In Wonder Boys with the dog when the dog gets shot. Oh, okay. I was just testing you. <laughs> no, no, no. This, no, kid's, no. I'm genuine. this kid doesn't get out at all. <laughs> that was old Yeller. <laughs> yeah, trust old me. Yeller. And, um, but, but to me, you're still... Peter Parker, yeah. and, and no, if other people were in that role, it wouldn't be as great. I mean, you're Peter Parker, man, Thank and so you. like, I don't want to insult you as an actor to have you sign a but Spider-Man comic. Them. Oh, but, I don't know. But don't it sign would, it. To me, it would mean, <laughs> Wait it would mean the world to me to have your something. signature. I've actually, no, I've actually signed a few comics before. No. But that brings up something. Do you, uh, do you think in the future? Uh, do you look ahead, you know, at other people's careers and go, "Oh my God, I've got those conventions in uh, my future." No, I, I don't well, really. That's something fall back on. <laughs> right. you lose all your money. Yeah, exactly. You'll always oh, have an income. I'll be signing right. trading cards at conventions and stuff. I don't think that's a bad thing. I mean, <laughs> you, George Takei George Takei made a fortune doing that. You don't mind looking Maybe at you and I will go on the road one day, Howard. It might be. You know, you could screw up in life. <laughs> right. You do the, the, the talks every uh, every other month on the cruise ship. Welcome to the Spider-Man cruise. Hey, Steve, I tell you what. Yeah. If you let Sal and Richard teabag no. you, I'll get Toby uh, to sign your comic I, I can't do that again. You get a teabag. <laughs> 
again? I'll get you that again. <laughs> again? <laughs> I'll get you the Stones tickets. <laughs> That's you right. You got teabagged. Yeah, oh, you yeah, got yeah. a dick to the face. Yeah, oh, no. yeah, you, oh. had a, you had a penis on your nose. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> Spider-Man's my <laughs> hero, but... <laughs> All right, Steve, the intern, taking a smack in the head from uh, uh, Richard's uh, penis. Five smacks to the lower. face, Howard. Five smacks. Five. No, one, one, smack. one smack. One uh, smack. There it is. Lower. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, oh. Down. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He don't even know. Oh, oh. Can he do Three, <laughs> four, one more. Five. Oh. Let's go uh, one more time to Ralph. What is it, Ralph? Batman would win in a fight. No. Why? Because he's the smartest of them all. No, he's not, dude. Why? Uh, by Spider-Man is a uh, scientist. He, he, no, he's not. Yes, he is. He's, he's, he's very he's smart, brilliant Spider-Man. Student. He's, he's a, a photographer. He's a student. <laughs> Batman, Batman builds everything. He's a detective. He tracks people down. He's going to outwit everybody. Batman's a dude. Lex Luthor can't beat Superman. Batman's not beating you know, Superman. Jason. I'm convinced there isn't a woman on the planet who wants to bang us right now. <laughs> 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 I mean, women are drying up as they Listen to this geeky conversation. <laughs> Nobody wants us. I don't think the pussy posse talked about this once. <laughs> yeah, when you were with David Blaine, did you guys talk about who would win in a fight? No, of course not. You didn't? That never came up. No. David Blaine would make Jason and Steve disappear right now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. The Spider-Man movies are better than the uh, Superman movies. Yeah. Oh, my God. That last Superman was horrible. Horrible. Really? I like the last Superman. What's oh, wrong with you guys? Uh, I've watched that like three or four times. Maybe it's woman Superman. Superman was know. good, but the Spider-Man's best, awesome. The best series are the X-Men movies and the Spider-Man movies. Well, they you're are. right about that. And better than Batman because they screwed up Batman, no, too. No, Batman Begins was great. No, it was. No, it was. was. It was mediocre. Bruce Wayne. It's you're Bruce crazy. Wayne. I didn't go to see Bruce Wayne. I went to see Batman. Oh. Right. You can't beat the Beverly Hills Cop. Series. Oh, thank you, Marty, for throwing that in. Axel Foley. I like movies. all superhero movies. Are the Spider-Man movies the best movies of a superhero genre that you know of? Um, You've seen them all, I'm sure. Well, I think that we've done done really well with all three of the movies. There are certain superhero movies, like I like Superman 1 and 2, the originals. Mm -hmm. um, I like this last one, but 1 and 2, I think, were especially good. And you didn't like 3 with Richard Pryor as the arch villain? Uh, <laughs> I thought uh, likes that one. Empire Strikes Back was great. The first Matrix was great. That's you know, true. Yeah, Matrix. yeah. yeah That's I mean, true. that was a fantastic movie. So I think there's a lot of good ones, but I feel like we've been pretty consistent with all three of them. Did right. George Lucas ruin the Star Wars with the last one? Oh, here you go with George Lucas Again, leave okay, him alone. I'm not asking you, Robin. <laughs> Toby. What? Didn't those last ones suck? <laughs> the last, the last the Star last Wars. The last three uh, Star Wars. Be honest. Um. Uh, yes. Well, I, I, no, there were certain things that were great about them. I, you know, I, I can't say that all of my wishes were fulfilled there. That's right. That's right. They weren't. But he created it, Ralph. He can ruin it. <laughs> uh, what is it, Boba? Hey, how you doing, Howard? Hey, Toby, I'm looking forward to the new Spider-Man movie, but did you ever give it to uh, Christian up the old poop shoot? Christian? What? Christian, Kirsten. <laughs> Christian Bale? That's a disgusting question. <laughs> what about anal sex with Kirsten does? Did it happen? It's just like your M.O. here. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, he banged Seabiscuit. Ah, nobody right. asked nobody about Seabiscuit romance. Nobody did. That's Toke, right. Toke wanted to get that question in, but I don't have any more time. I want to let Toby out of here. Toby, you've been a great sport. Uh, thank you uh, right, for thanks. coming in. And I really do look forward to uh, looking at the box office gross. I believe this will be the biggest grossing Spider-Man of all time. Oh, thank you. And yeah. uh, I think you did a great job. I recommend to my entire audience you go see. Have some fun. Go to the movies it, this weekend. It, it is a phenomenal movie. Really just state of the art. Howard's thank even you. already said he's going to see it again. And it's right. like that kind of film oh, where you go, yeah, oh, i got to see it again. Oh, well, look, good. I've seen Spider-Man 1 and 2 maybe 20 times. My daughter's a Spider-Man freak, my youngest oh, daughter, cool. and we just, oh, wow. well, this past weekend, we had to sit and watch Spider-Man. <laughs> now, do you sit it. at home and watch yourself? Uh, no, not usually. I do. <laughs> you do? I watch private parts. Every, I have it on a continual loop. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll see the movie three or four times, uh, you know, while I'm promoting it, so then I'm, I'm good for a while. Right. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Right. Anything else would be bizarre. Right. right. I, you don't want to walk in and, you know, have people look at you, see you watching your that's movie. That's right. Yeah, you, you turn it off when someone comes in <laughs> yeah. the room. He, he isn't Marlo Thomas, who has people over and then plays her old that girls. That's right. Uh, Toby 
Boys and Spider-Man 3, Friday, theaters everywhere. You will not be disappointed. I think you'll all be calling me on Monday saying, man, that was a really good, good film. If Night at the oh, cool. Museum is sold out, I'll check it out. All right. All right. Well, fair <laughs> enough. Okay. We'll be back right after these words. So, Toby. Yes. That was pretty relentless in there. It was coming from all angles. Thank you. Really. Yeah, I don't know. I felt good. I, I uh, you know, used my martial arts training to, uh, to you know, throw, throw, deflect. You almost had to be Spider-Man in there. That's you know, right. Howard was the evil villain asking no. you about every girl you've ever been with. And... I, you know what? I don't see Howard like that. I, I just see him, um, I see him as a softy. But all in all, you're doing a lot of press. You're doing, you know, constantly for this movie. Yes. How does he rank as far as an interviewer and with Robin and Artie kind of chiming in? What's it like in comparison? Well, it's, um, I think, well, first of all, I think he's an excellent interviewer uh, because, you know, a lot of these shows, there's a lot more prep to it, and, and in here you just you just show up, so so it's a lot different in that way. But it's enjoyable, though. Yeah, I have a good time here. All right, well, thanks for coming down, Toby. Good Thank luck you. with the new movie All right, movie and cool. Thanks so much. Yeah. Toby, do you mind before you go? No, no, not at all. Sorry to uh, put you through that. This is really no, no, please. Quit. Quit. That's all right. <laughs> You're allowing this? All right. Thank you so much. What's that? Oh, that's Steve. Steve. Steve the geek. Steve, tell me how you Steve couldn't pee. Tell me how you couldn't pee the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I didn't leave the movie at all. I had to pee uh, in the middle of the movie. I watched the whole thing. And you were the man. Thanks, right, bro. They do it, are they? No, my kids and John's kids are in the green room, and they're watching Mission Impossible 3 and playing with games. Oh, good. All the guys, uh, you know. No, they're not, Gary. I saw them right behind. Ah. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kid came right up behind Gary. Hey, you got the kids are here for Take Your Kid to Work Day. Sal's Sal kids, fun, yeah. John Hines' kids, and Gary's kids. And oh. they're going to play a game later. Sweet How Sal's. well do you know your dad for prizes? Well, if they come to dad's work and they can't really watch him work. Stupid. Yeah. I used to bring the kids here and I'd make them leave the room. <laughs> you had, I think you had your youngest. Was that Sal's kid, Gary? Yeah. That was, yeah. It's one of Sal's gay kids. Oh, stop it. Uh, he can hear, Artie. Oh, I'm sorry. Gay like no. happy. Do you know what? Sal just, you, I had the button down. Sal just goes, you effing idiot. Yeah. Sal, so don't, don't, don't curse. Like, don't don't curse in front of your kids. I know. I re you react weird. In front of, I'm sorry. It was a defense mechanism. <laughs> see that big window? Oh, no. You can't see him from me. Yeah. That was the fat guy. You call Santa Claus from Elf? There we go. <laughs> so yeah, you know what? You know what, Sal? Gay can mean happy. What you said has one meaning. <laughs> hey, uh, what's your kid's name, Sal? Antonio. Hey, Antonio. Antonio! Say hello. Talk to the microphone over there. Hi, Antonio. Hi, Alex. How you doing? <laughs> Good. You going to play the game later? See how well you know your dad? Yep. All right, we'll get some prizes for you. You know what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> yeah. How old are you? Seven. Yeah. Sal, a good dad? Yes. The best? Yes. Uh, you sure you don't want somebody else for a dad? Howard, Howard, what other, da what other dad would get, dress you up in kiss makeup with him every uh, year for Halloween? Does he do that? Your dad dresses you up in kiss makeup? Um, sometimes. Yeah, you like that, huh? Yeah. You, you like his? Yeah, kind of. Kind of. What's okay. your favorite song? Um, Rock and Roll All Night. Wow, he really does know his wow. stuff, this kid. You seem like a nice kid. Oh, stop, Sal. <laughs> say, uh, say, Dad, stop creeping everybody out. Dad, stop creeping everybody out. <laughs> All right, Antonio. I'll see you in here later. Cute, cute kid. You, I want to see you beat those Delabate kids in the, in the game. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good kid. He doesn't seem to think that's going to be a problem at all. I actually feel a little sorry. Oh, Sal so just go say this, say that, say this, say that. The kid doesn't know where to look. Right. Dad's a, uh, Sal's a retarded stage father. <laughs> It'd be funny if Sal's kid drew like a mustache and goatee on himself, like so he could look like Sal. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. He's got are his other kids here. I know he's got. Yeah. No, he just uh, brought one. Uh, just Antonio. But he's going to play, we're going to play a game. How well do you know your dad? It's going to be Gary's kids versus Sal's kids versus John Hines' kids. You know. Yeah, John Hines' daughters are here. When you see a kid like that, it does make you, it makes you hate like predators on kids so much more because it, they trust a, a, adults so much. You know what I mean? Well, that's like, their first mistake. Like, the, but yeah, but they have such a trusting, loving, like, you know, what, what imagine are you trusting, so sweet and innocent. Imagine trusting Sal because, you know, <laughs> well, especially oh, their parents. When you're yeah. a kid, you, you know, 
psychologically, you always think your parents are the best, Absolutely. you know, when you're a little kid, because how else would you think? I mean, you come from them, so they're, they are they're godlike the best. like to you. Right. Yeah. But imagine, like, Sal's giving you your guidance. Sal is God. You think I should tell the kid to pull him aside and just go, listen, whatever Sal tells you, ignore? <laughs> I got a feeling at home Sal's a, a good father, a better father than we think. I no, hope. I have a feeling at <laughs> how, home. How is that possible? Wait a minute. Know, no. gonna, you know. You're missing the point. At home, Christine tells the kids just what you just said. You're oh. so right, Robin. <laughs> You're right, I guess. <laughs> ignore Sal. I'd like to do an extensive interview with that kid. I had a baseball coach in Babe Ruth League when I was 13. There's two coaches. They did the exact same thing. One guy would tell you what to do, and the other guy thought the guy was dumb. <laughs> so the guy would give you instructions, and the other guy would pull aside and go, listen, whatever he says, don't listen to right. him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? What are we So now what now are we doing? what do we do? <laughs> uh, ah! Oh! He's got the Baba Booey lips on. I'm going to get Lucas to smack the hell out of him. He's having fun. Sal's kids wearing the big giant Baba Booey lips. Hey, Antonio, good good job. <laughs> Take a look. At, you know what? I have to hire you after you fall. You know, see, at least he's getting to do some of the work his dad does. Right. <laughs> you know what? I do want to teach the kid how to throw a ball, though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think he's going to get his ass Lucas kicked. is out there. Oh, is that Lucas? Yeah. All right. Just stop it with the kid. <laughs> just let them go watch TV. Two maniacs love the kids. So we have the kids here today to watch a movie. Lucas looks like a California kid. He looks like Tanner in the Bad News Bears. He looks like the mother. (laughs) Right. Thank God. Hey, it's Gary Dalbate. It's Take Your Kid to Work Day. This is my oldest son, Jackson. This is my other son, Lucas. Hey, guys. How you doing? Uh, We're playing a game today called Daddy or Dummy. Uh, Very much like the newlywed game. Find out what uh, we know about our kids, what our kids know about us. How do you think we're going to do, Lucas? Great. Um... You think you know the answers to the questions? All of them. But oh, you don't know the questions yet? Yeah. How about you, Jackson? How are you going to do? I think I'm going to do pretty good. Because I'm just older and all more Jackson seems to know a lot about me, too. But uh, I think they're both going to be really funny today. You ready for this? Yeah. All right, let's do it. One, two, three, go! Go! <laughs> Hi, I'm John Hine here with my daughter Rachel and my daughter Emily, and we're going to play Daddy or Dummy. Hopefully, we'll prove that I'm a daddy and not a dummy. How do you guys think we're going to do today? We're going to win. You think we're going to win? We're going to win. Now, you guys have to know a lot about me and what I do. Me too. Okay, Rach. <laughs> no. All right, I think I know a lot about you guys, right? Now, we're, pl- we're playing against Gary's sons and against Sal's son. So who do you think is going to be the toughest competition? Gary's son or Sal's Probably son? Probably Gal's. Gal's house. I think um, Gary's son. Why do you think Gary's sons will be tough? Because they're old. That's true. Antonio is a little bit younger. Do you have any surprises planned when you guys go in there? No, no not really. No? Are you looking forward to meeting Howard? Yes. What about Robin and Artie and Benji and all those and Fred? Yeah, yeah. already met them. Well, you did meet them, but you never met them on the show, right? Yeah, I never did. All right, so, all right, let's, what do you have to say about Dad going into this? Good luck. Thank you. Good luck, Hein family. We'll see how we do. Hey, it's Sal, and I'm here with my son, Antonio, and today we're going to play Daddy or a Dummy. Uh, you're pretty excited, Antonio? Yes. So Antonio's going to answer some questions about me, and I'm going to have to try to get them right. And hopefully we're going to beat the Hein and Delabate family. Right, Antonio? Yes. Because the Hein and Delabate family, they ain't diddly, right? Look at the camera. Right. So you're going down, Hein. You're going down, Hein. You're going down, Delabate. You're going down, Delabate. Down to the ground. Down to the ground. You dirty monkey. <laughs> you dirty monkey. We're beating the nerd and the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Say, we're beating those, the nerd and the monkey. We're beating the nerd and the monkey. Say, jump this, go this, go jump the shark, jump this. Jump the shark, jump this. Hey, kids. Look, Daddy, it's you. <laughs> hey, kids, I bet I can make you laugh. You want me to make you laugh? All right. All right. Okay. Go ahead here. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are too adult for this. <laughs> yeah, look at them. All uh, Lucas all right. is gone. <laughs> Lucas, you're gone, right, man? You like it? Yeah, you like that. 
John Hines' daughters don't like it that much. It's a boy thing. <laughs> That's a boy thing. For you guys, you guys should know your, your sense of humor is never going to get more sophisticated That's than it. that. This is the top. You know, I'm trying to get him to stop doing that at the kitchen table, which right. he does. Antonio, Antonio, you didn't like it so much, Salson. You don't like that kind of fart noise, right? No, I liked it. You liked it? Okay. Yeah. Lucas, you liked it the most, right? Yeah. yeah. Girls, you don't like that when the gas... Not really. It's not ladylike. Okay. All right. That's fair enough. You're nice young ladies, and I can appreciate that. Let me see who we have here. I'll start over with John Hine. John Hine is the host of the wrap-up show. Everyone knows that. He has two beautiful daughters. They're here for Take Your uh, Kid to Work Day. It used to be take your daughter to work. Now it's just take your kid take to work. Take your child. Yeah, the, the guys right. got tired of being left behind, I think. We have Rachel over there. You're 12 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Good for you. Congratulations. And on you that. still you can't vote for American Idol, huh? Nope. Yeah, your dad won't let you. Put your mic up, John. What is that, John? Last night they laid it on pretty thick because of the charity and everything, and I still wouldn't let him vote. More reason not to vote. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I admire your dad for that. Uh, I think uh, all that nonsense with phone calls, to these shows is very bad. Uh, you don't understand that now, but... And you won't understand it later. Don't worry about it. Right. <laughs> All right, Rachel's 12 years old. You're in the sixth grade. Emily is nine years old, and you're in the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. How are you, Emily? Good. Nice to see you. Well, today, we're going to find out how well your dads and you know each other. You think you know your dad pretty well? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Your dad a good guy, or is he uh, kind of silly? He's a good guy, and he's silly, too. Yeah. He's silly, too. Is he too strict? No. No, he's good? Sometimes. <laughs> well, don't ask, too, don't ask too many questions, because <laughs> All right, you might conflict like with the game. Playing the game. Okay. Let's see. The Hind girls. Uh, Emily, you take dance lessons? Mm -hmm. Is that true? Mm-hmm. All right. You want to be a dancer? Yeah. Yeah. Ballet? No. Yeah, well, you can't make money in dance, I'm telling you. Oh, well, you don't know. That Paul Abdul has done pretty well. Well, uh, I would stop that dream immediately. <laughs> uh, Rachel and Emily were opposed to the Sanjaya movement. You must have been happy when Sanjaya got voted off. Mm -hmm. Very happy. Yes. And, uh, Do they go to the American Idol concert? Well, we went one time for, I think it was season three. Uh -huh. It was season four. Or season four, but that's it. That's okay. it. And who did you see? Who was your favorite on stage? Um, I don't know. Carrie uh, well, Underwood. Carrie Underwood, yes. I want to uh, thank both of you for sending me an engagement card. Oh. It was very nice. They actually wrote up an engagement card. Oh, nice. And I like homemade cards, which was yours, and uh, I appreciate that very much. I know that took a lot of work. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, girls. And uh, let's uh, go to Jackson and Lucas Delabate, the Delabate boys. <laughs> Jackson, you're uh, 12 years old. You're in the seventh grade, right? Yep. Uh huh. And Lucas, you're nine years old, and you're in the third grade. I'm coming to your yep. house this weekend for a special dinner. You are? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. I would expect that uh, we'll be playing things together, video games, etc. <laughs> yeah. Because probably. I'm going to be bored with those adults. <laughs> you're going to hang out with the kids. Sitting and listening to your father drone on, I'd much rather play with you kids. <laughs> you're not interested in Gary stories? No. <laughs> He's heard them all. Uh, Jackson and Lucas, uh, how's your new house? Oh, I love it's great. it. great. I love it. You love it. You got your own rooms. Mm -hmm. You guys are athletes. You, you, the rooms are decorated with uh, different athletic games and things like that. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. You got to do your own room? Yep. Wonderful. Yeah. Right. And I understand you recently went to the Allman Brothers concert. Oh, yeah, I did. And you like that? Yeah, yeah I love that. And, uh, Jackson, I can imagine all the girls in school must like you because you are an athlete. You're on the football team. <laughs> they, the girls love that stuff, don't they? Uh, yeah, I guess. Right. Are you popular? Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> Lucas, he's not? He is not popular? Yeah, that's right. He's not popular. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's my turn to trash you. Do, you. do you boys uh, beat each other up and stuff like that? Are you very physical with one another? Not really. No. Are you close? Kind of. trouble. You're close friends? They're not supposed to hit each other, but they often do. You do. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's just say that uh, you boys, uh, we'll see how much you know your father in this game. We'll see if you can beat the hind girls. Now, Antonio, you're on your own today. Yeah. You're all by yourself. You're there with your dad, Sal, Governale. <laughs> You're seven years old, and you're in second grade. Right. Well, you seem very mature. You seem very grown up. He's more mature than Sal. <laughs> yeah, you seem much more together than your own father, <laughs> honestly. Did you see that your dad broke his hand? Yeah. Do you know how he did that? Because um, he fell off the stage. Right. He was so busy trying to make the people laugh that he didn't look where he was going and went flying off the stage. <laughs> By the way, uh, That's pretty silly, isn't it? 
Yes. I'm so is. busy trying to feed you. <laughs> Uh, what is it, Gary? I was going to say, hours of entertainment in my house. The kids love watching that video over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> they loved it. You guys love when Sal falls off the stage? Yeah. yeah. Actually, <laughs> somebody put it on YouTube, and I watch it all day long. I'm like, ah. Uh. Great. Uh, it's on a loop. <laughs> well, yes. Well, uh, okay, Antonio, you're a drummer. Is that correct? Yes. You bowl. Yes. What is your average uh, bowling-wise? Um, High-scoring games? I like to high score. You do like to high score. Good. So does your dad. He likes to score. Uh, and you want to be a comedian just like your dad? You want to tell jokes? Yes. Do you have a joke for us today? Um, well, I'm working on them. Okay. You don't have any material You're for You're writing us your own stuff? Oh, good for you. You want to give him one? Give him the chicken one. What chicken one? Why did chicken oh, cross the river? <laughs> I'll have that one. Okay, we can oh, wait. No problem. Oh, look at Sal being a good dad. Not berating or yelling. Well, no. kids, it's time for your dads to leave the room. I'm going to ask you, all of you, five questions about your dads. These are worth points, and there's money involved. So, I mean, you can win prizes for knowing stuff about your what dad. What your dad is going to say. He's got to answer the question. In fact, too, thanks right? to, yes. In fact, thanks to my, com my, my cousin, um, we've got some money for this game. So you kids could walk out with cash, cold, hard cash. And I'm going to make your dad's promise that you could spend it on whatever you want and they don't control it. What do you think I of that? I know that Lucas and Jackson love cash. Oh, yes, they do. Oh, yeah. Aunt Robin loves to give cash. Thanks, Robin. But thank you. Kids, cash is king. Remember that. It sure is. That's what makes the world go around. You girls over there, you marry a rich man, right? Oh. Has your dad told has you that? The, has your dad told you that yet? Has your dad instructed you never to marry for love but for wealth? Not yet. <laughs> what kind of father are you? Not yet. All right. Well, we're going to find out everything. And uh, we have a bunch of cash here. Thanks to b Suticles. All right. All right. Look, kids, dads, leave the room. Leave me with your children. Good luck, kids. Thank you. All right. Kids, good luck. We'll see what happens. John Hein kissing his kids. <laughs> All right. I'm going to start out easy. Wait till the dads leave. Yeah, like, All right, kids. Make this sure is for... they don't hear the questions. All right. Now we can really talk. <laughs> now that they're out of the room. Be All as right. honest as you can. All right, kids. Here we go. Now, I'll ask you some questions. Be as honest as you can. That's how you win the money. Now, you know? where there are brothers and sisters, can they work as a team? Sure. Who cares? Right. Doesn't make a difference. Poor Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Antonio's fine on his own. He seems to have a, the gift of gab. All right, the first question is worth five points. Now, you got to think about what your dad would say. And I'm going to start out easy, okay? Some of these are more difficult. This is an easy one. Uh, Hind Girls, what is your dad's favorite TV show? You don't even have to whisper. You can just tell us. Don't keep touching those mics. What? Would it be 30 Rock or Scrubs? I don't know. Um, it's probably Scrubs, 30 Rock, The Office. The whole comedy night done right thing. Is what he likes, huh? Is that what he's going to say if we ask him what his favorite we gotta, show we is? we got to pick one show, though. Pick one, girls. We're getting a headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Artie has a headache. The Office, probably. The Office. The Office. Okay. okay. I'm going to go over to the Delabate boys, Jackson and Lucas, Gary's uh, children, and uh, ask you, what is your dad's favorite TV show? Uh, well, I know you used to like The West Wing. Uh, um, maybe Get Smart. No, uh, that's not uh, I would say he used to like the West Wing, and he likes ER, and... Well, you got to pick one, pick though, one. Jackson. West Wing is not on anymore. Yeah, so. I would say ER, then. ER, okay, we'll go with that. Antonio, you got an answer? Um, American Idol. American, American Idol. Idol is your dad's favorite show? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> he watches it a uh, lot. Wow, I didn't know that. Right, Sal just jumped the shark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's very good. I like to hear that. Okay, the next question... And kids, think carefully. you got to come up with the right answer. This is for cash. And what did I teach you at the beginning of this show? What did I say, kids? Repeat after me. Cash is what? Cold. No. Nope. Nope. King. King. <laughs> Everybody at once. Ready? One, two, three. Cash, cash is, is king. king. <laughs> Good. Now you're learning something. These kids better get out of here before they... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to uh, the uh, Delabate boys first. All right. Okay. What is your dad's grossest habit? Oh. Uh, All right. Farty. All right. <laughs> uh, you want to say it? I'm not what sure. What would your dad answer? You got to think now. Uh, okay. All right. 
What do you guys say? What is your dad's grossest habit? Go ahead. Um, well, kind of farting from upstairs. I'm in the kitchen. He's upstairs in his own bathroom, and he farts, and then I hear it downstairs while I'm eating. Wow! And do you, does it make you so ill that you can't, uh, you can't even eat? I almost threw up. It's that, it, why? Is it smell? You could smell it from downstairs? Yeah. It's wow. pretty loud if you can hear it downstairs in the kitchen. Do you have a worry that when you're an adult man that you'll have stinky, smelly gas like that, too? Yeah, well, actually, I eat Indian food, and I kind of vibrated the seats of the car. Right. So so your dad farts upstairs in the bathroom. And can be heard all over the house, yeah. apparently. That's disgusting. Sadly. I'm sorry for you kids. <laughs> you need Antonio, a bigger house. Antonio, what about, what about your dad? What do you think is his grossest habit? Farting. Him too? Same answer? Yeah. All right, okay. Is he loud too? Uh, loud yes. and smelly. Loud and smelly. All right, I'm going to go to the hind girls. <laughs> they seem to have an answer right away. Go ahead, hind girls. Um, he picks my nose in public. He picks your nose in public. I, I wow. don't understand. Why would he do I that? I think it bothers him that if she has, like, burgers or something, it bothers him. Not I don't her. even have them. And he, keeps, he jams his finger up your nose? Yeah, oh, pretty much. That's terrible. Oh. Does he eat it? No. 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 Thank no. God he doesn't. He what puts does he it do? on his finger and shows it to me. Oh. oh, he shows you the booger. That is gross. That is gross. I'm sorry for you, gross. <laughs> I'll contact child services to see if I can't get you out of that house. All right. That's a joke, by the way. All right. Now, this next question is worth 10 points for the kids. Ooh, point level going up. All right. Now, Antonio, I'm going to go to you first. You're, of course, Sal, uh, Sal uh, Governale's son, which is a great thing to be, as you know. <laughs> right? You laugh when I say that. Yes. It's Carrying not on that the great. Governale name. You, will be, you will must have children so you can carry on the great Governale name. You realize that? Yes. All right. It's up to you. Have you picked out a girl yet that you would like to have children with? Um, not yet. Not yet. All right, but you're looking. You're on the look. Okay. What is the last thing your parents fought about? Um, well, about going, to, going on a vacation to Florida. Well, what was the fight? Um, um, because my mom didn't really feel like it, and my dad wanted to um, do it, and... Me and Aaron wanted to do it, and then we, like, started fighting. All right, it was a big fight, huh? Was there a lot of yelling and screaming? Um, not yelling and screaming. We were just, like, getting angry. Getting angry. But your mom gave in. Yes. You won that one. You won it. All right. Let's go over to the Hind Girls. What's the last thing your parents fought about? Well, when we went to Universal, after we went to Disney, my my dad and Emily went to go get a Nathan's hot dog, and me and my mom were saving a table for them, and we kept calling them and calling them, and they wouldn't answer their phone because we couldn't go get food because we were saving the table. Yes, and except my dad doesn't answer his phone. Right. Even though he claims he does, he still doesn't. He so, says it's on And then loud. we thought about wow. how... Um, so in other words, you were saving a table while the other two were busy eating. And they didn't uh, get you any food? No, we we were going to get food while they got it, except we found, like, the one table in the whole park because it's pretty packed. Yes. And we couldn't leave the table because then somebody would take it. So we had to wait till they came back to get the food, and they were taking a really long time, and we didn't know what happened. So when we called them, they didn't answer. So and you had to wait forever. Out. You had yeah. to wait forever. Okay. Now, Della Bate, boys. <laughs> What's the last thing your parents thought thought about? Uh, the last thing my parents thought about was probably having to pick up Murphy's poop outside. Cause, <laughs> uh, yeah, he's totally right. Right. Uh, yeah, because my mom always says she does it, and my Why dad is Why can't you poop inside. in the woods? Right. Now, was Murphy your other brother? No. no. He's, a, he's a dog. Oh, okay. Murphy's a friend of theirs. <laughs> the child they don't talk about. All right, now I'm going to move over to the hind girls. Here is another 10-pointer, okay? Here we go. What is the most annoying thing about your dad? It's a tough one. There's a lot of them, huh? The most. Annoying. John Hine, and host of the wrap-up show. His kids are here for Take Your Daughter to Work. What is one sugar? It's a little. Um, well, uh. there's two things. One, 
<laughs> is um, when he doesn't let us vote on American Idol. Right. Especially this week because it was for charity and we were donating to everybody. But we want us to help happen. the poor little people in Africa. Oh. <laughs> and the other one is... Um, was there was this one time a couple of years ago his blood sticker got low and then he started going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like how does he go crazy when his blood sugar is low? Oh, he can't handle his what? disease. He threw a hanger one time. He threw a hanger at you kids? No, not at us. Just like to the floor. Oh, that's not so bad. One time my blood sugar was low. I started dressing like a woman. No. That's true. Let's hope your blood sugar right. never drops again. That's right. All right. So the most annoying thing about your dad, is it American uh, Idol not being able to call or is it when his blood sugar gets low? The most. The most annoying. Oh, yeah, the calling. Probably. The calling thing on American Idol. Okay. Right. So not that he's diabetic. <laughs> I think the most annoying thing about him is he's diabetic. <laughs> Let's go to the uh, Delabate boys. What is the most annoying thing about your dad, Gary Delabate, producer? Uh, let's see. That's a hard one. Uh, uh, what would you say? Like, that, mm. I'm not sure. Is it the way he makes you spell your name? Uh, no. <laughs> hey. D E L apostrophe capital A. Two L's. That's right. D E L L apostrophe. Capital A. Is it annoying having an apostrophe in the middle of your name? No, oh, I got to get you. I had to get used to it. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. to do, right? Like, a, oh, actually, the most annoying thing to me, I'm not sure about Jackson, but when it's like 40 degrees out or something, or like 35, he makes me put on like this huge, like he makes me put on like the Missilin Man jacket, <laughs> and like I'm like fighting over. It. I'm like I will not like stand to wear this. Right. So, you're, so the most annoying thing about your dad is he makes you wear a heavy jacket in the winter. Yeah. All right. Like, All right. A big ugly jacket. That's good. I would have been this sitting is a, through a 30-minute bongo jam at the Almonds concert. <laughs> Antonio, yeah, yeah, you I'll probably hate it. Go. You really like the Almond Brothers? Yeah. yeah. Was it okay? Yeah. All right. I saw him there. He was digging mm. it. All right, Antonio. Hey, Antonio. What does your dad tell you, by the way? This isn't a question for the uh, for the game, but what does your dad tell you he does for a living? Like, how does he describe his job? Um, by working for you. Yeah. And what does he do when he works for me? Do you have any idea? Um, he um does jokes. Yeah. Phony phone calls, that kind of thing. Yeah. Does he want to get into the phony phone call business? <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. he let you practice at home? Um. Well, I. He doesn't ask me, really. Uh, no. yeah. Antonio, has your father ever mentioned Howard's religion? Um, not to me. Okay, good. Uh -huh. <laughs> has he ever what said any... For? Do you ever hear him talking about me? Um, yesterday he was. What did he say? Um, that Howard's the second greatest. The second, the second greatest. greatest? Who's the first? Oh, but no, I'm the gr first greatest. You're oh. the second. Oh, so you come first and then me? Yes. Oh, to fire him for that. Wow. Just kidding. All right. Um, <laughs> Delabate boys, does your old man talk about me at home? Oh, uh, yeah, a little bit. What yeah. do you hear? I don't know. He just talks that he said he called you and I had to talk to you about stuff. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys want to make phony phone calls too for a living, huh? Yeah, oh, I did one time to him and he didn't know who it was and almost called the phone company. Oh, Have really? you lost your kitten? Yeah, that was it. It was it was a soundboard thing. You ever hear your dad complain about me? No. Come on, tell the truth. No, he, he likes you. He, he likes does? you a lot. You ever, yeah. hear, you ever hear your dad complain about me, Antonio? Um, no. No? No, you kids are smart. I'm not even going to go there with the hind girls. <laughs> so right. what's the question on the board? What's so? What's the most obnoxious right. thing about what's your dad? What's the most now? annoying thing about your dad, Antonio? Um, it's when he keeps on asking and I say no, because mm -hmm. he, like, wants me to do it. Mm -hmm. But if I don't want to do it, he, like, sometimes keeps on asking me and it bothers me. So he nags you to do yes. things. Yes. Okay. All right, now the 25-point question. Right, then we'll get the dads that? in, and we'll see who wins the most. This money. has been great. So All right, here we go. <laughs> and here it is. I'm going to go over to the hind girls first. What's the last thing your dad yelled at you about? This is for 25 points. Well, Oh, yeah, the last thing he yelled at me about was when we were in the car on the way here. He was, like, sweating, and I was the free, like the coldest thing in the world, and I wanted the heat on, and he didn't. So he yelled at me for keep saying keep, to put on the heat on. So while you were on. cold, your father yelled at you for being cold. No, not for being cold, for bugging him 
to turn the heat on. Sounds he very, that does not sound right. You know, <laughs> he you left should, you in the cold? He left you cold. <laughs> All right, understood. Delabate, boys, what's the last thing your father yelled at you about? Uh, he yelled at us last night because he said we were going to bed too late and he, like, because we had to get up really early this morning. He didn't so yell at us. At us. He let us, like, stay up and watch Survivor with him. But Lucas says you, he didn't yell about that. He did. What did he yell? Oh. Lucas, what did he yell about? Well, actually, I've got something. Jackson, you've heard it before. Um, I don't like football. This is like one of the times, not the last time, but um, when I was trying to go, like when I was going to football in the car, um, well, he, um, like I'm like, oh man, I don't want to go to football. I hate it. And then my dad starts like um, yelling at you for that, yelling at me and cursing. <laughs> Because you don't like football? There's nothing wrong with not liking football. He took it out on you, huh? Yeah. Like, well, I always nag him, and it's like, I'm just like, Does he make you I feel want to go. Does he make you feel funny for not liking football? Yeah, kind of. Oh, boy. I'm going to have it out with him. That ain't right. Yeah, I don't he's like in here football. giving your listening. father a hard time. Look That's at him right. forcing his kid to go to football. Lucas, I would never my yell at you. My parents, um, well, never want me to quit anything. Well, on my side, I'm like, quit, 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 quit. Lucas. <laughs> I would never yell at you about that. Ever. And you wouldn't force him. I would never it. force you to play football. Perfect. Do you see how great things could be? <laughs> Only I was your father. Coach I'm, Locker better not be listening. If I were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you, you know, you got to see, uh, try to match what your father would say. What was the very last thing he yelled at you about? Mm. Probably last night when he won, like when we were going to bed. All right, we'll okay, go with I agree that. With Jackson. All right, we'll go with that. Okay. All, all right. right. All right. All right, Antonio, you must have done something. What did your father yell at you about? Um. Well, my brother had this bin- balloon from uh, my friend's birthday party, and um, I was like playing with it, but he wanted it, and um, my dad thought that it was a birthday party for him, and then he like um yelled. Mm-hmm. Robin, what does that mean exactly? I think you just say yelling about the balloon. Yelling about the balloon. <laughs> yeah, arguing over whose right balloon it was. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, this isn't part of the game, but does, you, does uh, Lucas and Jackson, did your dad ever say he doesn't like anyone who works on the show? Uh, mm. Not really. Yeah. Not, not really. necessarily. What about you, uh, Antonio? You hear Sal saying something? He doesn't like anybody on the show? Um, no, I never. Uh, Hind uh, girls, you ever hear anything like that? No, not really. What's mm. wrong with them? No. <laughs> And, uh, and, and Delabate, boys, you, did your father ever brag about how much money he makes on the show? you have any idea how much money he makes? No, no he never brags. He's, he's you know not tacky. How much money do you think he makes? <laughs> what? What do you think your old man's good for a year? I don't know. Mm, I don't... What do you think he makes? $100. $100 dollars a year? Is uh, he overpaid? <laughs> well, no, not 100 No, I, I'm not sure. I, maybe... 500 something like that. 500 bucks? Believe me. Yeah. You're about right. <laughs> he talks about a guy named Tightwad Carmazan. <laughs> All right, let's bring the dads in and see if yes, anybody matches I up. I see if they can match. All right, and don't forget the game is brought to you by B-Suticles, organic skin care gift sets, natural and organic personal care, B-Suticle Organics. Go to healthfromthehive.com. Now, Here remember comes to Sal. keep those cards turned down and on your lap. Yeah, keep them down. Kids, don't let your dad see those cards. All right. I'm disgusted with all three of you people. Yeah, we learned some things yeah. here. Yeah, all of you are gross. <laughs> Embarrassing? <laughs> nah. All right, let's go to John Hine first. We asked your daughters, what is your dad's favorite TV show? Can you match that for five points? Girls, don't help them. What is my favorite TV show? Let's see a match on the board. I would say that they said John, your mic's falling. Um, Come on, John. Today, I'm, John. Today. Sorry, guys. Um, your kids are quicker than you are. <laughs> I would say they said lost. 
You are wrong. You lost. Well, show, show your dad what you said. The office. Oh, the office. That's a good one. All right. <laughs> it's not a match. No, the Bonte boys uh, Stuff gave us Stuff when daddy watches every show on air. <laughs> yeah, does your dad watch too much television? I mean, the guy's constantly watching television, isn't he? He watches a yeah. lot. Yeah. But so do I. So. All right. Let's go over to Gary Delabate. What did the boys say? Well, they see me watching a lot of American Idol, but we all I, I, we all watch Survivor together. Don't, so. don't look no, at that. I'm going to say Survivor. Survivor. Let's see. Mm. ER. Uh, yeah, that's, that's one of them. That is one of them. <laughs> Sal, what did your son Antonio say? Uh, well, I don't think he knows my favorite show. I watch shows with him. So I'm going to think he said... Uh, Drake and Josh, because we watched that together recently a lot. Drake and Josh. That's what did not you right. Say, Antonio? Antonio had a better answer. He said, tell him, Antonio. American Idol. Yeah. <laughs> That's because he got me to send Jaya to Swolt. <laughs> That's how it's well, I'm not looking. All right. So nobody got that right. No points on the board. No matches so far. All right. Let's go to, uh, we'll go Good back try. to John again. We asked the girls, what's your dad's grossest habit? What is your grossest habit? Oh, I know this one. Go ahead. What is it? Uh, definitely cleaning out the insides of their noses when they have something in them, like snot or something You like hit that. it right on the head, girls. You know I it. I hate that. You pick your daughter's <laughs> nose and clean out their I boogers. Swear, I swear I want to do it right now to Emily. She's got one right down there. Does she have a booger? You want to take it out? Right Go there. ahead. Go get it out. Oh, oh my God. goodness. We're sad. Oh, get out of here. Why do you do that, by the way? It just drives me nuts, and they don't do it, and I just I, I can't stand their noses not being clean, I All guess. Right. And I know it's gross. All Thank right. you. Thank you. Hygiene, girls. See, I Hygiene. Just did, I just did the same thing to Lucas, but I shut the doors. Seriously, I shut the doors and did it so no one could see because he would be embarrassed, right? If I did that in front of people? Your dad picks up boogers. I hate too. you. <laughs> <laughs> Already coaching you? <laughs> I hate you. We all when do, he does that. Worry. What is your uh, dad's grossest habit? We said it to the boys. What'd they say, Gary? I have to go with uh, fart humor is funny in our house for a reason. Farting. You hit it right You're on the head. Right. That's it, farting. Farting upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, uh, Lucas says he almost threw up. <laughs> Sal, what did your son Antonio I, I'm say? I'm going to go with Gary. I, I have to believe it's farting. Well, you all got it right. That's right, farting. It up, buddy. That's you it. know when you're obnoxious. All right. <laughs> When All Gary right. farts downstairs, is it not so gross? The scores are tied 5-5-5. Five, five, and five. We see the Hine families, the Delabate family, and the Governale family playing for what uh, what we call Bring Your Kid to Work Day, Yeah. which is where we have to lock the kids up and not let them hear a thing on that's going <laughs> that's on right, in the show. That's right, not show what we really do. All right, here we go uh, for 10 points. I'll start with John again. What the hell? What's the last thing your parents fought about for 10 points, John? The last thing we fought about. Um... John Hine, the host of the wrap-up show. Got to think about this one. What, what will the daughters say? What did mom and I fight about? Uh... I'm, dr I'm drawing a blank because we fight so rarely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the last thing we fought about was... Um, yeah, time is running out, I'll, Johnny. I'll, I'll come up with something. Um, Three. You don't have all day. Two. What uh, what uh, what time the uh, what time the girls had to go to bed? All right, the girls said the last thing you fought about was not that saving a table. When you had a, they were waiting for you and they yeah, were calling you, you on you your were cell at phone. Nathan's and you Nathan's. wouldn't answer your cell phone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that one. All right. What is the last thing your parents fought about, Gary? What did the kids say? You, well, hmm, that's a good one. Um, it's probably me not doing something. <laughs> I know that. I know that's for, for sure. So now I got to think. Now, if which it, something was right, it? Which something, it's either me not throwing out the garbage or me not doing enough. I'm going to say like me not walking the dog or me not paying enough attention to the dog. Well, you know, that's, that's pretty close. close. That's close. It's or you not giving the dog a bath. No. So it's, 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 it's you not uh, picking, picking up, up the dog right. duty. It's all, it's all dog stuff I get yelled nah. at for. Uh, what do you think? Do we give him 10 I for that? I think you got to give him I, I give him that, yeah. yeah. Dog Is this attention. vinaigrette? <laughs> ah. All right, I'm going to give him the 10 Thank points. You. All right, you got it. All right, all right. That's pretty close. Uh, now, Sal, Sal, this should be easy for you. Well, the Sal. question is, when's the last no. time we didn't fight <laughs> in front of the kids? Um, Antonio, actually, do, you, do your mom and dad fight a lot? Um, not that much. Not that much. Good. Okay. Not Definitely not in front of the kids. Right. Um, do the kids right. live in another house? <laughs> <laughs> Every time we see them, they're fighting. <laughs> That's how we pay the bills. 
Uh, I can't. I can't imagine what he would witness. <laughs> I can't imagine what he doesn't miss. <laughs> I would have to say the last time we fought probably was over um, Monsal, not buying a condo. Okay. Uh, not what you make here. Was it me farting at the table? All right. Was it I would say thing? farting or burping at the table. No, Antonio said it was something else. He said uh, going on vacation to Disney World, you, uh, Christina didn't want to go. And, and all of you guys wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exactly right. Yeah. All right. We've got two questions left. The next one is worth 10 points. <laughs> now, can we play my wife for Antonio? <laughs> oh, no. I don't think he's ready for that yet. He wrote it already. Give me a CD. Take all right, Gary, I'm going to get John off the hook. Okay. I'm going to let you go first this time. What's the most annoying thing about your dad? Real quick. What do the kids think? agent so annoying about you wow mm. they love me <laughs> i'm serious what's the most annoying thing about lucas just said he hated you think about it <laughs> think about it think Look. hard wow. lucas says think hard wow. very 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 hard very um, good lucas. i make them do something like i make them go to bed early let's say that i make All them go right. to bed well early. you didn't get it That's right <clears throat> we make lucas wear a heavy jacket when it's cold outside, right. it's, you bundle them up like the Michelin, Michelin man. man. No, not sure. I just he wants to wear his little spring yeah. jacket. All right, I'm. Sal, what's the most annoying thing? <laughs> I would think uh, I'm on the computer too much. Let's see what Antonio <laughs> said. <laughs> I was going to say your beard and mustache, but let's see what he said. He said nags him to do things. You keep saying yeah. every time he says no, you ask the question again. Fine, girls are ready with an answer, but John, give us match us, and then we really move move ahead in this game. There, there's one, it's one of two. Things. Things. I, I'm not going to say the voting on American Idol thing, but I'm going to go with uh, taking the knots out of their hair. Taking the All knots right. out of their hair is really annoying. You would be. You, oh. you should have gone with American Idol. Oh. American Idol voting. Yeah. <laughs> you were so close. I had it. All right, 25 point question. Uh, right now, the Delabates are in the lead with 15 points. The Governales and the Hines are in with five points. They're in second place, tied for second place. This is 25 points. Whoever gets this one, Wins the it's game. Got, they're going to win. Come on, babe. All right, here we go. Sal, you're going first. Okay. All right. What is the last thing your dad yelled at you about? You know what? That was very recent. My son always goes in my drawer and takes the video iPod you bought me for Christmas, and he did it again recently and almost lost it. The last thing he yelled about was the, hopefully, the iPod you took out of my drawer again. Antonio didn't say that. He said... Yelling about the balloons. And the party? It was your not your birthday party or something? Oh, uh, I think I was sucking the helium out, out of all the kids' balloons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you see? All right. I stink, son. I'm sorry. All right, John, this is a chance to go into first place with your daughters. What is the last thing your dad yelled at you about? I rarely yell at my daughters, but I think it's got to be... Uh, when they were screaming too loud in the car, and I yelled at them because they were too loud in the car. All right, I'm going to give you that because the girls said you were in the car and you were com they were complaining that it was too cold and you just got annoyed and you started yelling at them in the car. All right, good job, guys. All right, that's, he puts you in the lead with 30 points. Place. All right, Delabates, this could be your game because you were in the lead, and if you get 25 points, that will put you way ahead of everyone else. What is the last thing your dad yelled at it's you It's a about? tough one because there's two different kids and you well, yell at them for different things. Yeah, well, don't tell me your problems. Um, <laughs> that's another show. It was probably just for, okay, I'm going to get, again, go with not getting into bed on time, not going to bed on time. Well, it really wasn't that, was it? Yeah, well, yes, yeah, yeah, you went to bed. Was, you did it. Yeah, okay, yeah. I forgot. That's right, 40 All right, points. Delibates. All right, Delabates are in first yeah. place, Heinz second place, and the governor is in five. Now, what uh, does that get them, Howard? Well, I have $500 cash from b Suticles. Uh, to split up between uh, all three teams. Because the Delabate boys came in first, I think a good prize. And, and by the way, Gary, you can't take this money from them. They can spend it on whatever they want. Absolutely. All right. What is the prize for the Delabate boys because they won? What if we give them, what do you think is an appropriate prize? We've got to split up five hundred dollars, dollars and we have uh, uh, five kids. What do you think, two hundred? I think two hundred for the Delabates because they are the winners. Two hundred dollars you just won. <laughs> yeah. Considering Lucas thinks you make a hundred dollars all year. Is that what he said? Yes. That, uh, well, at that's least a it maybe five. Maybe five hundred. <laughs> I spent five hundred on you last week. <laughs> Hine girls. You were in uh, second, second place. place. Just missed, guys. Just missed. And uh, I'm going to award you 
I say seventy-five dollars a no, piece. No, a sh- well, yeah, hundred fifty. Right. Hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. But that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Oh, that ah, sense. come on, that Antonio Disher. Oh. And Antonio, how much does that leave for Antonio? One hundred fifty, doesn't it? Yeah. No, the two hundred. Oh yeah, that's three hundred to split up. Uh, oh, two, so. three fifty. Yeah. So I'll give him a hundred. And Antonio, yeah. you've won. $150. Oh. <laughs> Wait, we got to make you know, it clear that yeah, Antonio yeah. was last. You have right. more money, you know. That's all right. Just give him 150 but you don't He has mind. to split it with his brothers at home. That's you true. try to split it with yeah. your brothers at home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Your mom will take it. It's like 16 it. of them, I think. <laughs> uh, let me tell you He's something. He's the youngest anyway. We He's the youngest, yeah. yeah. So you guys have won a lot of money. What are you going to do with the money, Antonio? Um, Probably um, save it up with my other money and try to get a drum set. If When I get more money, if I have enough money to get a drum set. All right, that's a good nice. idea. Uh, nice. Delabates, what do you guys say? You're gonna do with that 200 by car. Well, me and Jackson have to split it, so I get 100 and he gets 100. Right. So. They were playing a video game this morning that one of the interns lent them. That they. What was that thing? Oh, I'm gonna buy a PSP. A PSP? PlayStation Play. You know, right, portable. Very good. Okay, that sounds like fun. And uh, girls. Any ideas what to do with that 150 cash? We get to go shopping. Say thank you for it. You're welcome. That's very oh, nice. Girls, you oh, you should have said thank you. God damn it. Fine girls. Well, very they polite. Won. They did win. We know it's a good Thanks. parent. We know who the best parent is here. <laughs> and I'm either going to probably get probably a PSP also. Right. Or good news. It's the Whiskey Talking available on PSP. <laughs> Artie Lang's DVD available. It's the wa- See that party. in high def. That <laughs> TV's going to my room. You promised. Sure. You promised. I, pr- I promised what? That I can spend it on anything I want. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy a TV, but it's not going in your room. Yep. No TVs in the room. Why? She, you said she, it could be for anything she wants. I said she can get the TV, but I didn't say where she can put it. Why Whoa. can't she put it in her room? Because no TV in the room. They got they have computers in the room, and that's fine, but no TV. Believe me, we got plenty of TVs in the house. It ruined Daddy's life. <laughs> Look what happened to me. <laughs> Emily, what do you think of that? You're very mean. Yes, he is very mean. Emily, your childhood has just jumped the shark. <laughs> I'm a mean dad. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what are you going to do? I can't believe they have computers in their room. Yeah, I'm okay. surprised about that, too. They're hooked up to the Internet? Yeah, they both have computers in their room, which, well, of course, uh, I'm fully aware of what's going on in those computers. As we talk <laughs> I had to talk before. with the kids. The kids know that they're being watched. Yeah, well, right. kids, oh, oh, they do know. Yeah, I told them. I made your dad do that, by the way, Delabate boys. Okay. He was I, trying to keep it a secret. He was trying to keep it a secret that you were being watched. I told. What do you think of that? Uh, and you kids have time after the show to teach me how to email? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll be over your house, Delabate boys. And if you remember the last time I came there, I was a big hit. I showed you boys magic tricks. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Am I the greatest or what? Yes. Yeah, you're good. good. Yep, you're damn right yeah, I'm good. Can I have my football card back now that you made it disappear? Can you make it reappear now? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that, that part of the trick. <laughs> I don't know anything about making things reappear. <laughs> well, you were nice kids. I like all of you. I yeah. figured maybe out of the lot of you, there would be some I didn't like, but I do like all of you. Very impressed. They're good kids. You're good kids. And let me tell you something. You present yourselves well. I want to see how much you remembered. What did I make you all repeat when your dad's left the room? Let me hear it now. One, two, three. Cash is king. Cash is king. Very good. Now we're going to try another one. We all hate Jay Leno. Oh, stop that. (laughs) Everybody, one, two, three. We all hate Jay Leno. Very good. Very nice. Very good. I like it. You're giving me goosebumps, I swear. Did somebody say, who's Jay Leno? I love that child. (laughs) (laughs) Who exactly is Jay Leno? That's your favorite book, Lucas. Oh, yeah. If roast beef beef could fly. fly. All right, try this one. You like that that Jay Leno book? All right, try this one out. At the count of three, Scott the Pace is bald. (laughs) Scott the Pace (laughs) is bald. One, two, three. Scott the Pace is bald. Oh, you like it. Why are you doing that with Scott the Pace when Scott Salem is in the room? That's right. Ready? Scott about- Salem is bald. Scott Salem is bald. <laughs> Delabate kids only on this one. Ready, Delabate kids? Met the Mets are gay. Oh, <laughs> one, two, three. The Mets are gay. Ah, what are you doing? <laughs> I got that on tape, brother, forever. I would say that. You, you love the Mets. Gay. 
Oh, oh Artie is. Right. How about so Artie? Maybe I can be lose, on the Mets. Artie lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, Fred, you got Lucas saying the Mets are gay. We're going to hit that every day. You guys love the Mets, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're a big Mets fan and Jets fan. Yes. Jackson's yeah. got the Mets room with the Mets border and a big Carlos Beltran, and Lucas has the Jets room with Chad Pennington. Yeah. Welcome right. to a life of disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, I'm bad starts. All right. You're about to start swinging, huh? No, it's swearing. Oh, swearing. What do you got? Did your I father teach? Don't your... we have on tape that Artie is gay? <laughs> Does your father teach you to root for the Washington Generals over the Globetrotters as well? <laughs> Listen, kids, I love you. You all did great. It's very, very difficult to come on the radio and talk in an extemporaneous manner. And I'm very, very, very impressed. Oh, I think your father is working, Antonio. What's he doing? Antonio, what's your father want you to say? Robin, let me see you, boobs. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is that? What's the matter with you, Sal? You? He's a boy. He's a boy. He's five years old. There's girls Christ. in the room, though. He's so uh, silly. Well, enough, yeah, Sal. We're not doing so that one. more. Oh, Shut up, too. <laughs> Shut up, too. Oh, what are you teaching the kids? What's the matter with you, Sal? Sal, shame on you. Antonio, grab the pen. For, oh, you did. Good, the kid right. knew to say I'm not doing that one. Did, does Christine know you took the kid to work today, Sal? All right, kidnap your kid to work. <laughs> Shut up, Jew. <laughs> All right, listen, kids. We're going to uh, read Mein Kampf when we get home. Oh, God. God. What's the matter with you? Kid. You're a lot riot today, I got to tell you. Daddy's not going to make it in show business. I got no fear, Antonio. <laughs> All right, no listen, kidding. kids, you did a great job. Take your money, do what you want. You want that TV in your room? You go ahead, or else we'll fire your father, okay? <laughs> right. And you boys know you're never to watch Brokeback Mountain, right? Oh. Right. Right. All right. We'll None be... of that. Ah, uh, stop it. They didn't even know to go looking for it until you said that, Artie. None of that fruity stuff. We'll be back right after these words. Thank you to all the participants of Daddy or Dummy. Team Delavate. Yeah. Champions. Yeah. Champions. Yes. You guys seem to know a lot about your dad. A lot of the. Uh... Yeah, I didn't understand the ER one because I haven't. Wa I actually haven't watched the ER oh, one. Oh, you always. But I love. There's a lot of shows that. Oh, I ever go on TV, you're always. always happy. Yeah, that's because I haven't watched them. That's why they're still there. But uh, it was great, guys. It was yeah, awesome. Thanks, Dad. Thank you. Uh, Dad, you're a family hug. Uh, you're a good way to. So what? Really, what are you gonna spend the money on for real now? I'm going for a PSP, like I said on the radio. Yeah, this, you're, you're a little short, but we'll see what we can do about that. Not get, um, short on money. No, I know. I know. The other guy was like, 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 uh, I think it was just fun. All of it. Yeah. I personally have to go back and hear what they said while I was in the room. I don't know what I missed. Uh-oh. You kids might get grounded now. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Thanks for coming down, guys. Good job. Thank you. Good work, Team Delavate. Team Governale. Very close. Very close. But... Yeah, okay. Antonio did great. I'm very proud of him. Sal, it seemed like Antonio remembered everything, but you kind of forgot some stuff. He was on the money. I forgot all about the vacation thing and the and the balloons. I forgot all about that. So, yep, he was. Uh, you were right on, buddy. You did great. Antonio, what was it like being live on the air? Was that fun? It was kind of fun. Are you going to tell all of your your friends at school what you did today? Well, actually, I told them before I went on the radio when I um, first, when my first dad told me, when my dad told me. <laughs> well, thanks for coming down. You did great today. Thank you. Team Hein, very close, very close. You know what? We just missed. I can't believe I missed the office. The TV question led to our defeat, but my girls did great. I'm very proud of them. You girls did do very good in there. What was what was your favorite part about coming down to the show today? Oh. Um, I like seeing my dad type of thing. It was cool seeing like the behind the scenes and how everything works. Yeah. And you made $150 each out of the deal. Yes, right. Not bad. Not, well, so, mm -hmm. not a bad day. Yeah. Not, not bad at all. Bad. And you got to miss school, so that's the double yeah, bonus. Yeah, that's that's like the best part of all. <laughs> Sorry about the TV thing. Um, I know you're bummed, but. Uh, it's Take Your Child to Work Day, and Gary's kids knew more than my kids and Sal's son about their respective dads and won the Daddy or Dummy contest. Gary was really psyched that they won. <laughs> well, he puts in a lot of time with those kids. They better know him. Right. Well, we'll talk about he how he needs them. <laughs> or used to. I started to bring show. that up, and then I said, no, I'm not going to do nah. it.
Well, we'll talk about how the game went and see how the kids are holding up after spending a day at work. With Why are you fathers. throwing hangers at the kids? <laughs> In your diabetic rage. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. We heard about, about that. I didn't, I didn't hear that part. They, they, they were trying to decide what is most annoying about you, and they said your diabetes, because when your sh- blood sugar gets low, you start throwing hangers. You get a little crazy is what they say. I, I did throw a hanger. That's true. When your blood sugar gets low, you just start. I used to see my father go through out. that, man. It's scary. Yeah. Oof. They start, you started foaming and everything. Mm. Well, eat a smoothie. <laughs> you get really angry for no apparent reason. Right. And, uh, it gets you crazy. It gets a little ugly in the hindhouse. We got to okay. bust Gary's chops, too, about calling Lucas uh, uh, yelling at him for not liking football. Yeah. Yo, what was that? What's that all about? He said he didn't, he didn't like football. Well, Lucas, Lucas doesn't like he football. He didn't want to. He didn't want to play football. Lucas for, Lucas is forced to play football. Hey Gary, come and in go here. To games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, that's kind of fucked hold up, on. dude. I got to take that up. And hold on, they're listening. So guys, Uh-oh. turn down the radio in my office. Bring him in here and let's discuss it. Okay. A uh, family counseling session, front and center. <laughs> yeah, because, sorry, I used I mean, the F word. I didn't know the. I that's thought you, okay. I thought it's you told me the kids weren't. It's, listening. it's fine. I mean, we've been moving them around, but yeah, you know what? Dude, drop oh, that. It's, an, it's yeah. an unfair assessment to say that we forced it, but uh, but it also bums me out that that's his interpretation of it. You know what I mean? Here, Lucas, guys, come in here. I'm going to try and get you out of, get you off the hook. <laughs> no, the kids, no, you're not in trouble. Lucas, you're not in trouble. I Meanwhile, no, you're not in trouble at all. What, Lucas? He's on trial. He's on <laughs> trial. <laughs> hey, Jackson. Jackson, don't you think it's wrong that your father forces Lucas to play football? He doesn't like it. I guess, but he said he would play the whole season. And he, so he was wrong. I never said that. Well, you know what? It's no, a, I didn't. When you're a parent, it's a fine Hold line. Hold a second, it's a Gary. Fine Let line. Lucas have a okay. word. Hey, it's kind of hard to play football, Dad, and... Like it's really hard. You get hit hard. I'm a mi- like I used, like I was in a middle linebacker in scrimmages, and I get hurt. But and th- I don't like it. And I never promised that. And Jackson's just a big fat liar. So you don't want to play football anymore. Yeah, I might be the water boy. But you told me last Saturday when we were at a Baskin Robbins that you wanted to play football. Do you remember? Okay, I quit that. Like, I'll execute that from my plan. Did you say that because you <laughs> want to make your dad happy? That's why you said I like football, Dad. What? When did I say that? I'm done. I'm saying like. Oh, when... yeah, yeah. And make him happy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Why don't you let him off the hook? No, man? he is off the hook. He doesn't have to play this year. I mean, I'm, I've been sort of trying to figure out whether he wants to play because he keeps going. What's like... the figure? I hear the kid loud and clear. And then, like, in two days, he'll say, you know, I was talking to the guys at school and I think I want to play because I'll be one of the bigger kids. So it's just, it's confusing. Yeah, it whether... is confusing to me, what too. Is... Like, last year, he, like, it got through, like, two thirds of the season. He's, like, wasn't having a fun time. And then some days he was having a fun time. And I'm sort of like, hey, you made a commitment. It's a fine line. What activities? Like, when yeah. I hurt my arm, when I was running laps, like like when I ran 14 laps, that was fun. It's because you were fooling around. But but it's a fine line between just letting your kid quit something the first time he says it, and fi- you you have to figure out when to let him quit. You know what I mean? You gotta. Do you, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, but they also have to learn the consequences of their making a decision. Right, yeah. right. So we let him finish the season last year, and it's totally up to him whether he wants to play or not this year. I just can't seem to get You guys the... wouldn't let me quit. See, I that's all quit. The... See, now we wouldn't let him quit, and then he was telling me the other night, Mommy's making me quit because Mary's against him playing football again. Right. She said he didn't like it. And he goes, you know, Dad, Mom's making me quit, but I think I want to well, play. I'll tell you what, Lucas. If you were my son, you wouldn't have to get injured just to please me. Right. Oh, no. here we go. <laughs> Lucas, do you want to play football or not? Have you really mm. made up your mind? Do you like it? Uh, let me think. One second. No. Okay, so hold the football right here and dance. Like go up. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Wait. <laughs> right, wait up a sec because we're, we're getting the wireless. <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, I'll tell you when to dance. I'll tell you when. Keep the football right there. Why not? Ready? I'll tell you when. Tell me when, guys. Go. Go, start dancing. Put the football lower, lower, lower. Oh, here we go. Listen, do you want to play football or not? Look at the camera, Antonio. Look at it. I can't see a thing. Hey, he's made up his mind, I guess. It's tough with kids with sports, though, because from day to day, they might like it. What would, I mean, they might what like would it you one rather day and do? Hate it yeah, but then day. they need to know. You know, when you make a decision like that, you can't go back and forth. Right. Would you yeah, rather really gamble on it. football like it, Uncle Artie? How about that? Or That's fun. Do you like to bet on football? That's fun. <laughs> is there another sport he <laughs> likes better? Wait, it, you mean you bet money on football? Yes. And, and he loses. He you loses, loses That's all the time. And if you stay in the league long enough and get me some inside information, we can get some. Like if you if the if your football team loses though, then you're in trouble. If you bet like a thousand dollars or something, you're. 
Like, if you lose, <laughs> you just lost a thousand dollars. Lucas, look, Boy, this, ask this Uncle, kid makes too much sense. Ask Uncle Artie what's the <laughs> most money he left and he lost in one day betting on something. Okay, what's the most money you've ever lost on um, one day? In one betting day, money? including every type of gambling. Yeah. Thirty-eight thousand ah, dollars. Thirty-eight thousand dollars. Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> That's real. That's what I felt That's like. That's why he's a Yankee fan. Oh. <laughs> you should become a bookie then, because they're the ones who make the money, Lucas. You, know you that, should that, become that, a bookie. The, the, you Lucas, know the, what would you rather do instead of playing football? Is there something you'd rather we, do? Would you, maybe. What? Well, if I even played football, I'd probably play. Um, maybe, maybe if I wanted to, I might. Just might play um, flag football, or I might continue skateboarding because I just started yesterday. And then I might go back to drum lessons or something right. like that. Flag uh, football has a flag football has an extra L in it. It doesn't oh, need. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe you okay. want to be a ballerina. Oh, Enough with that. Easy there. Do you understand how it's not a it's not as cut and dry? It's it's sort of a hard decision. No, it's it's very cut and dry to me. Lucas doesn't want to play. I football. think by now it's clear he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, right. and if he yeah. winds yeah. up yeah. thinking that this was a bad decision for yeah. him this year, he can play next year. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could always play in the future if you want to. Yeah, maybe yeah. when I like maybe when I get a little better at it. Let me tell you something. I was no good at Older. any of that stuff. I was very artistic. <laughs> what? Same artistic? with my dad, probably. <laughs> What's that? I think it was the same with you, right? What's that? Was it the same with you about you being bad at football or, like, the football coaches Believe being me, mean? He was, not, he was not that good at football. I was okay. It was a different time. I, th- I don't think he likes getting yelled at by the coaches either. Yeah, right. and getting hurt. Yeah, it's just screw out. that. I wouldn't do it either. The only thing I wanted to quit as a kid that my mother would not let me quit was uh, smoking. <laughs> we just stay out of the conversation. No, but I, you kids what, know. what about baseball? Do you like baseball? Yeah, I love it. Well, there you go. Well, that's like enough. Baseball. Yeah, who needs football? Do you get, believe you get your brains bashed in? Hey, I, want you, I hope your Jackson's uh, careful, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're careful. I love football. Jackson, sure what are you, a defensive end, linebacker? What do you do over there? No, I'm a center. Oh, really? There you go. Well, offensive sure, line. Make sure you're careful over there. Yeah. Well, make sure you bash the other guy's brains in right. instead of your own. Oh, yeah. I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Very but, physical. Look, like yeah. Lucas played hockey last year, too. He yeah, played, that was fun because there are no practices. Sport. Oh, really? You like the no practice mm. thing? All right. Field hockey? Okay. I good. Hey. Just thank me when you when you get out of playing football because I got you out of it. Your father wasn't listening. I took care of everything. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Howard. <laughs> no problem. Whenever you have a problem, you come to me now. Yeah, I'll give you my number. Yeah, doesn't listen, maybe what else call don't you call like? Howard. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to me. I'll, I'll, I'll set him straight. Don't you worry about it. I heard you loud yeah, and clear, okay. son. All Do right. you guys know your father's nickname? Baba Booey. I think you like... There's a cartoon named Baba Louie, and then he pronounced it wrong. Right. And then that, like, haunted him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, it has. True. That's very true. It has. I see a bobblehead of um, Bob, Baba Louie in his, um, like, in his office. He like, loves Baba Louie. Right next to, um, right next to, like, um, an Oreo's Barbie doll. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole weird thing. What, your office? Yeah, no, the, I, somebody, the Oreo's Barbie doll? Somebody gave me, uh, uh, there's an, somebody made an Oreo Barbie doll. Mm-hmm. Bar- Barbie got a to an agreement with Nabisco, and they made this Oreo Barbie doll. So it's a black Barbie doll. It's Oreo Barbie. Uh-huh. And you know, they pulled it off the market after... mơ em để không còn phải hơn ghen dần dối với tình địch trong giấc mơ buổi tối giấc mơ ngọt ngào còn môi mình anh anh dắt em đi trong bát ngát tươi xanh hoa anh đào như bức tranh huyền thoại anh đưa em quay về tới con gái có hoa vàng Xung xuê, nụ hôn đắm say với những lời thề mình luôn bên nhau say mê đắm đuôi lúc lên đôi
vào giấc mơ em để không còn phải hơn ghen dần dối với tình địch trong giấc mơ buổi tối giấc mơ ngọt ngào còn môi mình anh anh dắt em đi trong bát ngát tươi xanh hoa anh đào như bức tranh huyền thoại anh đưa em quay về thời con gái Có hoa vàng, có cái cây sung suy Nụ hôn đắm say với những lời thề Mình luôn bên nhau say mê đắm đuôi Lúc lên đôi Tới con gái Có hoa vàng, có cái cây sung suy Nụ hôn đắm say với những lời thề Mình luôn bên nhau say mê đắm đuôi Lúc lên đôi